I bought every foundation that's sold in store and online at Sephora so you don't have to. And today we're testing them out back to back starting from least expensive to most expensive. So if you wanna see what foundation is gonna be best for you, then keep watching. Okay, to kick things off, and it's probably not gonna be a surprise if you watched any of my previous hauls on my channel, like my blush one, my bronzer one, my highlighter one. We always start out with a Sephora brand product. They happen to be the most affordable, like the least expensive out of all the ones that I'm about to get into and show you. So starting at only $20, you can get the Sephora Best Skin Ever. I've actually been wanting to try this for a long time. I've heard really good things about it, so I'm excited to try this out finally. This is supposed to be a perfect natural finish, long wear foundation. I picked up the shade 20N. It seemed like it was gonna be a good match. Let's see what it looks like on. Now always shake your liquid foundation first. So give it a good shake. Has a really nice bottle, by the way. Nice frosted glass bottle. It feels a lot more luxe than a $20 foundation, that's for sure. I'm gonna pump some on top of my hand. Let's start out with two pumps. Already that shade looks like it's gonna be pretty good. And I'm gonna start things out with my favorite foundation brush. Probably no surprise here. You're gonna see this brush throughout this entire video. It's my N17 brush with BK Beauty. This is a dual fiber brush I'm gonna be using since this is a liquid foundation primarily haul. There's also some creams mixed in here, but we're not doing powder foundations. I'll be using a lot of this lighter fiber side. So I'm gonna dip into that Sephora foundation. Texture of it is pretty thick, thicker than I was expecting for some reason, but I guess I don't know what I was expecting. There's no fragrance. It looks like I picked out a good shade, so off to a good start. <laughs> I always love when I get a good shade match because then I could clearly wear it after this video is filmed and I get my money's worth and I get to keep using it if I like the formula, that is. So blending it out takes a minute to blend this one. So I'm gonna switch to more of a patting motion, kind of pat this in. Coverage is a little inconsistent. It definitely has quite a glow to it. Of course, this is going on top of just very basic skin prep. I have just a, basically a serum, a hyaluronic acid serum, and then I have my sunscreen on and that's it. I kept it very, very minimal and basic for this video because for one thing, I don't wanna overwhelm my skin with too many products underneath the, these foundations. And I also want to make sure I'm still testing it out with what I would always recommend as like a base for underneath foundation. Yeah, you know, the coverage is not amazing. Definitely takes some work to blend this formula out. It's a bit inconsistent with the coverage. Like I'm getting a lot of patchiness right here on my cheek and I'm seeing a lot of like, you know, I have like some discoloration on my cheek, so I'm seeing right through it. You know, it's claiming to be a natural finish and it's definitely giving a natural finish. So right there, it is giving what it's claiming to do. Overall, it's nice. I think it's very decent for a $20 formula. And I, again, I think the Sephora makes some really amazing formulas that are super affordable. So if you're a makeup artist starting out, Sephora brand products are a really great way to fill in your kit and to get good quality and be able to present good quality to your clients without spending a million dollars when you're just starting out, right? Because that's always a battle. I think the feeling of it is really nice. It feels very lightweight. I would imagine this would be a really great foundation for oily skin, combo, dry, I feel like this is gonna fit and check the box for any skin type. If you're looking for more of a medium to full coverage and I wouldn't pick this one up, let's see if we could kind of build it up as far as coverage. Okay, so the coverage is buildable and it's building more evenly. I'm definitely getting more coverage on my cheek. Overall, it's pretty sheer, more natural with that first initial application. My biggest complaint, if I had to pick one, is it just didn't blend out very even. It looked a little patchy and I had to kind of work hard to manipulate it to look more smooth on my skin. So would I recommend it? I would, uh, but purely based on what a great affordable price it is. And that it's a pretty, like overall, it's a really good formula. It's not the best in the world, but if you're looking for something inexpensive, like I said, then I think this is definitely worth checking out. Now, would I pick this up again? I wouldn't, but just for those reasons that I listed, there's just so many other ones on the market that I think are you know, even better and easier to work with. It's not that it's a bad option, it's just not the best one I've ever tried. So I hope that makes sense. So once again, that is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. Moving up to the $24 price range, this is the second most affordable foundation that is sold at Sephora. This is from LYS Beauty. If you know me, you know I love this brand. I think they have incredible products that are a great price in general, but they're also just really high performing products. So I love them specifically for that reason. I'm excited to try this. I have not tried this yet. It is a triple fix serum foundation with HA, hyaluronic acid, plus turmeric, plus ashwagandha. Very interesting. So maybe it's supposed to be like a calming formula for your skin. So let's read a few more claims on the back of this box. It's supposed to satisfy your skincare and foundation fix at the same time with this clean light to medium coverage foundation that is infused with nourishing skincare like ashwagandha, 
hyaluronic acid and turmeric to enhance the look of your complexion. This undetectable serum foundation instantly diffuses the look of dark spots, pores, fine lines, imperfections without masking your skin's natural beauty. I love that. Okay, so I picked up the shade TG1. LYS has some beautiful packaging, by the way. Like this is, for $24, this feels like a Charlotte Tilbury foundation to me, in my opinion. Like this feels like, first of all, very heavy, just beautiful luxe packaging. So not bad. Has a pump, love a pump over here. Makes it super easy. Okay, texture of this is very runny. This, this ran down my hand very, very quickly. And judging by the shade, I might've picked a shade that's a little too dark. We're gonna find out together. There's no fragrance to it. So just to point that out, I'm gonna apply it with my N17 and let's get into it. Mm, blending out. Very nice, very, very nice blend. I, I pumped out way too much. A little bit is going quite a long way, to be honest. The formula feels really nice on my skin. It feels very, very nourishing. Like this is supposed to be a serum foundation. That makes sense. It does feel very serum-like, but first impressions, I feel like this would be a good long wearing serum foundation. Like most serum foundations feel like they're gonna run and fall off your face the, the second you leave the front door, basically. This doesn't have that feeling. This feels like it has like a little bit more grip to it, which I really like. The finish of it so far is very glowy. It is very much like a serum foundation. It's giving a lot of glow, a lot of um, healthy, like juicy shine to my skin. Feels amazing. The color I picked out is definitely a little, a touch too dark, but that's okay, that's my fault. Yeah, I'm gonna layer just a little bit more to see what we can do and tap it onto the area of my cheek where I need some more coverage. And also one more thing to point out too, even though it's a shiny serum based foundation and it has like that shiny glow to it, I don't feel like it's emphasizing any texture or like just like pores I have around my cheeks. Sometimes when you're using a really glowy foundation, it could tend to just, you know, enhance skin texture or pores that you might have that are larger that you are trying to disguise. It could typically bring them out a bit more than if you were wearing like a smoothing, more matte or satin finished foundation. So just something to kind of point out. Overall, I think this is a fantastic formula. It feels like I have nothing on my skin. It feels like very lightweight, almost feels like I have just like skincare on my skin, to be quite honest. It is buildable, so that's something to keep in mind. I'd say one coat on its own is like a light to medium coverage, and you could definitely build up to be a full medium coverage. I would say this is great for anyone, except if you have really oily skin, like true oily skin, I would stay away from this formula, or at least I would incorporate maybe a more mattifying primer in the area of your T-zone or anywhere that you get super oily. And I would definitely suggest, of course, setting it with some powder to lock it down. But if you have normal skin, normal to oily skin, even, or even normal to dry, or obviously very dry skin, or dry mature skin, I think this would be a really nice formula. It's not heavy on the skin, it just looks fresh and glowy and dewy. It's easy to work with. This is a really great formula and for $24, I think this is a, a hit for sure. So would I recommend this formula? Yes, but again, not if you have super oily skin, I wouldn't say it's the best formula for you to pick. I think that if you have any of the other skin types, it's gonna be a really great foundation for you. And if you're looking for something more lightweight, and fresh feeling on your skin and not super heavy, then this is a really amazing option. Would I go back out and repurchase this? Yes, and I should probably pick up a better shade. For me, I, um, I just did the best I could online because this is an online foundation only, so I picked only online. So once again, this is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. Okay, so that was the last of our foundations that were in the $20 range. We're now at the $30 range, and for that, you can get the Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation from Rare Beauty. I've been wanting to try this for literally since it came out. This is one of like, their first launches they came out with. I don't know what took me so long because I'm a big fan of Rare Beauty. I think they have amazing, really affordable, high quality formulas. So this is the shade 230N. And let's finally try this foundation out together. Also, I love this packaging. I, I'm such a big fan of Rare Beauty's packaging. It, it's, it's very fun, but not in like a, you know, too youthful of a way. It still is like very, it still feels like luxury to me, but in like a more, like a slightly more playful, fun way. Love, love this packaging. Actually, let's shake this up first. Mm. Okay, so this little ball that's in here to help shake up the formula tells me it's gonna be more of like a lightweight, true liquid formula, but let's see. Okay, it's shaken up. Oh, I forgot this has a doe foot. I love doe foot applicators. They're so easy and they're so travel friendly. You don't have to pump and wor like worry about a mess. So easy. Okay, let's swipe this on. Ooh, okay, color is definitely not neutral, but it's okay. We're gonna blend this out, see what it looks like on. First swipe feels amazing. Wow, does this have fragrance? Doesn't smell like anything. Okay, this feels like nothing on my skin. Did I even, did I shake this up enough? That. Why is nobody talking about this foundation that much? 
Okay, that blended in my skin within seconds. That was so unbelievably easy. I'm gonna do another swipe because I'm just curious about this. All right, so it's definitely buildable. Uh, definitely a weightless formula. This is a true weightless formula. And I have to say like, this is one thing I love about Rare Beauty is they don't over promise and under deliver. They don't over promise anything. Like they don't have these wild claims of like that it'll transform your skin and do this and do that. Where like you get the product and you're expecting so much and then you get, you don't get what you're, you know, what the claims are. This foundation is wow gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, it literally feels like nothing. It feels like just silky, lightweight. Wow. Okay. And it's definitely drying down a touch too, which I like also because it has, clearly it's going to have some sort of like self-setting element to it, which I am a huge, huge fan of. I, don't, I hate the feeling of products just sitting on my skin. I want them to absorb and I want them to dry down on my skin and just like kind of melt in and not have that feeling of just sitting on top. This is beautiful. This is like a wow, wow foundation. I think this would be good for anyone. Oily, dry, combo, mature, young, I don't care who you are. This formula I think would work for anyone. I can't see this not working for anyone, especially with that texture. That lightweight texture and the way it's buildable, it blended in within seconds. It has a really beautiful smoothing effect to it. Almost gives me like a slight like airbrush kind of quality to my skin, especially around here where I have larger pores on my cheeks. It looks really smooth, really flawless. The shade isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be based on that first swipe. However, it's definitely not a true neutral. This is a warm undertone. I don't know why it's labeled with an N, which I'm sure is standing for neutral, right? So that's unfortunate. Just something to kind of keep an eye out for. If you're someone at home who's looking for an actual neutral foundation, this might not be the right shade for you. But it still works. It's still beautiful. I'm going to be wearing this constantly. I could tell you that. I highly recommend this one, especially for $30. I mean, this is a solid, amazing formula. I don't have not one single complaint about this formula from Rare Beauty. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, absolutely. This is something I would look for like finish wise. I love this kind of finish for like my pro kit. This, this also kind of reminds me of the Dior backstage face and body if I'm being really honest. Like that, it gives the same exact kind of finish as the Dior face and body. And I have that in my pro kit. So this is a standout. Wow. Beautiful foundation. I highly recommend this one from Rare Beauty. We're now in the $34 price range. And for 34 bucks, you can get the Glossier Stretch Fluid Foundation. I picked up the shade Light 5. It looked like their foundations were actually running a bit on like the darker side for like a light formula. This seemed I mean, it looked deeper to me, especially when I was swatching it inside at Sephora. So let's test it out. Let's see what this color looks like on. Pretty packaging, nice glass bottle. It has a pump. That's always a plus to me when it has a pump. It's just so much easier because look at, you're just gonna pump out what you think you need. I'm only gonna do about two pumps of this foundation to start. It actually has a much thicker texture to it than I was picturing. I was picturing it to be like a very like, almost like oily foundation. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm gonna blend this on with my N17 brush using the light fiber side. I'm gonna dip into it. it has no fragrance. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm. Let me read about this. <laughs> light to medium coverage, natural finish. Apply two pumps, okay. Huh. Well, it's not the easiest to blend on your skin, to be quite honest. It has a very streaky finish to it. And granted, I was first applying it kind of back and forth. So like the bristles of this brush are longer. If you're doing a back and forth motion, you can create a streakiness to your foundation. So I did switch to a tapping, which is what I normally do anyway when I'm, it's like my preferred method of um, blending a foundation on. Tapping it on looks a lot nicer. It actually has a really pretty finish. I just felt like it was going on really streaky at first, but it could just be a little bit of user error. But now once it's on, it looks really pretty. I actually picked out a really great shade. I'm so happy because I'll be able to wear this for future videos. I'm gonna put a little bit more on my chin and let's just see. Okay, yeah. It has almost like a, like a jelliness to it, like a, a jelly kind of texture to it, which I think is making it a little streaky in terms of like the blend. But once it's on, like this is a beautiful finish. This looks really nice. I'm gonna touch it. It actually has a way better feeling than I was anticipating. I don't know why, I just had this thought in my head that it's Glossier, it's gonna be like that no makeup makeup feel and look, but this is surprising to me. The way it dried down is really, really nice. I feel like it's gonna have longevity based on that alone. The fact that it's like actually dried down in my skin, but dried down to like this beautiful satin finish. I have to say, I am very surprised at how much I love this foundation. And this is, I know this is my first impression, of course. Beautiful coverage. I am gonna build it up just to see what it does when I build it up. So that initial layer I'd say is like a perfect 
medium coverage. Let's see what we can do right here by layering it. Okay, yeah, you could definitely layer this and build it up. It's looking pretty. It's layering nice on top of that first coat. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this gives my skin a really nice smooth finish. It's not emphasizing any texture I have. It's not emphasizing my pores in the inner part of my cheek. It looks really smooth. I love that it had that dry down time, that self-setting aspect to it. Big surprise. I was, again, I was not expecting that from a Glossier product at all. I was, I was expecting it to like slide down my face and kind of disappear. That's just what I was expecting. I'm so pleasantly surprised. I feel like this is a really beautiful foundation. I think it would be good for all skin types. The fact that it has that dry down feeling to it, if you have oily skin, combination oily skin. For dry skin, I don't see why you couldn't wear this foundation. I feel like it'd be like a beautiful foundation for dry skin. Mature skin, young skin, doesn't matter. I think this is a really nice formula. I'm so pleasantly surprised. Would I go back out and repurchase this one from Glossier? I definitely would. I think this is so pretty. It's such a pretty foundation. Price point wise, it's a nice price point. It's 34 bucks. I would definitely go back out and repurchase it. And I definitely would recommend this one from Glossier. This next one is also $34. It's from Danessa Myricks. Spoiler alert, I bought this before I did this huge haul at Sephora and I love this foundation. It is just, it is so amazing if you have dry skin. I don't have dry skin, but this is like a really great drink of water for my skin when it's when I'm in the colder months and my skin is just more dehydrated and feeling more dry. Let me show you what it looks like on. It's the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. I have the shade 9N. One thing I love about this, like in terms of packaging, let's just kick it off with the packaging. I love the squeezy tube. This is like, if you're a makeup artist or if you're on the go and you travel with your makeup a lot, traveling with glass bottles can be very stressful, very risky, very messy, because if it breaks and it shatters, you're looking at a huge mess and also it's dangerous. So I love that you can just squeeze out the amount that you want. I mean, it's just genius, genius packaging. Danessa Myricks has some of my favorite products. She's a pro makeup artist if you haven't tried her products yet. They're all fantastic. So it's no surprise that I love the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. Now I'm gonna apply it with my N17 brush. Texture of this is actually a little bit on the thicker side, but it blends out to be this juicy medium coverage that is just flawless on your skin. It is like a flawless, beautiful medium coverage. You need a really small amount. In fact, I always do this. I always end up pumping out or squeezing out way too much of the product. Don't do what I did. You don't want to waste it. It's a fantastic foundation that you want to just don't waste any of it. Less is more. It really spreads so much and so far to your skin. So like that one swipe, I could just spread it to the entire rest of my forehead, my chin, and get this whole side knocked out. Like it is like the most expandable foundation that I've tried in a while. So I'm going to blend it out. Now the shade is a teeny bit on the dark side for me. However, I didn't pick up the shade below it because that seemed a little too light. So I just opted for something that's like a little teeny bit too dark. The finish of this is like juicy, glowy, flawless skin. Like that's like the best way to describe it is like just juicy, dewy, glowy, hydrated skin that's flawless. I mean, it blends out super easy. You need very, very, a minimal amount to achieve a medium, to even full coverage with this foundation. It's deceivingly full coverage, honestly. The way it feels on your skin, it feels like I put on a serum, a moisturizer, and I just left it alone. It doesn't feel like I have makeup on. It just feels like I have like really moisturizing skincare on. So I love the feeling. This is a fantastic formula. If you have really, really dry skin, or if you have dry mature skin, or just have mature skin, and you want that extra bit of plumpness and hydration to your skin. If you have oily skin, this is the only thing. If you have really true oily skin, I would not recommend this for you. I don't think you're going to love it. I don't think it's going to suit your skin type the best, to say the least. I think if you are oily in some areas, but combination to normal, like let's say you have just a combination oily T-zone, you're definitely going to want to set the T-zone, especially with a good amount of translucent powder. And then I think you could definitely wear it. Sometimes the glowier the finish, the more it can exaggerate and emphasize any texture or large pores on your skin. This one does not do that. I feel like it still makes my skin look really smooth and really flawless. Look how beautiful that glow is. And you could tone it down easily. You could definitely tone it down if you're not wanting it to be this glow. You could tone it down, of course, with just a setting powder or a blotting powder throughout the day. There's ways to manipulate it to make it perfect to what you want. But I just think this is such an amazing formula. It's very unique. I haven't tried a foundation like this in a really long time. And it, to me, this is just probably one of the best foundations out there for dry skin. Do I recommend this one? 100%, just not if you have oily skin. 
Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, absolutely. So once again, this is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. Next up is $35. It's a product that I've loved for, since it came out, actually. I've been using this since it came on the market. It's from One Size. It's a really unique product. I just wanna point this out really quick because throughout this video, you're only gonna see foundations that are marketed as foundations, not skin tints, not CC creams, not tinted moisturizers. That's for a whole other video. These are specifically foundations. However, I really felt the need to include this, okay? But hear me out, this is why. It's called Turn Up The Base. It's a BBB cream. It's a beauty blur balm. This, it's not marketed as a tinted moisturizer and it's not marketed as a foundation. It's somewhere in between and it does provide immense coverage. So I really wanted to include it for that reason. Also because I want to be able to showcase something from One Size Beauty. They also have a powder foundation, but this is not about powder foundations. So we're kind of giving this one a little bit of a pass and I hope you can forgive me for that. Without further ado, let's try on the Turn Up The Base BBB Cream. I have the shade Medium One Neutral. This is a really good match for me. Packaging wise, it's just in a squeezy tube, which is very quick, very, very easy. The only thing I don't like, okay, is this. After you squeeze out the foundation, and this is inevitable, like this is just something that happens naturally. I'm just, I don't like messes. And this always creates a mess that I have to like wipe off so it doesn't get on the rest of my makeup. All right, now that we've talked about that and discussed that part, I love the fact that it is in a tube. It's easy, it's easy to travel with that. I'm gonna apply this one with a BK Beauty 109. Now the reason why I love this product is it virtually disappears into your skin and makes your skin look like it has a filter on it. It's like a the ultimate blurring product. It's not sheer, it gives you this amazing amount of coverage for being a product that's not like actually marketed as a foundation. It gives you phenomenal coverage, but look at the way this melts into your skin without having to blend and buff and overly work the product. It just, it blends right in. It's like butter that just melts onto your skin. It's so fantastic. I don't know what's in this product. I should really read more about it because it's a magical product with like such a unique finish. The only product this kind of reminds me of is actually the NARS Matte Tinted Moisturizer that I used to love years ago. But even that is not nearly as good as this one size beauty turn up the base. So you could see it instantly blurs my skin. I mean, look at that. Color is perfect. The way it feels in your skin is so nice. Texture of it is amazing. It just feels like a satiny, almost like whipped kind of texture. It's very silky. It's very long lasting. And if you have oily skin, I think this is a standout product that you should definitely check out. If you have dry skin, I would say avoid this one because it does have that more of a matte feeling and more of a matte look to it. So I would just be more careful. Like if you do have really dry skin, you're still curious to try this out. Just make sure you're doing your due diligence and you're doing the right skin prep based for your skin type and then you could probably get away with trying it. However, I wouldn't. it wouldn't be like the first suggestion of mine if you have dry skin, if that makes sense. If you have combination skin, go for it. But again, if you have oily skin, I really think this is like a product that you should absolutely check out. I mean, it's just all around. It's a really well done product and I've loved it for so long. I feel like it's such a underrated product, especially for one size beauty. They have a lot of really great products that have gone viral, but no one really talks about this and I'm still surprised to this day. So maybe we can make it go viral because it really deserves it. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? Yes, I have before. This is my third one that I've, that I've owned in my life since they've been out. I recommend this for anyone with oily skin, combination skin. Combination leaning dry is totally fine. Mature skin, I don't see why not. It has a really beautiful blurring texture to it. So if you have more skin texture, more mature skin with fine lines and wrinkles, you might really love how blurring this is on your skin. Shade range is amazing. They have really great undertones at One Size Beauty. Blends really well into your skin. The finish is just gorgeous. It's easy to work with. Packaging's great, price point's great. You have to try it. So once again, this is the One Size Beauty Turn Up The Base BBB Cream. Next up, we have one from Nude6. This one is $36. It comes in this cute little tin. I, I've always liked how their products come in tins. This is the Tinted Cover Foundation. I picked up the shade Nude 3.5, and I've heard really good things about this foundation. I know a lot of makeup artists that actually love this formula foundation. I've never tried it, so today is the day, and I'm really excited to try this on camera. So let's open this up. It's kind of cute that it has like a mirror inside too. All right, so this comes in a squeeze tube and I can't really shake this one. I know it's like more of a thicker cream formula or at least like more creamy based. So I'm gonna pump it on the top of my hand. <laughs> I love a good plastic tube. These are amazing for travel. You know, you don't have to worry about them shattering or breaking. 
They're also just really convenient if you're a makeup artist or just if you just want convenient things. I love a good like tube with a pump. Those are always so easy to work with. So packaging alone, love. Now let's apply this with uh, a clean 106 brush from BK Beauty. This has a hint of, yeah, this does have fragrance to it. I'm not sure. It almost kind of smells like, hmm, like uh, almost has like a minty, like a fresh minty kind of fragrance to it. Very, very interesting. I'll have to look into like what exactly that is. Feels very nice and refreshing on my skin. Tinted cover foundation. What are the claims on this? Let's kind of read about this. If there's any claims, there's no claims, but they do have all the ingredients listed on the back of the tin. So that's always nice. Um, wow. Shade is great. That's amazing. Great. Love that. It's blending in really nice. It, there's a hint of patchiness going on. It's not the worst, but it's just something to note and to point out. This feels really nice on my skin though. I have to say like this feels really, really comfortable, really lightweight. I think this would be a good option if you're looking for some coverage, right? Some easy coverage, because it is still easy to work with. Like I said, it's a little patchy in some areas. Like I could see my cheek discoloration just a little bit through the product. It's not horrible, but just something to know, like I said. But if you're looking for like a lightweight formula that feels very, just just feels lightweight, like does it feel heavy on your skin and looks really natural? This gives a really nice natural skin like finish. It just looks like my skin, but more even. I think this is a really nice formula for that. I would say this is probably good for anyone, even if you have, yeah, even if you have oily skin, I can't imagine this being like a really bad formula for you because it doesn't feel like, you know, it doesn't have like a greasy, I hate to use that word, but it doesn't have like a greasy feeling to it. So if you have oily skin, I think this would still be a really nice glowy, more natural finish product for you. Combination, normal, dry, super dry, mature. I think anybody could wear this formula. I really do. I think this is like a good basic, natural, lightweight feeling formula that anybody could work with. I'd say in total, this is more of a full light, not even like really on the medium cusp, to be honest. It just feels very, feels very lightweight, very natural. I like this a lot. I think I need to play with it more, of course, but like first impression is it's a really nice formula. It feels really lightweight and healthy on my skin. It's not the most easy to blend on, but it's also not that bad. It was, it was still fairly easy. Would I go back out and repurchase this one from Newt Six? Yes, I would. I think it's definitely a good enough formula to, you know, purchase again and to continue to use. And I will continue to wear this throughout my, you know, you'll see it on my YouTube channel, I'm sure, and on my social media. I do recommend this one. So if you're looking for a lightweight, very natural feeling foundation that's pretty easy to apply, then this is a really good one to look into for sure. So once again, that is the Nude Sticks Tinted Cover Foundation in the shade Nude 3.5. Really pretty. Next up for $36 is a product that I absolutely love. If you're not new to my YouTube channel, you watch my other videos, you're gonna know that I love this. So spoiler alert, I am so into this product. I think it's such an amazing complexion product. It's the Fenty Beauty tint stick, ease drop tint stick. These are a medium but buildable coverage. They are fantastic, especially if you're someone on the go and you want something that's quick and easy and not messy, this product is absolutely for you. Let me show you what it looks like on in case you have not seen it yet on my channel. I'm gonna apply the shade eight and just swipe it on and you're gonna see how, first of all, you can load this product onto your skin. Like you can like get in there and like load it up and it doesn't look heavy. It never looks heavy. It is just such a fantastic formula product. I mean, it's amazing. It really is. Let me show you what it looks like. Blend it in. I'm gonna blend it in just softly with my N15 brush. Now, like I mentioned, you can build this up. So if you just did like one thin layer, you could blend it on and be done. But if you wanna customize it and get even more coverage, you could of course layer it and build it up to be more of a, a full coverage. So I'm gonna tap it in. It just blends with such ease. It's such a beginner friendly product. I feel like if you are just starting out with makeup and maybe like liquid foundations intimidate you, they're more fussy and you want something that's just really easy to work with when you're just starting out in your makeup journey. I can't recommend this enough. I really cannot. It blends into your skin. It really has a great way of blurring your skin. So it's gonna blur any skin texture, any large pores. If you have fine lines, any kind of texture on your skin, it's gonna help to smooth and really blur. So it's gonna give you more of a filtered look to your skin, which we all want, right? I mean, who doesn't want more of a filtered look to their skin? But the ease of use with this and also just how user-friendly it is, checks so many boxes for me. I just feel like if you have little to no blending skill or application skill with products, you could still put this on, blend it out and do it with such ease. So the feeling of it is nice. It feels like a really lightweight feeling. It doesn't feel like a heavy, thick cream or stick foundation. Like a lot of stick foundations can tend to feel really heavy on your skin. This feels like nothing. 
super lightweight. The shade range is amazing. But not only that, the shade range that they have, it's very, it's very flexible in terms of like the colors. So the colors are very flexible. They're very forgiving. They kind of have like a tinted moisturizer flexibility where, you know, you don't have to get like the exact shade that matches your skin. There's more wiggle room in terms of the shades where you can kind of pick one that's maybe a little too dark or a little too light or it's not quite the right undertone and it really does still melt into your skin and is more like color adjusting, I should say. Finish is beautiful. You can see it has a really nice, like a soft satin to matte finish, depending on like what your skin type is. I think it will change to whatever your skin type is. So for me, it's looking like more of a satin to matte finish right now. If you prep your skin with more glowy, more emollient moisturizers, it's gonna have an even more glowy finish to it. Whereas if you prep your skin with more of like a mattifying primer, it's going to have more of a matte finish. I recommend this for anyone. I think even if you have dry skin, mature skin, young skin, oily combo, doesn't matter. This is gonna be a universally easy product to work with that works well for, in my opinion, any skin type. So definitely check this one out. This is a hit. So once again, this is the Fenty Ease Drop Tint Stick Foundation. Next up is $38. It's a foundation I've actually been curious about for many years and I just have never gotten around to trying it until now. It's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. Now I gotta warn you, the shade range was very difficult. The undertones I felt like were just not matching what they were saying they were. So please forgive me if the shade that I picked out is not for me. We're gonna find out together because I only swatched it all on the top of my hand and that's you can only tell so much, right? And also the Sephora that I was at was so packed. I was like getting stressed out. But anyway, we're gonna try this out. I picked up the shade 250C and let's see what this looks like on. Love the glass bottle, very luxe, feels really nice, feels very, you know, very luxurious. Love the pump, let me shake it a little bit. Okay, so this is supposed to be a luminous medium coverage foundation. I like that, natural finish. Let's see what it looks like on. Let's do about two pumps to start. I'm gonna apply it with my N17. No fragrance to it, that's nice. Ooh, hey, this color is gonna work, wow. Okay, and you'll notice too, the color reference is 250C. Now, normally that stands for a cool undertone, meaning more pink based. It's gonna have more pink and peach in the undertone. Anastasia Beverly Hills is, it's kind of like House Labs and MAC Cosmetics where they just do the opposite. They, they take the undertones and what they stand for and they flip it. So that took me a minute to realize when I was swatching the shades at my Sephora. So this definitely has more of a warm golden undertone, much more like my undertone, my complexion. So just something to keep in mind. If you're shopping for Anastasia Beverly Hills, keep in mind that's a big factor. So just switch, switch the undertones. That bled into my skin so quick and so easy while I was chatting away about the undertones. Let me put some on my chin. Has no fragrance, feels really nice. I mean, I'm really impressed with this foundation. I just barely got it on my skin. Uh, definitely buildable. I'm gonna build up a little bit more on my cheek right here, but wow, coverage is beautiful. Finish is one of my favorite kind of finishes. Like this finish is just, this is like the finish that I, I look for always with, with a foundation. It's luminous. It's giving me flawless skin. It is not emphasizing anything on my skin. It's luminous, but not in like an overwhelming way too. So I really like that. And I really want to point that out. So if you have oily skin and maybe you're afraid of going for like a luminous marketed product, I wouldn't be afraid of this one. I think this is going to be a really nice formula for even more of an oily skin type or combination skin, this would absolutely be beautiful. I think this would be a standout for dry skin, absolutely. And for maybe mature skin that wants a nice flawless finish with more of a medium coverage, this is beautiful. I think the only complaint that I have about this foundation is just the way the shade range is labeled is ridiculously confusing. Fun fact, actually, I think I took the longest to pick out this shade when I was in store shopping for these foundations than I did for any other of the brands. I think maybe had a hard time with KBD, but this was like, this took me a long time. I was standing in the Anastasia Beverly Hills aisle for a long time. People checked on me. They were worried about me because I was there for so long. It was worth it because that's just absolutely beautiful. Wow. Blendability, super easy. Coverage is absolutely gorgeous. I love the finish. I love everything about this foundation except for the undertone labeling. That's it. So would I recommend this? 100%. I think anybody could wear this for the most part. I really do. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? Yes. I'm actually curious. Maybe I should put this in my pro kit because that is a stunning, stunning foundation. Price range, below average. Honestly, $38 for a really, really nice formula foundation is something you don't see that often. A lot of the foundations that feel like this are at least $10 more. 
at least $10 more. So got a hand to Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is a beautiful foundation. I would definitely recommend this one. Next up is also $38 and we have a stick formula. This is from Merit. It is the, I always forget the name, it's the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. I have the shade Camel. Now I did have a difficult time choosing the shade, like the right shade. There's not a lot of shade options at all. So the shade range, unfortunately, is very, very disappointing with this product. Just gotta put that out there now. So let's try it on together. I've only tried it one other time before this video, but not enough times to form an opinion yet. So let's try this one out together. Okay. The shade that I picked up is just it's obviously a little too dark for me. And you know what? I think we're gonna buff this on with a 106 from BK Beauty. Okay. Yeah, so it's a very thick formula. And what I noticed the most is it doesn't have a lot of ease with the blend. Like it, you have to really kind of force it to blend it onto your skin. I don't like having to like force a blend. Like I want to like be able to blend on my skin really smooth, really easy because no one wants to like overly work their skin, right? Cause it's like wear and tear on your skin. I think obviously if I had more of a glowy base on it, I'd probably have an easier time. In fact, let me just switch to my N14 for this area. Yeah, even with a small buffing brush, it's still difficult to blend this onto my skin. Coverage wise, the coverage is, is pretty full. For being a minimalist product, I'd say the coverage of this that you get right away is maybe a little bit challenging for, for being marketed as like a minimalist product. When I think minimalist, I think it's going to make a, a broad range of people happy, right? It's gonna like fit the needs of majority of people. And I don't think that this fits the majority of people's needs. I think this is a very niche product where if you want like a stick full coverage foundation product, that's great for you. But if you don't want that kind of product, if you're not looking for that kind of full coverage, then you're not gonna like this. So I don't feel like it's an everyday type product for that reason. I do also find that just, if this is the only foundation that they're gonna carry, it's such a small component. Like it's gonna take you a long time to swipe on, and maybe I'm just being dramatic, but this little tiny component is gonna take a long time to swipe on your entire face and the fact that it's not like the most spreadable product means you do need to kind of coat each area of your face if you want an even amount of coverage where some other products can like expand really well where like you just kind of do a couple of swipes like the Fenty one, for example. You do a couple of swipes and it's really expandable and really movable where you can kind of blend it all over really easily. This one, I didn't find it to be that easy to spread out to the rest of my face. So I'm gonna move on. I don't love this finish. It just has a heavier feeling to me and I, I don't like that personally. I would recommend this product to anyone who's looking for a full coverage stick foundation and maybe someone who has more oily skin because I feel like this would not be a great formula for dry skin, personally. I don't think I'd recommend this for mature skin either because it's a stick and it's a really thick formula and it might look really heavy on more mature skin. If you're young, go for it, absolutely. If you have normal skin, 100%, you might love this formula. The only thing I will say that I do really like about it is how small and compact it is. I just don't love that the applicator itself is so small and compact, but otherwise packaging is really nice and sleek. It's not the most expensive product, so that's really good. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? No, I don't think it's the right product for me personally, but if you've tried it and you love it, please feel free to leave me a comment below. So that once again is the Merit Stick Foundation. Speaking of stick foundations, I've had this one for a while. It's borderline probably expired, but you know what? We're just testing out for this video just for the sake of the video. It's the Huda Beauty Stick Foundation. It's actually the Faux Filter Skin Finish Buildable Coverage Foundation Stick to be exact. I have the shade Latte, it's 300N Latte, so it's gonna be more of a neutral undertone. I actually have been enjoying this for many years at this point. It's a really nice stick formula. It's really creamy. It blends really easy. Let me show you what it looks like on in case you've missed me using it in the past on my channel. Okay, let's swipe this on. Ooh, got a little chunky. And I'm gonna blend this one out with my N17. So this is a very full coverage. However, I have to say it doesn't look heavy on the skin. And that's a really hard thing to achieve with cream foundations, like stick foundations in my opinion. Like I swiped on quite a bit of product. And to me, this looks almost similar to the One Size Beauty Turn Up The Base BBB Cream. It has that very soft focus, very blurring effect to it. Very flawless. In fact, I'm gonna blend a little bit more on. It's easy to work with. It's definitely convenient in the stick form. You just twist it up as you need more product. I think Huda Beauty has some amazing complexion products. 
The only thing I will say is I wish some of her undertones were more true to being neutral. They do lean a little bit more on like the golden, more warm undertone side. This one's supposed to be a neutral and it's it's close to a neutral, but I still feel like it has it's slightly leaning towards the warm golden side. But that aside, finish of it is beautiful. Like you can see, it has a beautiful flawless finish to it. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't look heavy. I think this is a really great stick foundation for anyone who wants that full coverage and maybe that product on the go just to swipe on and then blend out. It's really perfect for that. The only person I would say it's not probably great for is more mature skin. I think it could probably have more of a heavier finish if you do have mature skin, so just a forewarning. But if you have young skin, um, anything else other than like very mature skin, I think you would probably love this foundation. Great for oily skin, definitely. It has more of a satin to matte finish. Depending on how you prep your skin, you could probably alter it quite a bit. So if you do have slightly drier skin, you could definitely check this formula out. Just make sure you prep your skin accordingly. If you have really, really dry skin, I'd say this is not gonna be the best formula to check out. There's plenty of others for you out there. Same goes for the mature skin. I think it's not the best formula for mature skin. However, so do I recommend this one? Absolutely, it's a fantastic formula if you want a full coverage or medium to buildable stick foundation. Would I go back out and repurchase this? Definitely, it's a really great product for all those reasons I listed. It's just beautiful, it's easy to work with and the price point is really nice and you don't need that much of it too. So this will last you a really, really long time. So once again, that is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation Stick. We're now in the $40 price range and for that, you can get the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. This one has been around for a while. It's I think one of their original, if not, it actually is their original foundation formula that they launched when the brand first launched. And I got a hand to Fenty Beauty. I know I talk about this a lot, but they are really like the pioneers of having the most expansive, inclusive shade range on the market. Like they set the tone for the rest of these brands to follow suit and to finally pick up the slack where they were missing and lacking shades for everyone. Like the shade range is just perfection. I have the shade 230 and I know this is a little bit too light for me, but we're gonna try it on anyway. It's okay. You know, it's for the sake of the video. It's not the perfect shade for me. That's my fault because I chose it online a long, long time ago and I just, I chose wrong. So I'm actually gonna apply with my N15 brush and with full coverage foundations like this, I actually like to kind of use a slightly bigger brush to sheer it out to be a little bit more natural, but also just this is gonna help blend this foundation into my skin really quick and really easy. Even without using a brush, it's more fluffy. It does blend out pretty easy, this foundation. So it's easy to work with. It's definitely a medium to full coverage, like buildable foundation. The finish of it is gonna be more of a matte finish. It's meant to be more of a matte finish foundation. So for anyone who has oily skin, really fantastic option. So if you have oily skin, you want a full coverage foundation or just a really flawless finish foundation, this is a great, great option to check out. So I'm gonna buff it into my skin. You can see it's just a teeny bit too light for my complexion. Blends in super quick, super easy has a really flawless finish to it. It definitely gives my skin a really smooth finish. Like there's no emphasis on texture. There's no emphasis on my pores, on my cheeks. It just looks like a filter. Like it legit looks like a filter on my skin. So yeah, blends easy, an amazing shade range. Price point is definitely nice. A little bit goes a long way with this foundation, just something to keep in mind. I'd recommend this for anyone who wants a full coverage foundation with a matte finish. Anyone who has oily skin, severely oily skin, combination oily skin. The only person I wouldn't recommend this foundation for is anyone who has super dry skin or mature skin. I don't think it's gonna be the best option out there for you. There's gonna be so many other options instead to check out. I mean, look at that, it's stunning, right? So would I recommend this one? Yes, for those people that I just mentioned. Would I go back out and purchase it again? Yes, and I really should go back out and purchase a slightly darker shade so I could start wearing this on a regular basis and trying it out more often. So once again, that's the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. Next up for $40, you can get the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. This is a 24 hour wear foundation. I have never tried this, but I do like the matte concealer formula. It is very, very long wearing. So I'm excited to try it. I picked up the shade Y305 and now I have to just warn you. I picked this up in store and the shades that were available for me to actually get were extremely limited. So we are going to find out together what this looks like on, but I don't have high hopes, okay? Now this is supposed to be a next generation mattifying foundation that combines full coverage, 24 hour wear and a second skin effect. Love that. 
All right, so long wearing second skin effect. It's a medium to full coverage, suitable for combination to oily skin. I like the way they put that in there. Okay, let's try it out. I love a good tube for the reasons why I've been listing, but nice, convenient packaging. Love the squeezy tube. I'm going to just put some on the top of my hand. Yeah, this is gonna be too light. That's my fault. We're gonna dip into it with my 106 brush. This is definitely gonna be a full coverage. Okay, hmm. this has a bit of fragrance to it. Okay, let me just smell this one more time. Yeah, this definitely has some, a slight bit of fragrance to it. It's definitely full coverage. It's a little thick. It is a little thick and it's drying down on the top of my hand really quick as well. So hence probably the long wearing aspect of it. You know, long wear foundations, they tend to dry down really quick on the skin because they have to have like some form of like self setting ingredient in it that helps it to just stay on your skin and stay put for, X amount of hours, like in this case, 24 hours, right? So it does have like a quick dry down time, which is expected and normal for any foundation that's supposed to be long wearing and also like a more full coverage typically as well. So very full coverage, very thick, but you know what? For it being so thick, it doesn't feel bad on my skin. It actually does not have a heavy feeling to it. And I was really going into it, honestly expecting it to feel very heavy and like thick on my skin, like kind of weigh it down. This actually has a beautiful finish. Like, to be honest, that looks beautiful. I, it's very full coverage, but it looks beautiful and like very, very flawless. I wouldn't say this is a great selection for dry, mature skin or just, just mature skin in general. Even if you have oily, mature skin, I think this could be just maybe a little too thick of a formula for more mature skin. It could, it could potentially settle into fine lines things like that, right? So I would maybe just keep that in mind if you are like a mature but oily skin, mature person, maybe opt for something a little bit more lightweight in texture so it doesn't settle in. But again, that's just my initial thoughts. I don't know for sure. If you have just combination oily skin or very oily skin and you want that full coverage, I would 100% look into getting this foundation because I feel like I have just a simple lightweight coverage on. It does not feel heavy at all. So, wow. Make it forever. And also this shade is is looking great. Like it's a little bit, it's a little lighter for like what I typically pick out. Very wearable and I will definitely end up wearing this. Like let's say I have an event and I want very full coverage, flawless, long wearing foundation that's gonna stay put all night or all day. I will definitely be using this for sure. This is a really beautiful foundation. Like the more I look at it, the more I'm in, I'm in awe. Like it, it has smoothed my skin. It looks super flawless but it doesn't look like I have a mask of makeup on and it doesn't feel like I have a mask of makeup on. So very well done, Makeup Forever. Wow, wow, wow. Would I go back out and repurchase it? 100%, yes. This is a showstopper in my opinion. So once again, that's the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. Absolutely beautiful. Next up, we have one from Say. It's also $40. I've actually been wanting to try this one for quite some time. So this was like the perfect excuse to go out and pick it up. I'm very excited for this one, okay? I picked up the shade eight. It's the Say Glowy Super Skin. It's a lightweight, luminous foundation. I like all those things, so let's try it out. Packaging is beautiful. I do love the glass bottle. I'm a sucker for anything that feels like luxe and just really nice. But it is a pump, which is also fantastic. I'm gonna shake this up because I feel like it's a little bit more on the watery side. So let's just do two pumps on the top of my hand. Ooh, it's probably good. And I'm gonna apply this with a 101 from BK Beauty. And let's see, ooh, wow, wow. Okay, I picked up a great shade, so that's amazing. This is very glowy, but let's see if it dries down to be a touch, touch more matte or at least satin. For being super glowy, I still feel like it gives me a nice, full light coverage, like a full on light coverage, nothing less, maybe borderline going into a medium. Blends really easy, feels extremely comfortable on my skin, like very, very hydrating. Coverage is nice for a lightweight, glowy foundation. This is definitely more of like a, your natural finish, especially if you have dry skin. I would say this is gonna be a perfect finish and feeling and texture for dry skin. I will say if you are oily, like a true oily skin person, you're probably not gonna like this feeling. This is gonna be way too glowy, way too almost oily feeling on your skin. So just a forewarning. I'm sure if you mixed it with maybe a little bit of a mattifying primer underneath or you set it thoroughly with a more mattifying powder, you could probably get away with utilizing it and wearing it. But ultimately, I feel like it's just not the right formula for more oily skin people out there. But if you have really dry skin or combination dry skin or if you have mature skin, wow, you should definitely check this one out because it's just so easy. I mean, it blended right into my skin with very, very minimal effort. It looks just like a healthy, glowy 
juicy foundation. So if you're looking for a foundation that has a lot of hydration to it and has a nice hydrating feel to it, you're probably gonna love this one. I will say it's probably buildable, so let's just build up a little bit more with whatever's left over on my hand and tap it in. Okay, so you can kind of build it up, but it's not layering as well as I would like it to because it is so wet. It's not really drying down enough for me to like layer another additional layer on top. So just something to keep in mind. So I feel like if you need more coverage, maybe instead of trying to layer it, just opt to do some spot concealing in the places you want more coverage. But all in all, really beautiful finish. For being so glowy, I don't think it's emphasizing my pores on my cheeks or any kind of texture. So that's always a plus. It blended out really quick, really easy. The coverage is a really nice, natural, light to medium, I would say at best. The feeling of it is really nice. It feels like very hydrating and nice on my skin. It's not too pricey, which is good. I like the packaging. Would I recommend this? Yes, but not if you have severely oily skin. Would I go back out and repurchase this? I would, because this is really nice. And I think this is gonna be really good for me when my skin is more dry, like in the colder winter months. This is gonna be the kind of foundation that I'm gonna grab and like want to wear on a daily basis. For summertime, probably not so much, but that's okay. There's a time and a place for everything, right? So once again, that is the Say Super Glowy Skin Foundation. Next up, we have another one for $40. This is from Tarte, and I'm not looking forward to trying this one out, okay? And I have to just be honest with you, when I swatched this on the top of my hand at Sephora, I was like, what is this texture, okay? We're gonna try it out, because for the sake of the video, it's the Tarte Amazonian Clay 16 hour full coverage foundation. This is so old school, it takes me back to, honestly, this brings me back to like when I first started wearing makeup. Like, it's been around for a really, really long time. It's very old school. It's, it's miraculously still selling. There's still people out there that like this one. Let's just get into it, okay? It's a poreless technology, full coverage and soft matte finish, dermatologist tested and non-comedogenic. That's what all it says. I picked up the shade 37S, medium tan sand. Now, all of the shades to choose from, I'm pretty sure they all said sand. Every single one of them was sand. Sand this, sand that medium sand, tan sand, tan sand, plus tan sand. I mean, it was like everything was tan sand. And I was so confused. I was like, just give me, give me an undertone. Just, just give me an undertone to, to just try to color match myself. I had a really hard time. Speaking of like hard time, like I know I said I spent a long time trying to find my Anastasia shade. Well, I spent a long time trying to find my Tarte and actually I just really ended up giving up and just kind of grabbing what I thought was gonna work well enough. Let's try it out. Let's stop talking about it. I do like the packaging, just an FYI. I really like the packaging. I love the tube and I really like the wood cap, aside from the very nice packaging. I'm gonna squeeze them out on the top of my hand and you could just see this is like, it's like thick. It's not gonna fly off. Like I could probably, yeah, no, it's not going anywhere. It's just so thick, but we're gonna try it out. Okay, we're gonna test it out. I'm gonna apply it with a freshly clean N17 brush with BK Beauty and let's see what we got. Okay. So, you know, here's the thing. I will hand it to Tarte. This was very innovative back in the day. Like this was a big innovation. It was popular. It was like, there was nothing like it on the market. And I get that and it totally had its day. The thing that bothers me about Tarte is they never got with the times. You know, they never really, they've never really updated their products. And you know, I've talked about this before, so I'm not gonna go too far in depth, but they have some of the worst shade ranges in, in makeup history, in my opinion. Like their, their shade range is so not inclusive in any way, shape or form of the imagination. Like it's just not, and they've never corrected it. They've never, like at least Too Faced, like they, they did try at least, I mean, I say this like, at least they tried to like expand their shade range. They still don't have enough, but at least they tried. They made an effort. Tarte has never made an effort to, oh my God, this looks like, oh my God. I look 20 years older all of a sudden. Wow, okay. They never became current with the times. They haven't changed anything about their brand. And like, that's what's just so shocking to me. It's like, you've been around for so long. Miraculously, you're still selling products. I'm like, good for you. I'm glad, you know, that you're still seeing some success. I'm sure there's some people that just love it and it works for them and it's tried and true. And I really understand that totally. But the fact that they've never even tried to expand their shade range to accommodate other people, like new customers, new people that might love their brand. It's just so unfair. And I was just really bitter buying this foundation. I had to be really real. I didn't want to spend my money on it. I didn't want to give them my money. 
for those reasons, it just makes me very angry, very, very angry. The other thing that's making me really angry right now is the fact that I look like I just put Play-Doh on my face. Like I look like I just grabbed Play-Doh and smeared it on my face. The life of my skin is just doled down by this foundation. It's just a terrible feeling. It's so thick, it's so pasty. I mean, I can't imagine anyone really loving the way this feels on their skin. If you're out there, let me know. Just, just tell me, it's totally fine. If you have dry skin or more mature skin, don't even touch this with a 10 foot pole. In my opinion, I think this will age you even more if you have mature skin. I already, I feel like I'm 20 years older just wearing this on this side. Like it's just cracky, thick, pasty, terrible shade range. I could go on and on. The only thing that has going for it, honestly, is this really nice, easy and convenient squeeze tube packaging with the really pretty wood cap. I like that. Price range isn't horrible. The finish of this is terrible. I hate the texture of it. I really cannot stand it. It's a full coverage, but it's a heavy, heavy full coverage. It's like weighs you down kind of full coverage. I know I'm being dramatic, trust me. I know, I, I totally understand it, but that this makes me want to be dramatic. That's how much I just don't like it. I don't recommend this for anyone, to be honest. I wouldn't go back out and buy this ever again. But once again, this is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation. Okay, next one is another one from Tarte. Same price, it's $40. This is gonna be the opposite spectrum of the first one we just tried out. That one is like full coverage, super matte. This instead is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow Foundation. Okay, so I've never tried this one. I've never even heard anything about it, to be honest. I've never heard anyone talk about it. Uh, I don't know anything about this foundation. So it's gonna be new to all of us. Same kind of packaging. I do like the tube, like I mentioned earlier. I love the cap, very luxe, just very, very earthy, very nice. The shade that I picked up is 27S Light Medium Sand. Everything sand, it's all sand. Everything is sand with tart. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze some out on the top of my hand. It's more of a juicy texture, which is amazing. It's gonna feel so much better on my skin compared to the last one. Let's swipe this on. Oh yeah, that's already way better. Let's swipe this on with my N17 and let's see what we got. Okay, right off the bat, absolutely so much better. Okay, so much better. And I might be biased just because that other one felt so dry and just like Play-Doh on my skin. This one feels like just in incredibly amazing in comparison. To blend this on, not the easiest to blend. It has almost like, okay, I think it has, this definitely has a little bit of a luminosity to it. Not just in terms of like it's glowy, but it actually has like pearlescent glow in it, like in the formula. It's giving a little hint of Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz. It's not even coverage, so that's frustrating. It's definitely like splotchy and patchy in certain areas, like right here. So let me blend on some more. Let's try give this a good go. All right, not the easiest to layer and build. Coverage is just, I'd say it's a medium, but it's patchy. It's like a patchy medium where I can still see redness in my skin right here and in here. And that's like trying to build it up and layer it. Is this marketed to be a medium? Let's read this again. Medium coverage, radiant finish. Blends like a second skin to blur the look of pores. It's not emphasizing my pores, but it definitely has like a high sheen to it. Hyaluronic acid and super fruit complex for hydrated, brighter and smoother looking skin. Okay, well, I could tell you one thing. If you were gonna choose between those two Tarte foundations, they're the same price. This one is significantly better, but it's still not good. The patchiness in the formula is really frustrating. That's really frustrating to work with. You know, if you, especially if you want some coverage with your medium coverage foundation, you're not really getting an even coverage with this one. It's definitely patchy, like I said, and inconsistent in the coverage, which is not fun to, to work with. Texture is fine. Finish is okay. It's okay. I mean, no, actually the finish is just, it's not that great because I have that patchiness in the, in the coverage. So the fact that it has that makes the finish just not, it's not flawless in any way. The feeling of it is fine. The price point is fine. Shade range is just as terrible as the last one. So there's that. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? Never, ever, ever. Would I recommend this one? No, because there's so many better formulas out there that are glowy, that actually give you a beautiful finish, that give you like really nice coverage and that are easier to work with and that have better shade ranges and more shades available. So no, I wouldn't recommend this one and uh, I, I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry to say, and if you think I'm being too hard on them, that's fine too, it's just my personal opinion. But this, once again, is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow Foundation. Moving on to $42. For that, you can get the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. This is a really classic foundation. I just have to warn you, it's a really beautiful foundation. I have not used this in many, many 
many years and I know they did reformulate it since I've used it years ago. So I'm excited and super anxious to try it again because it's a favorite. It's like a fan favorite and an artist favorite that's been around for a long time. So reboot your complexion instantly and over time. So all day wear, once again, 24 hour hydration, firming, smoothing, brightening. Let's just try it on. I picked out the shade. I think I picked out the same shade. Yes, I did. Great. Okay, so Y305, it's actually the same shade that I picked out in the matte velvet formula. I'm going to shake it in case it needs it. Lux packaging, glass bottle, feels very high end, has a pump, which again is always great and very welcomed. Let's do, let's start with that much. And I'm gonna apply this with my N17, the lighter fiber side. Pick this up. It's actually a lot more runny than I was expecting. It has the same amount of fragrance as that last one. It's not bad, it's not overwhelming, just something to point out in case that bothers you. So the Reboot Foundation is supposed to feel like very lightweight, very second skin-like, very hydrating. That's what I remember the most about it is it was a very hydrating formula. And this already feels like I'm putting skincare on my skin right now. It doesn't feel like I'm putting foundation on. It literally feels like, yeah, it feels like I'm putting like a nice watery serum on my skin. So the coverage is not, you know, the most intense with this formula. It's going to be more of a natural, radiant coverage. But I do remember being able to build this coverage up. So I'm going to build up a little bit more on my cheek. And you can see it's blending out fairly easy. It's very lightweight. It's very sheer. So... You know, it's it's not gonna be like a full coverage where it's less forgiving. It's very forgiving in terms of like how you blend it out. If you miss a spot, if you know, if you're not the most incredibly skilled at blending your foundation, this is gonna be a really nice forgiving formula. So just something to point out that I think is really nice. It's definitely illuminating. Like this is giving me quite a bit of like glow, obviously, hydration. I do feel like it's giving a slight smoothing effect. However, I do think that my pores, mm, they don't look the most smooth right here. So it, it's smoothing in areas I'm already smooth, if that makes sense. It's not really giving me much more smoothness and texture, but it's still nice. It's still very easy to work with. Feels very, very hydrating. I think this is good for anyone, even oily skin. I think you could still wear this one. I would probably just be careful and make sure you still powder down areas that you get severely oily throughout the day. But if you're normal to oily, normal skin in general, if you're combo, if you have mature skin, this is a really beautiful foundation because it does, it does offer a very like, like an instant skin plumping effect to it because of that hydration that's built in. So if you do have mature skin, I think this is a really nice option to just kind of instantly, like overall revamp your complexion. Like if your, your complexion just is looking a little bit more dull, a little bit more dry, this is a really nice foundation to kind of pop on your skin to get that instant result and that instant plumpness and like brightened and glowy effect to your skin. I mean, that's beautiful. Like that is a beautiful, healthy skin looking foundation. I think that's the best way to describe it. It makes your skin look like it's overall just very healthy and uh, not too heavy. It's like very, very natural in that regard. So love this foundation. I loved it back in the day. I'm happy to see that the newly reformulated version is just as good. I definitely, definitely recommend this one for the reasons that I just stated. And I would definitely go back out and repurchase it. It's a solid, amazing foundation from Makeup Forever. So once again, that's the Reboot Foundation. Next up and also for $42 is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. If you're not new to my channel, you already probably know my thoughts on this foundation. And you know, when it first came out, which was what, over, well over a year ago, probably like almost two years ago at this point, year and a half, so, something like that. I want to love this foundation so bad, so bad, because if you know me, you know that I also love majority of Makeup by Mario's products. I think he has amazing, amazing products. I'm a big fan, but like long story short, I'm a big fan of what Makeup by Mario puts out there. So I was, I was crushed. I was crushed to see that this foundation was just not going to work for me. And I hate to even admit this, to be quite honest, I feel really bad, but I ended up returning the one that I picked out for a couple of reasons. First of all, it just did not work on my skin. It just, I tried to make it work. I tried to let it lay down. I tried to set it. I tried to do all the things. And I tried in so many different ways to make that work. Cause I really, like I said, I wanted to make this work for me because I want, I, I love makeup by Mario. It just did not work. And I also had picked out a shade that was just a touch too light for me. So it was a, it was a bad combination, right? Anyway, flash forward, we're going to try it again. I'm excited to try it again. Even though I felt like I gave it a really solid go, it's always good to revisit products. It just, it is, you know, it's still a popular foundation. A lot of people that I know still love it. So let's try it out again. <laughs> I picked up a different shade this time. Thankfully, I picked up 13W. The one that I picked up before was like 12O. So it was like 12 olive and it was just too light. So the next shade up was 
13W. So we're gonna try it out again. You know, beautiful packaging. Mega by Mario is really sleek, very modern, very clean aesthetic packaging that I really love. Love the glass bottle, love the silver, love the pump. Let's try it out and let's see together if my thoughts have changed. So I feel like I'm just not gonna get a, a great match with Mega by Mario for some reason. Cause this is like the, like I said, this is the next shade up in terms of the shade range. Okay, it's still not a good color match at all. Maybe I should have gone back to that 12-0 because at least that was a better undertone because it's more of an olive undertone. This is very orange for a warm. It's very, it's definitely leaning very orange on the warm scale. Like it's very warm, very, very warm. All right, so this actually looks better though in terms of like the way it's blending onto my skin. We're gonna ignore the shade. I picked out a bad one again, but it, honestly, I just feel like there's not enough shades to choose from in this foundation. Like they're just not, it's very, very limiting to me. And not what I would expect from Makeup by Mario, you know, I, I just feel like he would include way more shades to choose from. I just felt very, very, like I was choosing between no good options. You know, I was like choosing the lesser evil of out of the options that I was given and just sucks to be honest. Yeah, so this shade is terrible on me. It's absolutely terrible. And honestly, I think I actually might return this one too because I can't even make the shade work. And I, I just feel very discouraged because like there's no other good option as far as the shade goes for me. So a little disappointing, but I will say the way it's going on, the way it looks is better than I remember and better than it was before. I don't know if maybe it's been changed. Who knows? It's been a minute since I've tried this foundation, needless to say. I feel like, you know, my thoughts were... And my thoughts are, are pretty much still the same in terms of like who it's for. I don't think this is a good foundation for oily skin types. I really don't because it doesn't dry down on your skin. And that's a problem. When you have oily skin, you don't want it to slip and move around throughout the day. You want products that are actually going to be able to set and dry down because you want them to have that long lasting effect, right? And when you're producing oil throughout the day, if, you're, if you have true oily skin, then this kind of formula and this type of finish is just not gonna be the most convenient to wear because you're gonna be struggling to keep it on and keep it looking good throughout the day. So I don't think it's good for oily skin types. For normal combination and mature skin, I think this would be, it's not gonna be a bad formula at all. My biggest thing with this formula was how it wore throughout the day. It just didn't wear well. And that was another reason why I ended up returning it, it was it just didn't have a really good wear time. It looked good initially, like it looks beautiful initially right now color aside, initially it looks beautiful. I look like I just have beautiful, healthy, luminous, hydrated skin and I love it, but I just know how it wears and I could tell you that I, I wore it for days and days and I wore it all day long to see how it wore throughout the day. And it just doesn't perform in terms of longevity. So for that reason, I don't recommend it. I don't hate it. I just don't think it's like the best formula on the market. I'm sad to say. So would I go back out and repurchase it? I wouldn't and it, it pains me to say it, but once again, that is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. Next up, we have one for $42. It is from Too Faced and it's actually a formula that I've been wanting to try for quite some time. I have a few people that I know who are makeup enthusiasts and lovers like me and they love this formula. So I'm really excited to try it for that reason alone. It is the Too Faced Born This Way Healthy Glow SPF 30 Moisturizing Skin Tint. Now, the reason why I did get this is because supposedly it offers a lot more coverage than a tint, like an actual skin tint. And it's supposed to be like more of a lightweight version of their classic Born This Way foundation. So we're gonna try it out. I picked up the shade Warm Nude. I'm excited to try it. Now, do I wish they had more shades available? 100%. Do they need to work on it? Still, to this day, Too Faced still needs to work on their shade range and expand it. But we'll let it go for now and we're gonna try it out and see how the formula is, what it looks like on, and how it blends, and all those good things. So I'm gonna shake this first, because it is thinner, it's quite thin. Wow, love the packaging. It reminds me, it's exactly like the Dior Backstage Face and Body. So cute, just with a different cap. So I love that kind of packaging, especially if you're a makeup artist, traveling with like rubber or plastic, squeezy tubes are just, they're the epitome of easy, like easy access, easy, they're not gonna break, they're not gonna make a mess in your kit, they're just amazing. Now this is supposed to be a 24 hour wear, it's vegan, it's UVA, UVB protection, all day hydration, and yeah, that's it, let's try it out. Okay, I'm gonna pour some on the top of my hand. It doesn't smell like anything, so there's no fragrance to it. It's definitely more runny. I'm gonna apply this with my N17. Oh, wow, okay, I can see why people like this already. I can already see why people like this formula, this, wow. I mean, first two swipes had me. Beautiful, even coverage, like, wow. 
There is no patchiness in this formula. Blends so easy, feels so nice on my skin. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how nice this feels on my skin. It honestly feels like nothing. It's very, very thin, very lightweight. Does it say it's lightweight? No, but wow, this is really nice. Too Faced did a good job of this. They really did. That's beautiful. Like I could stop blending right now and call it a day. The way that blended into my skin was so quick. I mean, it literally melted into my skin with just, all I had to do was like tap, 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 done. Like that's like, that's truly what I call minimal effort. I love that it's supposed to be a long wearing, like more natural finished product. Like usually you don't get a lot of wear time with products that are more of like skin tint or like light coverage or more, you know, natural coverage products. They don't tend to be the longest wearing. So I like that it's kind of a combo of both. That's yet to be seen. Obviously I'm just trying this out for a few minutes of this video and then I'm taking it off, but you will definitely see me wearing this in future videos because the way that looks on my skin, it feels like my skin, but better. Like that's something that I always look for with a foundation. It looks like my skin. It looks healthy. It looks glowy. It just looks even and flawless, like in a really nice natural way. So Coverage is really nice. I do feel like you could build up the coverage on this and it will blend. Yeah, it's definitely layering nice. Wow. It's almost kind of set down a bit too. It's kind of dried down a little bit, which I like. And that's probably the long wear aspect of it that's coming through. But finish is beautiful. I think I'd recommend this for anyone. I can't imagine anyone not liking this formula, honestly. So whether you're oily, dry, combo, young, mature, I mean, especially I feel like mature skin would just love this formula. This feels so incredibly nice. Price point is, is totally fine. It's not that bad of a price point at all. I love the packaging. I just think this is, again, so it's one of my favorite packagings in existence for makeup. Coverage is beautiful. Finish is beautiful. The way it blends on is gorgeous. They do need to expand their shade range, I like I mentioned earlier. But other than that, would I recommend this product? 100%. And would I go back out and purchase more? Yes. This is so, so beautiful. So that is the Too Faced Born This Way Healthy Glow Foundation. This next one is also $42. It also comes in a squeezy rubberized uh, container. This is the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I believe this is a full coverage or medium to full coverage foundation. The shade is not gonna be perfect for me, but we're gonna try it on anyway. It's just one that I had in my makeup collection. So. It was one less foundation I had to buy for this video, but let's try it out. I haven't worn this foundation in quite some time, so my thoughts are gonna be, I'll need to refresh my thoughts on what I, what I, how I feel about this foundation because it's been a minute since I've tried it. So let's test it out. I'm gonna shake it first and squeeze some on the top of my hand. That's why I wait too much. I do love this like rubberized feeling to this package. It's, it's so fun. It's like fun to play with. It's like a stress reliever. Like you just like squeeze it. It's really nice. I'm going to apply this one with my N17. Let's go for it. So this is a very matte finish foundation. However, I'm starting to remember how I felt about it. It's, it doesn't feel heavy, which is always a plus. Like if it's a super matte foundation and it's somehow still not feeling heavy on your skin, that's like such a win for any makeup brand to achieve. I feel like it's so, something that's super hard to achieve when you're doing a full coverage matte, but this really does give you, it's almost like a filter. It's like a very soft focused, blurring feeling to it. It's honestly very similar to the One Size Beauty. Um, and that one gives like a ton, of, a ton of coverage for what it is too. But this is just super matte. I'd say a full on medium to medium full coverage is what you're gonna get with this one. It's easy to work with. It definitely blends into your skin quick and easy. Like I didn't, that was minimal effort. And for a full coverage, that's sometimes hard to achieve. It's sometimes hard to achieve an easy blend with that kind of finish because it like the the texture of it is usually thicker. The opacity of it is, it's full. It's like a fully opaque shade that you're working with. And those tend to be a little bit harder to blend in and make them look flawless because if you don't blend them enough, you can see through them in a way. Like you can see streakiness. Whereas like if you don't blend a more radiant or luminous finish foundation, they're more forgiving in terms of like the blend, right? So the fact that this is easily blending into my skin with minimal effort, it's just, that's a win right there. Coverage is, like I said, medium to full, buildable. It is a very, very matte finish. So I would not recommend this for someone who has dry skin or even combination dry skin. I would recommend this for anyone who has normal skin, normal to oily, 
or very oily skin or anyone who just wants a full coverage that looks nice and smooth as long as you don't have super dry skin. So again, very easy to blend, looks smooth, really smooth over my pores. Uh, it's not gonna enhance any texture you have on your skin unless I will say, unless you have very, very dry skin, you have dry texture, then it will pick up on that. So, but if you have oily skin and textured oily skin, I think this is gonna be a really nice smoothing and blurring foundation to check out. It's a really unique formula. It's definitely more niche to you know that specific person that wants those specific things. So just keep that in mind. I don't think this is a foundation for everyone for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? I would, but it's not really something that I need that often, especially as a makeup artist. I, I don't usually go for foundations like this because they're not as universally pleasing as like an Armani Luminous Silk or a Dior Backstage Face and Body. Those are like the two staples that I keep in my kit. Do I recommend it? Yes. For anyone who is looking for a full coverage that wants a very matte finish and for anyone who has normal skin, normal to oily or very oily, this is a really great one to check out. So once again, that is the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. Sticking with the $42 price range, we have one from Huda Beauty. It's the Liquid Foundation. This is actually called, and I didn't realize this until right now, it's the Fill Filter Luminous Matte Foundation. It's a full coverage foundation. Luminous matte, they don't, that's, that's not, you can't, they can't be both. They can't be both. So it's a little confusing. That marketing term is a little confusing. Um, I didn't even realize it was said luminous matte until like literally I looked at the very bottom of this, but we're gonna move on. We're gonna see what this actually looks like on. Is it luminous? Is it matte? Could it somehow be both? Somehow we'll find out. The shade that I'm gonna put on is Cheesecake. It's 250G, standing for golden. I already shook it, but let's shake it a little bit more and let's try it out. Now I know the shade's a little too, from what I remember, it's been a minute since I've tried this, but I wanna say it's too dark for me. We're gonna find out again with the color, what that looks like on. I'm gonna apply this with a 106 from BK Beauty. Has no scent to it, that's nice. Okay, all right, the shade actually isn't that bad. The shade's actually really nice. I didn't realize that. Maybe I was thinking of a different shade that I had in a, a little while ago. Like, I think I had like graham cracker or something different in the past. Blends out really easy. For a full coverage that just blended out very, very quick, very, very easy. Very similar, honestly, to the NARS Soft Matte. Like the way it blended into my skin was really quick. I'm gonna put some on my chin and see what the coverage is like on my chin. This is definitely a full coverage, but it doesn't look like a heavy full coverage. Here's the thing. So it's saying it's a luminous matte. Let's just call it a satin then. You take luminous, you take matte, you're gonna get something in between, which is going to be a satin. I'd say this is a really pretty satin to matte. So satin, but leaning matte full coverage foundation. I think depending on how you prep your skin, if you prepped your skin with a lot of like, you know, serum and juicy moisturizer, you could probably get it to be more of a true satin finish, which would be nice depending on like what you're looking for. If you're someone who has oily skin, you might just love the way this sits on your skin and the finish that it gives. If you're looking for a flawless full coverage, this is definitely worth checking out. And I feel like not enough people talk about this foundation from Huda Beauty. Like this is a really great formula. It's been around for a long time. I remember when she first launched this years and years ago and it was a really great full coverage foundation. But I feel like since then it's not really been talked about much. So even though it's a full coverage, I'm not losing like the liveliness of my skin. I still feel like I have like some pretty like satin natural like skin-like qualities coming through the foundation, which is really good and really hard to get with a full coverage foundation. Blended on super easy. It's very smooth in terms of like the finish of it. It looks really smooth on my skin. It's not emphasizing any texture or large pores. I'd say this is good for anyone who has more oily skin, more combination, combination leaning dry. And I think if you have dry skin, as long as you're not severely dry, you could definitely get away with wearing this foundation. Just prep your skin accordingly. If you have mature skin, I, I would still avoid this one because I think it might look a little heavy and a little lifeless, a little dull on mature skin. So I would just avoid this one if you have mature skin. But other than that, I think this is a really great foundation that is definitely worth checking out. Coverage is amazing, blends out super easy. They have a really great shade range at Huda Beauty. Price point is totally fine. The feeling of it feels really nice and lightweight for being a full coverage, which is again, very hard to achieve. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? Definitely. Do I recommend it? Definitely. Again, as long as you're not mature skin, you'll probably like this foundation. So that is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Foundation. Next up, we have another one for $42. It's from Kosas. I have been wanting to try this foundation for a very long time, so I'm really excited to try it for this video. It's the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. This has broad spectrum SPF 25, 
Yeah, we don't need it. And that's about it. So let's shake it up first and try it out. Nice glass bottle packaging, you know, feels very luxe, very nice. I love the pump, pump a little bit on the top of my hand. And if I didn't mention, so unfortunately I threw out the box and there's nowhere on it that says the shade, A43 maybe? I'll have to investigate and figure out what the shade is that I picked out because it's not saying it anywhere on the bottle. That's a bummer. Wait, for real? Maybe we'll just go with this. It says A43 on the bottom. Maybe that's the shade and I just, um mistaken. I'm going to apply this with my N17. Ooh, I like that texture. It doesn't smell like anything, so I don't think it has any fragrance in it. Oh yeah. Wow. That is really pretty. Okay. That feels really, really nice on my skin right away. It's blending in pretty easy. I wouldn't say it's melting into my skin right away. Yeah. Okay. It's not difficult to blend into my skin. Coverage is nice. It's more of a light, more of a light medium coverage but leaning more on like the light side. I wonder if you could build this up. Let's take a little bit more and build it up. Okay. Yeah, you could build it up. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's really pretty. Color I picked out, whatever shade that is. Hopefully that's the shade that I just mentioned earlier on the bottom of it. If it's not, I'm lost as to what color this is, but the shade that I picked out is matching me perfectly. So I'm super excited about that. That's awesome. That's always a win because I get to actually use this product and wear it and have it be the right shade for me. That's beautiful. Wow. I mean, very hydrating, very luminous, like very, very dewy, I should say. It's a very dewy formula foundation. It feels really nice. It feels really comfortable, really moisturizing on my skin. The coverage is nice for, uh, for more of a light medium. If you're looking for a light medium coverage that you could kind of build up a bit, then you might really like this one. If you have dry skin or you're looking for like that drink of water kind of feeling to your foundation, you're gonna love, love this foundation. Like this gives you that, I just drank a tall glass of water and like put some serums on my skin. It's giving you that kind of feeling, which is really nice, especially in the cold months or especially if you just need it for your skin. If you have dry skin, you'll love the finish of this foundation and the feeling. The feeling is really, really, really hydrating, which feels nice. Like feels very, very nice, especially after those more matte full coverage foundations, this feels, incredibly comfortable on my skin. Blends out pretty easy. Like I said, the coverage is really nice. It's very consistent. It's not patchy. For being a glowy foundation, it's definitely still like smooth on my skin. It's not emphasizing any texture or pores. I would recommend this foundation for anyone except for someone who has very severely oily skin. I'd say skip it if you have oily skin because it's just gonna look probably overly shiny and overly dewy on you. But if you have combination oily skin, combination dry, very dry skin, severely dry skin, you probably will love this foundation. Mature skin will definitely benefit from this type of formula because it just looks soft and radiant and just really healthy on your skin. So I recommend this for anyone except for anyone who has more oily skin, but it's a beautiful finish. I would definitely go back out and repurchase it and I definitely recommend this one. So once again, that is the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. Really pretty. Sticking to the $42 price range for that, you can get the KVD Good Apple Full coverage serum foundation. I've been curious about this foundation for quite some time and I have never gone around to trying it. So I'm really excited to try it for this video. I had a very hard time with the shades. I'm not gonna lie. The shade range was not good for this at all. I felt like it was just very limiting, especially with the undertones. Every single one, it seemed like that I touched or swatched in store at Sephora was just too golden, too warm for my, even my complexion. Like I am a more warm golden, olive undertone complexion and these just seemed really, really too yellow. The ones that I touched anyway. I, I picked the one that I think would be the best, but honestly, I don't have the highest hopes for this shade that I picked out. I picked up the shade Medium 048. Let's try it out. Okay, first off, gorgeous packaging. I mean, absolutely gorgeous packaging. It is glass. The way it's like embellished and like the clear plastic top, it's a pump. It looks like a perfume bottle, like on your vanity. It, like it's really just, it had me at packaging at least. <laughs> that alone, I, it scored points with me for packaging. So this claims to be a lightweight all day transfer resistant foundation. Okay, so that's good. Shake well, let's shake it up and let's try it out. Oof, it's just so luxe feeling. I'm gonna pump out a little bit on my palette. Okay, texture of it is actually, for a full coverage, it's pretty runny. I like that, that's very promising. I might end up actually liking this foundation. So it is a serum. It's marketed as a serum foundation, full coverage serum foundation. Let's see how this feels on. I'm gonna apply it with my N17. Hmm, does it smell? No, there's no fragrance. Okay, and the shade looks great. I'm so relieved I could actually continue to use this one too. 
I'm so happy. I really did not have high hopes for the shade that I picked out. I kind of gave up and was like, okay, oh well, this is all I can do. Okay, wow, 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 wow. This foundation is extremely impressive. Wow, I'm sorry. I know I keep saying that, but I was not expecting to love this. This is like, I'm blown away how good this foundation looks on. It feels, doesn't feel like tight. Doesn't feel like a heavy full coverage. It feels like a serum based foundation, like, but it has that more full coverage matte finish to it. But it's not like a dull matte. It's like a borderline satin matte finish. Like it's not dull. It's not overly heavy looking on my skin. I mean, if you could feel this, if you've tried this and you know the feeling, you know what I'm talking about and you know why I'm liking this so far, please comment and leave me, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm so curious. This feels fantastic. The way this blended into my skin was so quick and easy. I'm shocked. It like literally melted into my skin. I feel so flawless right now. It blended in so easy. The coverage is beautiful. Like for a full coverage, this looks so skin-like and so beautiful. I feel like it doesn't even look like I have a full coverage on. It just looks like I have really, really flawless skin. Wow, 10 out of 10, the video's done. I'm, I'm done. I'm. I'm not even gonna try the rest of these foundations. Like this one is so show-stopping. I'm shocked at how much I love this foundation. Um, and I picked out a great shade. I'm so relieved. I recommend this uh, 10 out of 10. Like literally I recommend this for anyone. Like if you have, even if you don't want that full coverage, like you don't even need to use that much. Just use like a little bit and manipulate it and just do like a small tiny pump or half a pump spread it all over and you'll get like a nice lighter amount of coverage. I think even if you have uh, dry skin, you could definitely use this one. It has that serum quality to it. It's a showstopper. It's honestly a showstopper. I'd recommend this for anyone, even mature skin, honestly. If you have mature skin and you want a full coverage, this is the one to check out. I have never, I don't think I've ever recommended a full coverage for mature skin until now, literally. And that's saying a lot. This foundation has blown me away. Like absolutely blown me away, worth every penny. Was it $42? Yeah, $42, amazing packaging, feels amazing on my skin, literally checks every single box. It's probably one of the most beautiful, if not beautiful, like the most beautiful full coverage foundation I've ever tried in my life. Like, look at that, that is just stunning. Would I go back on repurchase this? Oh yes, I will for sure. And I'm gonna be using this and wearing this. So get ready to see it more on my channel because it will be there for sure. The only complaint that I had was I I had a difficult time picking out the shade, but it turns out that I picked the most perfect shade for myself. The price is great. Everything's great. Everything's great. I think they need to get more shades to be honest, but other than that, this is a stand out. Stand out. 10 out of 10 would recommend this one. So once again, this is the KVD Full Coverage Serum Foundation. Next up for $42, you can get the KVD Good Apple Foundation. This is a skin perfecting foundation balm. I picked up the shade Medium 042. Let's try it out. I have only ever... Uh, all right, here's the thing. <laughs> I picked this up in store. Again, limited stock in the shades that were available. So I did the best I could, but I have, I really have no hope for this matching me unless it's some, unless it magically shears out and turns lighter. So just, just a forewarning, it's gonna look too dark on me. Now I have used this in the past. I've tried it, gosh, I wanna say like four years ago when it first came out, but I know I wasn't like thrilled with it. But let's try it out again. Things could change. Who knows, my thoughts could be completely different. I do like the packaging, I have to say. I like this, I love the ornate like detailed packaging. I love that it's see-through and just you could see it quick and easily. It's actually very like lightweight, you know, easy to travel with. So just a little note on the on the packaging. I, I actually really enjoy the packaging. Now with creamier, thicker products like this, I remember it being really thick, but maybe it's changed. I don't know, it says it's a balm, but I remember it being like really thick and kind of pasty. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna apply it with my N17 brush, the lighter fiber side. I'm gonna swipe into it. Okay, no fragrance. All right. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Why did I hate this so much? <laughs> this is actually really pretty. Like as long as you don't apply too much, I mean, depending on what kind of coverage you want, you could definitely customize it. Like granted, this is, it's too dark. It's not as dark as I thought it was gonna be, which is a relief for me. I feel like I, I might be able to make this work to be quite honest. But the way it blends out is really, it's really nice. It's really nice. Why did I not like this so much? Cause I'm gonna be honest with you now. I really did not like this when I first tried it. I really was like, this is just awful. I remember really disliking it. But now I'm like, why? Why did I not like it so much? This is, look at, that's done. It's blended, it's easy. It looks incredibly smooth um, and it doesn't feel heavy at all. Like you would look at this and you think this is gonna feel heavy. It's gonna feel cakey. It's gonna feel like 
maybe like theatrical makeup. Like that's really what I, I thought it felt like. I, I don't know what I was thinking. This is a really nice formula. This, I, I'm shocked to hear myself saying this out loud. I really am to be honest, because I had such a bad first impression, but there's no denying that this looks gorgeous. Like this looks flawless. It looks so smooth. It feels incredibly lightweight. It has a very like silky feeling to it. I feel like I do feel like anyone could wear this. I do. It's not so thick that it would settle into like fine lines and, and you know, increase the look of them. I think this is really good for anyone. I think this is like universally pleasing. Uh, I can't stop touching it because it feels so silky on my skin. What? That's absolutely stunning. I have to be really, I, I'm going to admit when I'm wrong. I am, was so wrong. I don't know if they reformulated it. I don't know if something changed in those couple years since I've tried it, but this looks beautiful. I'm blown away. The blendability is super easy. I mean, I swiped it on, I went da da da, and then I'm done. Like, and I really only, you saw I swiped like the tiniest bit on my brush. Like I barely made a dent. And okay, so a little bit goes a long way with that set. A little bit goes a very long way. It feels so lightweight and so beautiful. And I feel like I put an instant like filter on my skin. Like I swiped a filter on and I look very smooth, very airbrushed. I think this would be good for anyone. I really do. I think this would be a great, great foundation for anyone. As long as you're looking for more of a medium to full coverage, then I think it's a great, a great formula. I'm shocked. I really like this. I, I, I actually love this to be honest. Dare I say, I love this foundation. You're gonna see me wearing this. And I think I can make the shade work. So that's always a plus. Thankfully, I don't have to go out and buy another one. But on that note, would I go back out and repurchase this? Yes, I would. Was I totally wrong in my first impression? A hundred percent. I was completely wrong. I highly recommend this one. This is beautiful. But again, I recommend it for anyone who's not looking for like a lightweight natural coverage. But if you're looking for a lightweight feeling with a medium to full coverage effect, this is the go-to. I mean, I would definitely try this out for sure. Uh, beautiful. Wow. I could, I could keep talking about this, but I should really stop. Once again, that is the KVD Good Apple Foundation. Beautiful. Next up, we have one for $43. If you know, you know. You know how much I love this foundation. It is the newly reformulated Dior Backstage Face and Body. I rave about this foundation. I use it on a regular basis. It is one that I rely on heavily as both a pro makeup artist and just for me personally. It's one of the first foundations that I grab when I'm traveling for myself. Like, I will grab this above almost anything else because it's plastic. So it's not gonna break or explode when I'm, you know, up in the air traveling or flying or my luggage being like tossed around. It's it's very travel friendly in so many ways, but also it's just easy in general because it's a twist off cap. It's a squeeze tube. And if you're a makeup artist, these are just so easy to work with in your kit. Like I mentioned earlier with the Danessa Myricks and the Too Faced, a squeezy bottle that's a plastic container is just so efficient and so easy for makeup bars. I love it for that reason alone. Formula wise, let me show you what it looks like on in case you've missed it, in case you're new to my channel and you haven't seen me talk about this foundation or rave about it. I rave about it all the time. It's just one of my all time favorite foundations. Now they did reformulate it and it has more skincare ingredients in it now. Like since they switched out the formula, it's more skin focused. It has all those skincare ingredients in it. And with that, it has more of a satin to glowy finish, whereas the old formula was like a satin matte. So the finish is different, but the wear time is the same. It's a very long wearing formula. It's water resistant. It's one that I rely on heavily in my pro kit for so many reasons. First of all, they have an incredible shade range, incredible shade range, and they really nail their undertones. Their undertones are done so well. Like I can rely on them to be like true undertones. So if I grab an N, I know it's gonna actually be a neutral. It's not gonna be yellow. So their undertones are really just spot on. They did an incredible job with their shade range. Like I said, it's super extensive. There's something for everyone at Dior, which don't get me started on that again. But the way this just blends into your skin is butter. It's literally like butter. It's a buttery, satiny, silky texture on your skin. It is extremely long wearing. And for the new formulation to be just as good, if not better than the old formulation says a lot. I think they did such a great job. And I've heard a couple mixed things about it, but I think it also comes down to like your personal preference. And to me, I think they did a really fantastic job with the reformulation. I think it feels and looks just as good, but in a slightly different way. So, and that's fine. They they changed a little bit. They actually add a few extra shades to their already expansive shade range, which was even better and great for them to do that. 
but I just think this is one of the best foundations on the market for everyone. There's not one person that I don't recommend this foundation to, and there's not one person that I won't use this on in my pro kit. And that says everything for me. If I'm able to use a foundation on everyone that sits in my chair that I've never met before, and I can rely on it to work for anyone, that says everything right there. So blendability, spot on, super easy, very user-friendly. If you're a beginner, this is a really easy foundation to work with. If you're a beginner makeup artist, this is a really easy foundation to work with on your clients. And it's a really, really easy formula and shade range to color match your clients. And also, bonus, it is so easy to mix and customize the shades if you're a pro makeup artist. If you just get a few of these shades and you get a few different undertones, these are so easy to work with and to mix in your kit. So you don't need to actually buy every single shade. Just buy a few of each undertone and each like depth and intensity of tone and you're good to go. Can't speak highly enough of this product. A little bit goes a long way. It's very buildable, easy to work with. It just checks all the boxes. I recommend this literally for anyone. Dry skin, normal, combo, severely dry, dry, mature, young. It doesn't matter. I put this on everyone and I love it. So would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes. I do it all the time. I frequently buy this and stock up in my kit. Usually when Sephora has their big savings events, I'll go pick up like a few extras for my kit and that's when I usually buy it. But anyway, it's a gorgeous foundation, highly recommend it. If you have not tried the Dior Backstage Face and Body, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Next up, we have one for $44, and for $44, you can get the Bare Minerals Original Pure Serum Foundation. It's a radiant natural liquid foundation, it has broad spectrum SPF 20, and I picked out the shade Light Warm 2.5. It's vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, formaldehyde-free. I'm not even gonna list all these things because these, these are like non-negotiables. Uh, dermatologist tested, clean without compromising performance, clinically tested. Effortlessly enhance your natural beauty with a feather light, naturally radiant finish. This pure serum infused foundation helps to improve skin's tone and smooth skin's texture over time. Says who? But um, ideal for all skin types, even the most sensitive. Shake well before applying. All right, let's try this out. I have not ever tried this. Nice glass bottle. Feels nice. You can see the formula separating right here. So let's definitely shake it like it says. Oh, that's very liquidy. It's a very liquidy foundation. Okay, I think I got it mixed up enough. Has a pump. We're gonna do a couple pumps. Okay, that's very liquidy. I'm gonna hold my hand up right because it's it's very, very liquidy. Let's apply this with a clean N17. There's like a, hmm, maybe there's not fragrance. I thought I was smelling like a hint of fragrance. Ooh, this is very, very watery. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, this is very, very watery. Shake well before applying. I definitely did that. It's definitely radiant. Ooh, I think I applied just way too much, to be honest. I'm gonna try to buff it out. I need to pick some of this product up with my 106. I'm gonna use this almost like a beauty blender to pick up excess product because I just put way too much on. Okay, let's go back to it. It's just so streaky. Like it just doesn't... All right, let's get in there and let's feel this. Let's actually feel this. This feels... It feels oily. Yeah, this has like um, I understand it's supposed to be a, a, you know, like a serum, pure serum. Okay, so it's supposed to feel like a serum and it does. It feels like a serum, but it just feels frustrating. Like I, it's just moving around on my face and not doing anything. Like it's just constantly moving, you know, even like, and I'm not gonna grab a beauty sponge to apply this because that's just not my preferred method. And I, you know, you should be able to blend out a foundation with, with anything, with any tool, when you really think about it, right? A good foundation is gonna blend onto your skin with whatever tool you use. But I'm having a hard time even just patting it in with my fingers. Yeah, this is so streaky. Coverage is, streaky. Everything about this is very streaky. I can't get it to look smooth. Just can't get it to look smooth. I mean, no, this is not good. This is just the most frustrating foundation I think I've ever tried on. I mean, I, I this is never going to dry down on my skin. This is like one of those foundations that never dries down and it just sits on top of your skin in a really uncomfortable and very unflattering way. Like, look at this. Let's try something together, okay? Let's go like for the extreme. Yep, it's still wet. That's really frustrating. I'm sorry, that's just really frustrating. I think, you know, here's the thing. It's like, has all these claims. It's supposed to make your skin look better over time. And it's a serum-based product and all these things. And this is where it goes back to like, my belief with makeup is you shouldn't be looking to for makeup to solve your skin issues or concerns. So like, for example, if you have really dehydrated skin and you need to, you wanna like give it hydration, all those things, don't rely on your foundation to give you that hydration. It's, it's a great added benefit and effect. But it's too much in this product. There's just, it's like, it, there's a fine line between 
having nice ingredients in a foundation where it feels really great on your skin and it helps to like give you additional benefits on top of your skincare, not in place. This feels like to me, like they just went overboard with the skincare ingredients, the serums, whatever is in this product. And the effect is a foundation that just doesn't perform. It's not drying down. It's just literally sliding off my skin. Like, look at that. Look at that. Like literally full swipes of this can't, comes off my fingers. That's really frustrating. That's not an ideal product to work with for anyone. I don't care if you have like the driest skin. Treat your skin prior. You're always gonna get the best results. And I talk about this a lot, so I will spare you like the full in-depth reasons behind this, but treat your skin prior and then find a formulation that is good for your skin type, like if you have dry skin, but don't look for something to like fully replace what the benefits of a skincare routine and taking care of your skin, like that kind of maintenance will do, right? I don't recommend this. I don't recommend this for anyone. For the reasons I, I stated, I think this is a really frustrating formula that just misses the mark. Yeah, I mean, $44, that's not cheap. That is a really expensive foundation that it's like very, it's just dare I say like greasy, you know, it feels like very greasy on my skin. It's not comfortable. Now, would I go back out and repurchase this? Definitely not. I say skip this one from Bare Minerals. I'm sorry. So again, that's the Bare Minerals Original Pure Serum Foundation. Also for $44, you could get the Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation. So this has like some very similar claims as the Bare Minerals one. It's a serum-based foundation, it's supposed to enhance your skin's uh, overall appearance, complexion um, when you use it over time. I picked out the shade WN46. It's golden neutral. Let's see what this looks like on. So I, I do like that it says this. There's a label on top of this. It's really hard to read because it's tiny handwriting, but it says dry combination to oily two, three, four. Huh? What's that mean? Dry combination to oily two, three, four. What? What? I don't understand. <laughs> what, am, what am I missing here? I don't understand. Okay. Even better clinical serum foundation, broad spectrum SPF 25. All right. I don't know what that means. I don't know, understand the whole dry combination to oily two, three, four. Are they talking about they're not talking about shades. I don't get it. All right, let's move on from that. There's a lot of things back here. The, the full list of ingredients is in the back, so that's good. Let's start it on. Cute packaging. I, I'm a really big fan of this packaging. I like the shape of it. It's cute. Let's shake it first. This is liquidy. And let's hope for the best. Hmm. Also a cute pump. That's adorable. Texture, a, like a medium density. It's not super runny. It's not super thick. So that's that's always nice. Let's grab a clean N17 and let's try it out. No fragrance. That's always good. I don't mind it, but I know a lot of people do. So that's why I'm pointing it out. All right. This feels so much better than the last one. And it, you know, I, again, it has like very similar claims. This is blending into my skin very easy. I could tell right away. Look at that. That is much better. Wow. This is what the Bare Minerals was probably trying to be and failed to achieve. This feels great. Wow. The color is a little off that I chose. It happens. <laughs> but the feeling of this is really nice. I mean, look at that. Minimal effort. It blended out really nice. It looks really smooth. I mean, that has a gorgeous finish. It's a. It's more of like a, it's not super glowy, I will say that. It's more of like a true satin finish, which I love satin finishes. I think they are the most universally flattering finishes you could look for for a foundation for all skin types. I think satins, if you're ever in doubt, go for a satin and you will always be happy with a satin finish foundation. So to me, this looks like a beautiful, perfect skin-like satin finish. The coverage is really nice. Let's build it up a touch to see like what it does. That's a buildable coverage right there. That built up very quick, very easy. It's not patchy. It looks incredibly smooth. I mean, that looks beautiful. I was not expecting to be so, uh, blown away by this foundation. I, I don't know why, but it, it's really, wow. I mean, that looks gorgeous. I feel like I have just unbelievably smooth, flawless skin, minimal effort. I mean, there's no texture. There's, there's just minimal effort to apply and to blend it out properly without looking streaky. It's blended out in two seconds. It really did. It blended out so quick and so easy. The finish is gorgeous. Like I said, it's that beautiful satin skin-like finish. It's buildable coverage. So that is also great. I like this so much. I think this is a beautiful standout foundation. Like way to go Clinique. It feels so nice on my skin too. It feels very lightweight. I'm very curious how it's going to wear throughout the day. So I'll definitely keep you posted. I'll continue to wear the foundations throughout this video that I've tried on and I'll keep you posted on my thoughts because obviously these are, again, these are first impressions for the most part, unless I've tried these formulas in the past. But overall, highly recommend this one. I think this would be good for all skin types and all skin ages. I don't care what age your skin is, what your skin type is. I think anybody could wear this. And if you're looking for a medium 
to buildable coverage, this is definitely one to check out. It's gorgeous. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful. I would go back out and repurchase this and I highly recommend it. So once again, that is the Clinique, even better clinical <laughs> serum foundation. It's gorgeous. Okay, next up, it's $45. It's House Labs. You know I love this foundation. And again, if you're not new to my channel or if you've seen any of my previous videos, you probably already know how much I love this foundation and the reasons why. But if you are new here, let me tell you why this foundation is magical and why you should definitely, definitely try it. So it's $45. It's the Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. I have the shade 230 Light Medium Cool. Quick little side story. Just like the Anastasia Beverly Hills and just like MAC Cosmetics, their undertones are the opposite. So again, if you are someone who has an actual cool undertone, just know that in House Labs, you will not be a cool undertone in their formula. You'll be the opposite. So something to keep in mind now that we've put that disclaimer out there, let me show you what this looks like on. I'm going to start with one pump of this foundation. Now this foundation is a medium to buildable coverage. So one coat all over is a nice beautiful skin-like medium coverage, but you can definitely build this up to be a full coverage foundation. It builds incredibly well. So let me just get this over with. I love this foundation so, so much. Okay, so let's talk about the blend first. It blends into your skin so quick, so easy. I mean, look at that. That's already like in my skin. It's like blended into my skin. It's, it's minimal effort. It is a great, great solid choice if you have any skin type. So I recommend this foundation if you are dry, if you are normal, if you're oily, if you're somewhere in between combination, it doesn't matter. I believe this foundation honestly works for any skin type and any skin age. So mature can definitely wear this foundation 100%. It has a very beautiful smoothing quality to it. But above all, what I think makes this foundation so universally flattering is the finish. It has a beautiful skin-like finish that anybody can wear, anybody will appreciate, anybody could find useful. Not only that, there's a huge, huge shade range to choose from. So House Labs really followed in suit with Fenty Beauty and they really knocked it out of the park in terms of their shade range. Their shade range is quite epic. I mean, it's it's almost overwhelming. It is such a great, great shade range. So there's definitely a shade for everyone. The only problem I have with this foundation is it is difficult to shade match because the way they labeled their whole color system, it's a little tricky. So that's the only complaint that I have about this foundation. If I had to pick it apart, that's the only thing, but it has nothing to do with the formula. It has nothing to do with the performance. All of the important things about this foundation, like how it wears, what it looks like on your skin, how well it works on your skin, how long it lasts, how it's amazing for any skin type or skin age. That is really truly what's most important. The other thing I can get past, but it is a little bit of a bummer and it's definitely like something that I hear on a regular basis. People reach out to me and they're like, do you have any tips on how to match or shade match the House Labs foundation? And I do have plenty of tips and I have a lot of them in actually a specific YouTube video on how to color match your skin for foundation. So if you have questions, check that out. That video is very, very helpful. But again, back to the foundation. Look at that coverage. Look at that finish. It's so satin, but it's so skin-like. It's, it's like a perfect skin-like satin finish. I just, I mean, I can't recommend it enough. Honestly, it just checks every single box. For a newer formula, I think that, I think it's rare for like newer formulas to come on the market that just are amazing. To be honest, like this is the first new foundation that has just really, truly blown me away in every single aspect. So $45, in my opinion, worth every penny. Love the packaging, love the bottle, love the shape. It's just very luxe. It's a little bit on the heavy side. I'm just gonna point that out there. Love that it's a pump. To me, you need just one pump for one whole side of your face. So two pumps all over will give you a really great medium to full coverage. I recommend this for anyone, like I said. Would I go back out and repurchase this? Yes, a thousand times I would repurchase it and I will recommend it to anyone who will listen to me. So once again, that is the beautiful, skin-like, flawless, House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. You have to try this foundation. Next up, we have another one for $45. This is from Makeup Forever. It's the HD Skin. Now this is a reformulation of an original old school formula that I used to actually love and use on a regular basis when I was a bridal makeup artist way back in the day. The original Makeup Forever HD foundation was a staple in my kit. In fact, it was a staple in every single makeup artist that I was that I knew and was friends with back in the day. We all wore this foundation, we all used it, we all relied on it. The shade range was incredible. There's a shade for anyone. 
It was easy to mix. It was easy to blend. It was just a perfect foundation if you want a long wear full coverage that photographed amazing. Like that was the foundation. Nothing beat it. So they did reformulate it. The old one is gone. Tears. Sad because it was really like a beautiful foundation for all the reasons that I just listed. So this is the new reformulation. Without further ado, I am going to shake it and then we're going to try it. And you know, I have to say, I don't love it as much as I love the original one. I just don't. I want to love it because I love that other one so much, but it just is not, there's something about it that just doesn't suit what I like and like what I want. But I know a ton of people that love this foundation. So it's kind of mixed. I'm going to pump out, let's start with like two very small pumps. The shade that I'm going to put on is 2Y20 and I'm going to blend this on with my BK Beauty N17. This is a high definition foundation that is meant to photograph extremely well. It's meant to give you a very airbrush, very flawless look to your skin. So if you have any imperfections, if you have any texture, things like that, if you're being photographed or if you're on camera, if you're going to be in harsh lighting, things like that at night, taking flash photography, any of those uh, scenarios, an HD foundation is what you want to look for. Now, this is still high performing. It's still a full coverage. It's still very easy to blend on. It's still all those things that the original one was. Um, and it still gives you that flawless finish. I'm actually gonna pump out one more pump. I think I just didn't do enough. It's still all those things. There's just something about the way it wears throughout the day that just doesn't look amazing. There's just, so I can't quite pinpoint it, but there's just something kind of missing from the wear and like how it looks as it wears throughout the day. Because initially when you put it on, it looks beautiful. And I don't know if it's just my skin that just doesn't love it and it's a personal preference because again, a lot of people love the new reformulation. I just wish they didn't reformulate it. Long story short, I wish they had not touched it and I wish they left the formula alone. It's still very, very similar. It's still very close. It's just missing something in my opinion. And if you feel the same way, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are either way because I'm still so torn of if I like it or not that I could be, I feel like I could be swayed either way at this point. Does that make sense? But let's talk about the coverage. The coverage is flawless, full. Well, it's medium to full, I should say. You could definitely start out making it a medium depending on how many layers or how many pumps you apply to your skin but you could build it up to be quite the full coverage. So blendability is good. Coverage is phenomenal. The way it looks on your skin, it looks beautiful. The texture of it is really nice. The finish is really beautiful, especially for a more medium to full coverage. It's a really beautiful finish. My only thing if I had to pick on it is I don't love the way it looks after X amount of hours of wearing it throughout the day. And that's just, it could just be my skin and that could just be personal to me. And you might not have that experience, but all in all, I will say to conclude, I think this is a really great foundation still, even though I don't love the way it, it looks throughout the day on myself. I still think it's a really solid pick if you're looking for something that's high performing, that's smoothing, that is high definition, and that is full coverage or at least medium to buildable full coverage, then I think this is a really great option. They do have a great shade range to choose from and that's always ideal when you're looking for a foundation. So do I recommend this foundation? I do. I recommend it for anyone who's looking for a medium to full coverage or at least a medium to buildable coverage foundation that is high performing and again, meant to be great for on-camera purposes. And this is a really great option to choose from or, or to look into. I don't necessarily recommend this for mature skin because I think it could have a heavier appearance on mature skin. I think if you're dry skin, make sure you prep your skin accordingly. I'm torn, but I, if I had to choose, I would say yes, I would definitely go back out and repurchase it just to keep giving it a shot because it is a beautiful foundation. But those are my thoughts on the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. Moving up to $46, we have the Born This Way this is the undetectable medium to full coverage foundation. It says it's oil-free. It has coconut water in it. It has alpine rose. It has hyaluronic acid. It's hydrating, long-wearing, photo-friendly, non-comedogenic. It's supposed to blur, perfect, and give a natural coverage. Interesting. Lots of claims going on back here. Very interesting. Let's try it out. I've never actually tried this foundation on myself. I've only ever played with a client's one that they had in their possession just because I was curious, but never actually worn this on myself. I did pick up the shade Warm Nude. Now this foundation is beyond popular. People love this foundation. They rave about it. I know tons of makeup artists that use this heavily in their makeup kit. My biggest thing about this foundation is not to sound like a broken record. The shade range sucks. It sucks. The shade range is not, it's not inclusive. It's not 
broad enough. It is super limited and their undertones are especially limiting. This foundation I noticed like when I was going to pick out the right shade for this video, I noticed that all the shades seem to really run heavily on the golden warm undertone side. Like even if it was like claiming to be a neutral, it swatched very yellow and very golden. So that's my biggest thing too, is like the undertones are just very, they're very difficult and they're very challenging. It's very hard. You'll be hard pressed to find a neutral or a cool tone undertone with Too Faced. So now that I got that out of the way, we're gonna shake it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it blends on. We're gonna see what it looks like on. I do like the the bottle. I like the glass bottle. I like the packaging. The packaging's really pretty. You know I'm a sucker for packaging, so I have to mention that. Let's do about pump and a half to start. And let's apply this with a clean 106 brush from BK Beauty. Okay, shade is promising. The shade doesn't look like it's gonna be overly warm on me, so that actually is good. Maybe it was just the lighting in Sephora that was just difficult to tell. So far, it's blending on my skin pretty easy. Pretty easy. This brush helps though. I mean, this brush will like knock anything on your skin super quick, super easy. Now, I think there's a little bit of like a, there's a bit of patchiness going on. Like it blends easy to some degree, but there's still like, you're left with like some patchiness throughout. Interesting, okay. So the blend isn't that easy, I will say that. Like once you work it and you blend it, you blend it, the patches go away, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's the quickest, most easiest application. So if you're a beginner, or you just don't wanna take a lot of time to have to blend the foundation onto your skin. You want it to be the quick, more streamlined, more easy. Something that melts into your skin easier. This is not gonna be the one for you. I can just tell you that right away. But overall, once it's blended on my skin, it looks really nice. It's uh, definitely more of a medium to full coverage, like it says. The finish of it is nice too. Like I will say it looks like more of a natural skin-like finish. And for being a medium to full coverage, that's also very hard to achieve. I feel like it does give a nice smoothing effect to my skin. The feeling is really nice too. It doesn't feel like a heavy full coverage foundation. That's definitely a plus. The only concern I have is the shade range, the undertones. It's not the easiest to blend on. Aside from those things, it's it looks really beautiful. It looks definitely very beautiful. Is it scented? No. Okay, there's no fragrance. That's nice. You might definitely see me wearing this when I want a full coverage smooth looking finish to my skin. It's pretty. And the color actually works really well on my skin tone. So that is a win for me. I like this a lot. I think this is a really pretty foundation. I could see where the hype lies with this. I recommend this for anyone who's looking for a natural finish, full coverage. Anyone who has more oily skin, combo, dry. I think that anyone can wear this. I think that if you have mature skin, you could definitely wear this as well because it doesn't look like it's gonna be a heavy full coverage. It looks like a very skin-like natural finish, but with coverage. So, hey, if you have mature skin and you want a full coverage, it looks nice and skin-like, definitely worth checking this one out for sure. So would I recommend it? Yes, I would. If you can get past the undertones and the shade range, I recommend it. Would I go back out and repurchase it? I think I actually would. I really do. Even though I'm annoyed with the shade range and all those things. And yeah, I think you'll definitely see me wearing this more often on my channel and on Instagram and I'll be wearing it. I'll be getting my money's worth for sure. So once again, that is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. Next up, we have one for $47. It's a old favorite of mine. I have to tell you, I use this for so many years in my professional makeup kit. And I don't know why I took it out. <laughs> it's like one of those foundations that when I when I try it again and I play with it and I put, apply it, I'm always like, why did I stop using it? It is like such, it's one of the, probably the prettiest foundations on the market, period. It's just a great one. It is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. If you have not tried this one, you're definitely missing out. So let's try it again. I haven't used this in maybe three years, I'd say at the max was probably the last time I had this in my possession, but it's back. <laughs> I picked up the shade 1.2 Patagonia. So let's try this out. Now, the one thing about NARS is their foundation shades run heavily on the warm golden side. So it's you're a little hard pressed with NARS to find like a true neutral or especially a true cool tone. That's almost impossible to be quite honest. And, but I love NARS. I love their formulations. I think they have incredible formula foundations. I mean, they're amazing formulas. This was a favorite for so, so long. My biggest complaint that I'm remembering about this foundation is you had to buy the pump separate. And that's just like, you know, if you're already spending $47 on a foundation, that's not cheap. That is not cheap. To me, it's like that additional add-on is really unnecessary. It's a really outdated thing. And I wish they would have updated their, because all the other foundations from NARS have a pump to them, right? 
So I wish they would have updated the sheer glow to have a pump built in. Like save people money. Like who wants to spend an extra eight or 10 or 12, whatever, however much the pumps are that you have to buy separate. It's not fair in my opinion at all. So without the pump, it is a very messy pour, okay? And you know what I'm, uh, what I'm, uh, all right, I'm gonna do this, okay? Now it's not the most messy pour initially, but as you use it, it gets more and more messy if you don't go out and buy those pumps. What I used to do was just basically pour these into squeezy bottles when I had them in my pro kit, and that obviously works as well, but you know, it's just like I said, if people are buying your foundation that's already costing a pretty penny, just give them a pump, you know? Like no, nobody wants to pour their foundation onto like their hand or their face onto their clothes, whatever. I digress. I'm gonna apply this with the N17 and let's talk about how beautiful this foundation is. Like this is, oh God, this was one of my all time favorite foundations. I, again, I don't know why I stopped using it because the the way this looks on your skin is absolutely flawless. It gives great coverage. It's more of a medium to of course, very buildable coverage. And it just looks like healthy, natural skin. It has a very beautiful skin-like quality to it. It blends really quick, really easy. Like it's already looking so gorgeous on. I'm happy that I picked out this shade. I think I used to try to make like a different shade work back in the day on myself. I don't know why, but yeah, Patagonia looks really good on me. Happy to report that. It does look more neutral, but again, like I said, most of their foundations, they lean heavily on the warm golden side. So just something to keep in mind. Now this foundation is one of those foundations that really will transform your skin to looking super healthy and super glowy, like very just flawless and healthy looking is like the best way I could describe this foundation. It just, I mean, look at that. It's just a beautiful foundation. The other thing that I loved about it and the reason why I kept it in my pro kit for so, so many years is it works on all skin types. So whether you have oily skin, combo, dry, young, mature, if you need a full coverage, I could still achieve a full coverage with this foundation by just building it up. You could share it out to be much less than what this is right now. So it's very, very versatile in that regard, but it's also really long wearing. So like it's very high performance. So again, if you, if you work long hours, if you work all day and you want a foundation that's gonna look really beautiful for an extended period of time, but also without feeling heavy, then this foundation you should absolutely check out. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. So would I recommend this one? Yes, like I said, I literally recommend this one for anyone. For anyone, my biggest complaint is the pump issue. But if you can get past that, this is a, an incredible foundation that will never disappoint you. In my opinion, I'd be shocked to hear that you don't like this foundation. Anyone who's ever tried it, I feel like always loves this foundation. It just, it will not let you down. And would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, I have for years and years and years. I've probably invested thousands of dollars into the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation at this point. So look at that. I mean, this speaks for itself. It is absolutely flawless. I'm actually so thrilled right now to have this back in my personal collection because I haven't had one for me personally in probably like close to eight years. It's been so long. I've always had it in my pro kit. So happy to have you back, NARS Sheer Glow. I missed you. So that once again is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation, an absolute must try. Next up is also $47. It's from Shiseido. It is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. This has broad spectrum 30 in it. Full disclosure, I love this foundation. I've used it for many, many years. I've loved it for many years. It's a beautiful foundation. Shiseido does skin and complexion products really well. So glass bottle, very luxe. One thing I love about this, first of all, I love that it has a pump, obviously, for reasons that you, you already know. So you shake this really well before using it. So let me shake it really quick. And then it does say on the back, twist cap to unlock and lock pump. That's what I actually love about this is the fact that it has a lock to it. So when you twist it, if you twist it facing forward, it locks the pump. So let's say you're like throwing this in your makeup bag, no matter how many things are like around it, pushing into it, if it's locked, you won't get that, sp that spill. Like the foundation won't leak out or pump out when you don't want it to. If you twist it back the other way, that's when you could pump it out. Let's do, let's do like, two light pumps. Um, the only thing I don't like is you're left with this. And unless you wanna get that on other products, you have to kind of wipe it off before you like store it in a makeup bag with other products. Those are not the biggest issues, right? So let's move on. I'm gonna apply this with my N17. There's like a subtle hint of like, like a fragrance, but not like an intentional fragrance. I think it's probably like some of the ingredients are probably like lending that, that hint of a scent to it. Now this foundation is just 
when when I tell you this foundation gives you like the most juicy, glowy, healthy look to your skin, look at that. And I know I need to blend it in more, but like just with minimal blending, look at that. That's just gorgeous. I mean, what more could you ask for in a really well formulated, high, more high end foundation? This is definitely more of a high end foundation. This just feels like incredible on your skin. It feels absolutely incredible. The only person that I would say this is probably not ideal and suited best for is someone with severely oily skin. But I think if you have combination oily skin like myself, or of course any other skin type, mature, dry, uh, combination dry, combination normal, anyone but someone who has severely oily skin, this is gonna be a gorgeous foundation on you. But especially if you have mature skin and you want just like a perfect, healthy, youthful, juicy look to your skin, you gotta try this one. Like this is a holy grail for that kind of effect. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. I wish you could see me in person right now, like face to face and see how beautiful this looks on my skin. It gives you a surprisingly full coverage to be quite honest. I think it's it's claiming to be more of a medium, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's claiming to be like more of a medium coverage, but you need a very small amount and the coverage goes a long way. Like a little bit goes a very, very long way. The way it feels on your skin is like no other. It feels incredibly lightweight, comfortable. It is just a showstopper. It really is a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. Worth every $47 you're gonna spend on this foundation, it is worth the penny. Like it's worth every single penny, absolutely. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, because I have. I have in the past and I absolutely love this foundation. So once again, that's the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. It's beautiful. Next up, we have one for $48. Don't mind the dirty packaging. This was this came dirty from Sephora. Um, or maybe I touched it with foundation fingers. Who knows? I was watching so many things that one night that I picked out a ton of these. I, yeah, I, my hand was like covered in foundation at that point, but see Laura Mercier, real flawless, weightless, perfecting foundation. Let's ho fingers crossed. This is a good shade for me. It's the shade three N two camel. Now I actually used to love, love Laura Mercier foundations back in the day. I used so many in my pro kit and my, my clients loved it at the time. I loved it. I thought it was a really beautiful medium to full coverage foundation. I want to say this is a reformulation. However, I don't know for sure. So if you know any more about this foundation, let me know. I would love to hear if you've tried it, what your thoughts are. And if you remember the older foundation that I'm referring to, it was a great foundation. So anyway, let's try this one out. Love the packaging, beautiful, very luxe glass bottle. I love the little gold trim on the inside and the cap. Oh, it's rose gold actually. Let's try this out. I'm gonna shake it. Okay, let's do two pumps. It was about two and a half. This actually feels very um, liquidy, a lot more liquidy than I thought it was gonna be. Hmm. Okay, it's not scented. Wow, wow. This is definitely like quite literally weightless. I know it says it and it really is quite weightless on my skin. It feels like nothing. It feels very like, and it actually definitely feels like very like silky, like has like a silky, almost like a satin kind of quality to it. Blending really easy into my skin. Very, very minimal effort over here, which I love feels like nothing on my skin. The shade that I chose is not the perfect match, but I, when I was in store, it was like the best option that was in stock for me. And um, I didn't wanna wait for it to come in online. So I just picked it, but it's, it's good enough. We'll make it work. It's definitely good enough. Yeah, wow, okay. That was easy. That was quick and easy. And the way this looks on my skin is just very skin-like and very flawless. I feel like I don't even have, honestly, makeup on. If it wasn't for the fact that the shade is a little off for me, I feel like it's not even like a noticeable, obvious foundation on my skin. I feel like it just looks like my skin, but better, which is a great, great quality and a great, a great talking point for a foundation. So again, blendability is great. Coverage is really nice. I feel like you could probably build up this coverage. So let's just build up a little bit more and see what we can do. So yeah, it's blending on and layering really nice. So if you wanted to make this a full, full coverage, you could definitely do so. So there's great versatility with this formula. With that said, I think this is a really easy to use, easy to work with formula. I love the coverage. I love the finish. The finish is just very flattering, very beautiful. It looks nice and smooth. Definitely not emphasizing any texture or fine lines or anything I got going on. So that's always a win. This is a great foundation. This is a really great foundation. I could see now why so many of you have reached out to me asking me specifically to try this new foundation and to give my thoughts. I could totally see why you've been asking because this is a really awesome foundation. I'm so happy I have this. 
and I'll make the color work. The color is not that bad. I'll just kind of lighten it with a different concealer, like a lighter concealer and just kind of mix the two together. Now let's talk about who this is for. I think this is good for anyone. I think even if you have oily skin, you could definitely wear this foundation. Combo, dry, combination dry, severely dry, mature. I don't see why not. I think this would be a really, really nice, lightweight, but buildable coverage foundation for mature skin. Young, whatever your whatever your age bracket is, whatever your age and your skin type is, I think this is a really winning formula. I think that anybody can wear this foundation, truly. This is absolutely beautiful. You're definitely gonna see me wearing this more often, for sure. Would I go back out and repurchase this? Yes, and I probably will pick up a different shade once it's back in stock. So wish me luck with that. But this is beautiful. Definitely recommend this. I'd say this is a great, great choice if you want a soft, natural finish with coverage and that feels nice and lightweight on your skin. Way to go, Laura Mercier, that is beautiful. We're climbing up there slowly with the price point. We're at $49, and for $49, you can get the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. This says on the on the package, stay all day and night. It's kind of cute. You know how I feel about wearing your foundation all day and all night, but we'll let that go. I have used this in the past in my pro kit. I've only had two shades back in the day. I don't quite remember why I took it out of my kit, to be quite honest. I think I just wasn't using it enough to make it worth schlepping it around and adding that extra weight to my kit. So I took it out. That was years ago. Then it expired. I tossed it. So I don't quite remember my thoughts on this foundation completely. So I'm excited to try it again and to have it in my possession again. I picked up the shade 6 Neutral. It seemed like the best shade option available. The shade range is terrible. I have to point that out. The shade range is very much so terrible and they need to expand that as soon as possible. But I have a feeling they're not going to do that. So in the meantime, yeah, that's my biggest complaint so far is the shade range is just not good. And also the undertones are a little wacky. They're a little all over the place. So I tried to do the best I could with the shade six. Let's see what it looks like on. But first, can we acknowledge how beautiful this packaging is? I feel like it looks like a vintage perfume bottle. Like this is very, this is just giving me very vintage makeup vibes right here. You know, Charlotte Tilbury just has beautiful packaging. Let's face it. That's part of the reason why you pay a big price. Her packaging is absolutely luxe. So I'm going to shake it and then we're going to do two pumps on the top of my hand. Let's start with that and let's see what this looks like on because I've never tried this on myself, only in my pro kit. So I've never actually felt this on my skin. I'm going to apply it with my N17 brush. It has a slight fragrance to it. It's not overwhelming. It's very slight. It smells really good to me. I like the way it smells. So let's talk about this. So far, it's blending really easy. So that's good. It's even as far as like the pigment and the color payoff. There's no patchiness. There's no holes in the formula. It's going on really quick, really easy. It's definitely very expandable. Like it's very pliable. It's, it's moving around really well. It's blending onto my skin. Very, very easy. So that's always a great, great thing with a foundation. I mean, wow. Color is good too. I picked out a really good shade. Thank God, because I, I want to wear this and get my money's worth, like I said. And I, I do remember liking this in my kit. Like I said, I just don't remember why I, I ended up taking it out just because I just wasn't using it enough. But I'm happy to have this back because, wow, that looks really beautiful. I feel like it is very flawless. I feel like it blended on really easy. The coverage is really nice. It's definitely a medium to full and you could build it up. In fact, let's just kind of layer a little bit more just to see what it does and how it layers. Yeah, that builds up, wow, really quick, really easy. I feel like if you want a flawless full coverage, you should definitely check this one out. Be aware going into it, the shade range is not good. That's that's the biggest thing and the undertones are a little tricky. If you can magically find a shade that matches you, great, try it because I think this is a really beautiful foundation. Like that's full coverage, but it's flawless. It's smooth. There's zero texture. I feel like I have like a very airbrushed, almost like a filtered quality to my skin right now, which I love a good, anything that gives me like a filtered look, I am, it's in my kit. I'll take 20 of them. I'll rebuy them. I'll recommend them. So I love that it's giving that kind of filtered look to my skin. I feel like this would be good for any skin type. If you are more dry, definitely prep your skin accordingly. So you don't look like you have a heavier finish on top of your dry skin. If you're mature, I'd say you could still try this one out. Definitely. I think again, prep your skin accordingly. You know your skin better than I do. So if you want your skin to have more luminosity underneath, I would definitely prep with a good, more thick, maybe more of a rich moisturizer. So you have more glow coming from within. But yeah, with that said, 
Oily skin would definitely benefit from this. It has more of a dry down time. It's definitely more of a satin to matte finish, which I feel like is the best finishes for oily skin types. Combo would love it. And again, mature, young. I think this is a really great full coverage, very smooth, very flawless foundation. I'm impressed. I really am impressed once again. <laughs> Maybe this will make its way back into my pro kit. Who knows? But that's beautiful. That is really, really beautiful. And you know, for Charlotte Tilbury, the price point, it's its what you would expect from Charlotte Tilbury, let's, let's be honest. And let's also be honest and say that this packaging to me is worth an extra couple bucks or 10 or however much you're extra you're paying for this packaging because this is luxe and quite beautiful. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? Yes, I would. And do I recommend it? 100%. This is once again, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. It's beautiful. For $49, you can get the classic Classic Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This is the this is one of the original all day wear high performing foundations. Like it's been around forever. It's super tried and true. It has like a cult like following. Literally, people love this foundation and go hard for it. And I don't blame. It. It's a really fantastic long wear foundation. It looks amazing on your skin. It is the stay in place makeup, like I just mentioned. Now the thing about this formula. The reason why I was never that super into it because I could never find a great shade match for myself. So it's still the same. <laughs> I still had a really hard time finding the appropriate shade that would be closest to my skin tone. I ended up choosing 2N2 Buff and I, I think this was what I, I tried to wear back in the day and it was like the closest match for my skin. But we shall see together if, if this was the one. So it's a long wearing foundation. Let me just read the back of the box really quick. So proven 24 hour stain power, looks fresh and flawless, stay color tr stays color true. That's an important note because oxidization is really a big, it's a big problem. It could be a big problem with like long wear foundations as well because they tend to oxidize on your skin as you wear them. So I like that claim. Feels lightweight and so comfortable. You won't believe it's long wear. Def I agree with that. Transfer resistant, 100%. Lasts through heat, humidity, medium to full coverage, definitely. Matte finish, won't clog pores, oil controlling, oil free, fragrance free, dermatologist and ophthalmologist tested. It's a great foundation, okay? It is a great, great foundation. I am going to shake this first because it is a liquid. So I'm gonna shake it up. Now, I'm gonna have the same complaint that I had with the NARS Sheer Glow is that it doesn't have a pump. It comes with the pore cap. I I'm not gonna get into the reasons why I don't like that again. I'll spare you the details again, but I'm gonna pour the 2N2 buff onto my hand. Oh, see, it's like, oh my gosh. All right. Now I know it says it's fragrance free, right? Did it say that? But it definitely has like, I hate to say it, it has like a slight wet paint vibe to it, but let's get into it. Let's try it out. I haven't worn this in years. I literally, this has not been on my skin for probably close to, I don't know. It's been a long time, a long, long time. So I'm going to apply it with my N17. It looks like the shade's a little too light for me. Oops. When I tell you I, I've always had a hard time getting the right shade for me, I, I, I've i always had a hard time. And they have a huge shade range too. Like they, they do not have a limited shade range to, to, ch to choose from. I just could not find, and I still cannot find the most ideal match for me. Now it's just a touch too light for me, but it's not, I could probably make this work. Blends in quick, easy. And for being a 24 hour wear all day, stay in place, you know, heat and humidity, resistant foundation. It feels like nothing on your skin. Genuinely, it doesn't feel heavy. This does not feel heavy at all. This is one of those foundations that's a really great staple for a bridal makeup artist. If you're someone who works with brides or, you know, anyone who has very long hours of, of, of needing to have their foundation look good all day long, this is like the one to go to. It really is. I mean, look at how beautiful that's sitting on my skin. Coverage is unreal. It's definitely buildable. I'm not really gonna build it up because I don't feel like it's necessary. This initial coat of it looks just flawless and beautiful. Blends in super easy. The texture of it is amazing. It's just a really easy foundation to work with. It really is, aside from the no, no pump. That aside, it's a really easy format to work with. It feels just like nothing on your skin. It feels really lightweight. It is just a showstopper. It really is. It's like a cult classic and a cult favorite for so many reasons, like so many valid reasons. This foundation has like stood the test of time for, again, like very valid reasons. It's a fantastic all day wear formula. So if you're someone who lives especially in a very high humidity area, like if you are in heat and humidity constantly and you want that, 
medium to full coverage and you want that all day wear and you need to stay looking fresh all day while you're at, let's say at work or just going about your day, then you definitely need to try the Estee Lauder Double Wear. You just have to. So would I recommend this one? Yes, and I recommend this for anyone, any skin type, any skin age. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're looking for those things specifically, all day wear, heat and humidity resistant, buildable coverage, a flawless finish, check it out for sure. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? 100%. And maybe I'll go up, maybe I'll try to find a better shade again, but or maybe I'll just warm this up with bronzer. You'll see me wearing it either way because it's a stunning foundation. Definitely worth the price tag in my opinion and 100% and worth checking out. So once again, this is the classic, timeless, Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. Also for $49, this is from Hourglass Cosmetics. It is the Vanish Stick Foundation. It's actually called the Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. Now, I already need to let you know, I have a few of these in my pro kit. I've used them for years. They're fantastic. They really are truly, truly fantastic and worth the money. And it's hard for me to find a stick foundation that I like, that I'm impressed by. This is it. This is like the stick foundation if you want a full coverage full coverage this is full coverage but if you want a full coverage stick this is the one to pick up it is beautiful it really is quite stunning so the shade that i picked up is nude so i have to be honest i've never used this on myself i've only used this in my pro kit and i've only used it when i want to achieve a flawless full coverage I also have a variety of shades because I highlight and I, I've been known to highlight and contour with these. Not so much recently, but they're in my kit for those reasons as well. So I'll either use them and mix them as foundations or I'll use them as a contour depending on the skin tone or I'll use them as a highlight, again, depending on the skin tone. But I, I love them. Just full, full disclaimer, I love this formula. So let's try it on. I'm gonna swipe it directly onto my skin. Okay, I picked out a pretty good shade. Thankfully. So what's really nice about this foundation, and actually, you know, I'm gonna use more of a buffing brush for this foundation. This is the 106 from BK Beauty. This is like the preferred kind of brush that I will use for like sticks and creams and any products that are a little bit more dense because it will really buff the product into the skin and make it look smooth and flawless. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And you're gonna see how easy this stick, more heavy, more cream foundation blends into the skin. Like already, look at that. It's so easy to work with. It's so user-friendly. The only thing is, you know, if you're not looking for a full coverage, you're not gonna really wanna check this one out. But I will say if you have skill in like shearing out a product, like let's say you put a really glowy liquid illuminizer underneath and you just do a couple swipes and you really blend it out and evenly distribute just a few stripes of this foundation, you can make it look like a more of a natural medium coverage foundation. So. It is versatile if you take the time to make it versatile. However, if you just stripe it on like I did and you blend it out, it is gonna give you a full on, full coverage, flawless finish to your skin. I mean, look at that. It's just beautiful. I mean, it really does like vanish literally into your skin. It blends so easy. The texture of it, the feeling of it, it doesn't feel like a heavy stick foundation and it doesn't look like a heavy stick foundation. So that's like the biggest thing to me is it doesn't look like it's supposed to. When you think of stick foundations, to me personally, I think of like old school makeup artistry, like theater makeup, and that's not usually the most natural, beautiful finishes to wear on your skin. This is the opposite. This gives you such gorgeous, flawless skin and it's quick and it's easy. So I love it and there's not one skin type that I don't recommend this. I think even if you have dry or mature skin, as long as you take the time to blend into your skin and you prep your skin properly, you will love this product. And if you have oily skin, young skin, uh, combination skin, it doesn't matter. I recommend this for anyone. Anyone who is looking for more of a full coverage foundation, that is. So, beautiful finish, beautiful blendability, easy to work with, quick. Convenient packaging, in my opinion, because you could just swipe it on and blend it out and then you're done. I mean, that is a beautiful show-stopping cream foundation. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, because I have many, many times. They're pricey, but they are definitely worth it, in my opinion. So once again, that is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. It is a beauty. Next up is also $49. It's from Charlotte Tilbury. I've used this many, many times. You can see half of it's definitely gone. It's the Beautiful Skin Foundation. Now, if you're not new to my channel, you might already know my thoughts on this. I don't love this foundation, but let's get into it. Let me swipe it on. Let me show you what it looks like on my skin, and then we'll talk about the reasons why I don't love it. So the shade that I have is five. I also have number seven somewhere over here. 
but five is typically what I would wear in this formula. I'm gonna apply this with my N17 and use the lighter fiber side to just dip into this. Now this is supposed to be like more of a natural finish. It's claiming to be your best healthy looking skin day ever, which is really cute. It's a really cute claim. However, every time I've ever worn this foundation, I feel like it gives me texture that I don't even have. I feel like it emphasizes my pores in a really unflattering way. Like you never want your pores emphasized, let's be real. And I feel like that's exactly what this does. It makes me look like I have texture that I don't even have. And I don't like the way this wears throughout the day. So I'm gonna be real with you. Initially when it goes on, it blends out easy. It blends out beautifully. It looks beautiful initially. It, I will give it that. It looks really beautiful, flawless. It looks very skin-like and glowy and healthy and all those sayings. And it gives you a great amount of coverage too for this product. I'm not even sure what the coverage is supposed to be, to be honest. I think a medium at best. So again, initially it looks beautiful on, but after a few hours, it makes my skin look worse than it is. Like it makes me look like I have texture and larger pores than I actually do. And that's not what I want with a foundation ever, obviously. So it is deceiving because when you first put on, you're like, wow, this is beautiful. It's easy to work with. It blends on super quick and super easy. I mean, it checks all the boxes, but don't let it fool you. Like for me personally, like I said, after a few hours, it's all downhill and I have texture and uh, larger pores than I, than I actually have in reality. So that's my experience with this foundation. I know it's different for a lot of people and I hear a lot of conflicting things. So that's just my personal journey with this foundation, but don't let that sway you. If you've been using it and you love it and it works for your skin, I'm really happy to hear that. And please leave me a comment and let me know how it is for your skin if you have tried it. But if you can relate and you feel the same way about it and you feel like it emphasizes your skin texture or gives you texture that you don't even have, also leave me that comment because I wanna make sure that I'm, like I said, that I'm not alone with this because I felt like so many people love this foundation and I was the only one that was like, it's not really, I don't know, it's not giving me like flawless skin at all. So would I recommend this product? I'm sorry to say no. Um, I feel like there's so many other foundations that are like it that give you the same kind of finish and the same kind of color payoff, same blendability, but actually look beautiful all day long. So for that reason, I don't recommend it. Would I go back out and repurchase it? No, it's not for me. It might be for you. Let me know either way, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Next up, we have one from NARS. I'm excited for this one because I've never tried this on myself. Again, lots of formulas I've used in my pro kit and used on clients, but never used on myself. So very excited to have one of my own. It's the NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation. This is a really fantastic foundation formula. I have the shade Medium 2.5 Sahil. It's the same shade that I use in the light reflecting. So let's try it on. Let's shake it. Love the packaging. Love the glass bottle. I love NARS's labeling. I love their, uh, just like their whole overall, the vibe. The look of the brand is just very sleek, very cool. So I'm gonna pump out two pumps to start, uh, maybe three. Now I am out of clean brushes for a minute before I clean some more. So I'm gonna apply this with another favorite from BK Beauty, it's the 109 brush. This is a really great brush for multi-uses. And let's try out, ooh, this NARS foundation. I feel like there's a color difference because this one runs a lot more yellow than this one is right now, but we'll make it work. So it's definitely a full coverage. It's a, it's a medium to full coverage, I should say. I feel like you could definitely make this a medium coverage depending on how many uh, pumps you use at a time. But initially, that that first initial layer that I put on is definitely going on as a full coverage. Now, the beauty of this foundation is its longevity. It is a very, very long wearing, very flawless finish foundation that will give you high performance. So if you are someone who does bridal makeup or if you are a bride or if you're someone who works long hours and you need your makeup to stay put, look flawless, give amazing coverage and stay put all day, you have to check this foundation out. You just have to. The only thing I wanna say about NARS that has always bummed me out is I feel like their foundations run heavily, heavily on the yellow golden side. So very yellow, very golden. There's not a lot of neutrals. There's definitely, I can't think of any off the top of my head, cool tones that NARS carries. So it is very limiting in that regard. Their shade expansion, their shade range is pretty decent, however, but the undertones could be really, really tricky. So unless you are a warm golden undertone, you might have a difficult time finding a foundation that is right for you. And once I actually blend this out, this does look similar in tone to the Sahil I have in the light reflecting. It's just a little tricky and it's gonna look different because this is a full coverage versus this is a more sheer lightweight coverage. So 
because of that, they're gonna look like two different colors. That's just the reality. Now let's talk about how it blended on. It blends on like a dream. It is a dream foundation to blend onto your skin. It is very much a full coverage, like I mentioned, but it's easy to work with. It still has a very soft, luminous finish to it, which I really appreciate. So it's full coverage, but it doesn't look heavy or dry on your skin. This is a foundation that is good for all skin types, in my opinion. All skin types can wear this one, and any age can wear this one too. So if you have mature skin, make sure you prep your skin accordingly and you put your moisturizers on, your hydrators first so it doesn't look too dull. But if you want a flawless full coverage that lasts all day, literally anybody can wear this foundation. I cannot stress it enough. The price point is fine. It's average. It's it's average for a high-end foundation, in my opinion. I love the packaging. I love everything about it except for the shade range and the undertones. That's it. That's the only thing I don't love about NARS foundations is really just the undertones I have the biggest problem with. If you can get past that, like I said, I highly recommend this formula. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, 100%. And I've actually been wanting to put more in my makeup kit to start using it again as a full coverage because it really is that beautiful. So love this one from NARS. It is a beautiful full coverage foundation. And if you haven't tried it already, I highly recommend you do. Sticking with NARS, I have the $52 NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. If you are not new to my channel, you know I love this foundation so much. It is a beautiful, glowy, more natural finish foundation. The shade I have, once again, is Sahil. You definitely wanna shake this formula. It's more on the liquid side. It's definitely more on the runny side, so shake it really well. But this foundation, you will see in a second. If you are new here, you're, you're going to see why I love this foundation and why I use it so often. So now that I've shaken it up, let's talk about the bottle. Beautiful, sleek glass bottle. Has a pump, which, again, you know I love. So I'm gonna do two pumps on my hand. Try not to be wasteful. And I'm gonna apply it with a clean N17 brush. My brush with BK Beauty. I'm gonna dip into it, swipe it on, and oh my gosh, this feels like silky, skincare-infused makeup. Like, it's juicy, it's hydrating, it's glowy, but it's not, in a, it's not glowy in a greasy way. It doesn't make you look like you need to blot, you know what I mean? It just looks like you have healthy, beautiful, luminous skin. It is just absolutely a fantastic foundation. Blends out quick, easy. It's even in coverage. There's no patchiness in the formula. And for being a more glowy foundation, like a very glowy foundation, and for being light reflecting and all those glowy things, it's actually very long wearing. So once you have this on, don't be afraid. It's not gonna slide and move around throughout the day. It actually has really great staying power, which I really appreciate because the last thing you wanna do is have glowy foundation that's sliding off your face throughout the day. So I don't experience that with this foundation. That's something I really look for because I do have more oily leaning skin. So when I put something that's too luminous on top of that, usually the result is it's sliding off my face throughout the day, which is not fun to deal with at all. That does not happen with this foundation. Instead, you're left with long wear, very glowy, luminous, overall healthy looking skin. I love this formula, I really do. The undertones are the same as the other one that I just tried out, so just something to keep in mind. My thoughts are the same for this one as they were for the previous one. I recommend this one for anyone. If you do have very oily skin, I would be cautious if you're going to use this one. I still wouldn't not recommend it for you. I think that you could definitely make it work for your skin if you do have very, very oily, true oily skin. You can make it work by using a more mattifying primer underneath, something to help grip it to your skin, keep it on all day. Or you can, of course, make sure that you are setting it with a good translucent powder to keep the shine a little bit more at bay. So with that said, I recommend it for anyone. I think that anybody can wear this and love it, especially if you have mature skin, especially if you have dry skin. It's definitely gonna be a big hit if you have any of those skin types that I'm talking about. But overall, I say this is great for all skin types and all skin ages skin textures, doesn't matter what you are working with, I think that you will really enjoy this foundation for sure. It is just, it's beautiful. It really is just so, so beautiful. I could go on forever about it. So would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, and I will probably very soon because I feel like I'm running slight, I'm getting towards the halfway point of this foundation. So I'll definitely restock it at some point. I recommend it for anyone. It's definitely worth checking out if you want a beautiful, glowy, natural look to your skin. So once again, that's the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Next up for $52 is one from Patrick Ta. 
I actually love this foundation. I've been using it for quite a while, but let me show you what it looks like on. It is the Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. So we're not gonna talk about the powder aspect of this because it's just gonna be about the cream foundation part. That's for another video when we talk about powders. I have the shade Light Medium 2. I actually got to go to an event when this was first launched by Patrick Tan. I was color matched by someone on his team. It was a really fun event, a really fun experience. I got to bring my girl Brittany. We had a blast. So very fond memories with this foundation. You could tell it's very well loved. I, I've hit pan. I've used it so many times. I actually prefer to use this foundation with a 106 from BK Beauty. This is my preferred brush because it gets in there picks up a good amount of product. This is definitely the kind of cream that you have to like warm up and really break down and soften to really get it to look smooth and beautiful on your skin. It is kind of like a thicker, more heavier cream initially. So by using this brush, it just makes it really easy. It just, it breaks down that product. It softens it really quick, really easy. And the way it blends into the skin is just so quick. Again, so quick, so easy, so efficient. And talk about efficiency, okay? So one thing I love about this foundation is if you are on the go, and I talk about this a lot with cream formulas specifically, if you're on the go, this is like a dream come true. Not only do you have the cream foundation, you have the powder, which is gonna help to like lock it in and to kind of refine and smooth the look of the foundation. But what I really love about this product is not the powder, it really is just the foundation. Like I barely dip into the powder to be fully honest with you. It's all about the cream foundation formula because it is beautiful on. It blends out so quick, so easy. It has a seamless finish to it. There's no patchiness. Now I've never used this in my pro kit, but I feel like after playing with it and using it so many times on myself that it would be good for all skin types. I really do. I think as long as you have the right skin prep going on for your skin type, you'll be good to wear this cream foundation. So for example, if you have dry skin, make sure you're prepping your skin properly with the right hydration and the right moisturizer. So that way when it goes on, it looks luminous and it doesn't look heavy. If you don't prep your skin right with cream foundations, they could tend to pick up on any skin texture, any skin dryness you have. If you have dry patches, if you have areas of your face that you need to exfoliate, those things are going to be magnified. They're going to show up so much more than with a liquid foundation. So just something to keep in mind, cream foundations tend to be less forgiving on your skin and they tend to emphasize and enhance any skin texture issues you might have going on. I do think that even if you have mature skin, you could definitely wear this cream foundation. Again, it's all gonna come down to how you prep your skin and how you apply it, how you blend it on. If you use a blending brush like this, like more of a buffing brush, you're gonna have a really quick, easy time blending into your skin and getting a nice, flawless, natural finish. The coverage is definitely buildable, but you can also shear this out. I've sheared this out many times by using more of a liquid illuminator underneath and just applying a really thin, sheer amount and really buffing it into my skin. So very versatile in that way, very travel friendly, very user friendly, and very beginner friendly, I think, in those terms. And every time I, I pull this out and I wear it, I always think, why do I ever stop wearing it? But I, I have to stop wearing it at some point because I need to try other foundations. I need to like switch it up and show more foundations on my channel and on my Instagram but I do love this formula and every time I stop wearing it, I always think, why did I ever stop wearing it? It's so beautiful and so easy to work with. So would I go back out and repurchase this one? Yes, absolutely. I think it is a beautiful cream formula and it is very travel friendly and just very easy to work with. So love this one. Once again, that is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. Next up for $54, you can get the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This is a lightweight, smoothing, soothing formula. It contains niacinamide, elantoin, and aloe infused. Cool. All right, let's try it out. I've never tried this one. I'm excited to try it. Um, I picked up the shade 2.5 Maloke. Maloke? Let me know if I'm saying that right. Hopefully I am. Um, I'm excited to try this. Really, really excited. I've heard good things about this foundation. I do feel like it's a pricey, it's a, it's a higher price point. And, and I didn't realize until this video, honestly, that Ilia has a higher price point than a lot of brands. Like they're definitely priced a bit higher than I expect or that I remember them being priced at. Anyway, nice glass bottle, very nice, sleek, very modern, very pretty. Has a pump to it, which I love. I am gonna shake this pretty well before I apply it. And let's try two pumps to start. Okay, it's definitely a bit more runny. So it's, it's more of a, a, a thin, a lightweight formula. I love to use my N17 for more thin, lightweight formulas. Let's dip into it and let's try it out. I don't believe it's scented. There's like, no, I don't think it's scented. I think I'm picking up like old lotion on my hand or something, I don't know. Okay, so very glowy, 
very serum-like, true skin serum foundation. This definitely feels like a serum. This feels very, very glowy. This feels very, this feels very skincare-like. It definitely feels, it doesn't feel like a foundation. I should just say that. It does not feel like a foundation. This feels like I'm putting like a hyaluronic acid serum on my skin. Like that's exactly the feeling that I'm getting. So far, it's pretty easy to blend on. It's definitely a little bit more on the sheer side. I feel like you could probably build it up. Let's just take a little bit more product and tap it on to build up the coverage. I mean, all in all, it's pretty easy to blend. It's definitely easy to blend. And you know, more sheer formulas, like I've mentioned, they're naturally gonna be easier and more forgiving to blend. So, and when I say forgiving, if you miss a spot, if you don't take a long time to like really properly blend your foundation, it's still gonna look good. Like they're just more forgiving in that regard because they're more sheer. You can see your skin peeking through. They're just easier to work with than a full coverage um, by far. So something to kind of keep in mind. Coverage is nice though. I think it's a nice light bordering medium. It's like a, a full light coverage. Yeah, slightly bordering medium coverage. And again, I did kind of build it up on my cheek right here and it built up pretty nicely. The feeling of this feels amazing. It feels extremely hydrating. Feels really great. I would imagine this would be a fantastic formula if you have severely dry skin or dry mature skin or mature skin. This is gonna look juicy and youthful and just, oh my God, I, I, I wish I had a more mature skin model with me right now just so I could pop it on them and just test it out. If you're someone at home who's watching and you do have more mature skin, you've tried this, please leave me your comment. Please tell me what your thoughts are on this. I would love to hear from you. The only person I would not recommend this for is gonna be oily. If you have oily skin, you're not gonna to wanna to wear this. There's just no way. There's just, I'm sure you could make it work and never say never. I don't wanna limit you or put you in a corner where you feel like you can't try it, but I wouldn't recommend it for an oily skin or a severely oily skin person. I think it's not gonna be the right formula for you. If you're normal or oily, I think you could probably get away with using this for sure. If you have just combination skin, combination dry, and like I said, severely dry, you're gonna love this formula foundation. The finish is just beautiful. It is super glowy. It is super dewy. If those are things you don't want, don't get this one, skip it. If those are things you do want in a foundation, you are gonna get exactly what you want with this finish. It is quite, quite glowy. Would I go back out and repurchase this? I think I would. I have to be really honest with you. If I was going to go pick up another glowy, luminous finish foundation, I would just go pick up another NARS Light Reflecting because I just like the finish of this and I feel like the longevity is just not gonna be there with this one, but I will keep testing it out. I'll keep continuing to share my thoughts on it, but those are just my initial thoughts. So would I go back out and repurchase it? I probably wouldn't, just to be fully honest with you, but Curious what your thoughts are, leave them below if you have any, if you've tried them. And once again, this is the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. Next up, this one is also $54, but I would expect that from Bobbi Brown. $54, you can get the Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. This has broad spectrum SPF 15. It's a full coverage, oil-free shine control foundation. That's interesting, I'm, I'm excited for that. I picked up the shade N052 Natural, and let's see what it says on the back too, just really quick. Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation, uh, full longwear coverage. It looks and feels like skin, not masky, heavy or cakey always good. This high performance oil-free formula creates a poreless shine-free finish without with incredibly comfortable day to night wear. I like that too. Silky emulsion of true to skin pigments, hydrating emollients and wear extending ingredients floats over skin and delivers flexible, breathable coverage. Instantly mattifies skin for a natural look that is never dry, dull or flat. Okay. The rest is just like kind of the same thing repeated. Let's try it out. Gosh, I haven't tried a Bobbi Brown foundation in a long time, like a really, really long time. Nice packaging, very luxe glass bottle. Let's shake it up. Let's hope that I picked somewhat of a good shade. <laughs> These were also kind of hard to choose from too. Uh, I think this one I got online at Sephora, like online at Sephora.com, but yeah, I did not pick this out in store. Anyway, let's pump some out on the top of my hand. Let's start out, let's do that, two full pumps. I'm gonna apply it with my N17. Can't tell if this has, this has like a little hint of a scent. Maybe not, no, maybe not. Maybe it's just my hand. <laughs> All right, let's blend this out. All right, this is drying down very quick. Almost instantly, this is drying down. I'm gonna pat it in. I'm gonna try to work quickly because again, this is like, yeah, this is drying on my skin as we speak. And I still have moisturizer on too. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not like it's going on top of like, you know, dry, unprepped skin. Hmm, I kind of like this, okay. A aside from the fact that it's drying down quick, I, I mean, I actually kind of like that to be quite honest. Now that I'm getting used to it, I think there's just like a touch of a, a learning curve with this one where you have to kind of get used to how it's how it dries down quick. But the fact that it does, 
It's actually really nice and very convenient. You're not having to work hard to get it to sit on your skin and like actually stay put. All right, that's nice. That is really nice. To be honest, this totally delivered like just initial thoughts. This delivered everything it says it was going to do like as far as like instant results. It definitely smoothed my skin. It doesn't feel heavy by any means. It's giving really beautiful coverage. I feel like the coverage is definitely buildable. And the fact that it's drying down so quick tells me that it is going to be an actual long wear foundation. So it's delivering what it's supposed to deliver. It's giving me like that skin-like, beautiful, lightweight, but flawless coverage to my skin. Yeah, I mean, this is gorgeous. This is a really nice foundation. This is really, really nice. I think this is a beautiful one to check out. You know, I, even though it's like a long wear and it's supposed to be more of a matte all day wear, I still think this would be a nice formula for even like more mature skin. I don't, because it doesn't have that heavy feeling to it at all. Like it just kind of, it kind of like just sinks onto your skin. It stays put, like it's feeling like it's gonna stay put really well, even without any kind of powder. Yeah, that's really nice. And once again, like what I was gonna say is the fact that it is delivering all these things, but it's not feeling heavy or looking heavy on my skin, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And that's hard to achieve, in my opinion, with foundation. So, I mean, look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful. It was pretty easy to work with for the most part. It wasn't like the easiest, easiest, but it was like fairly easy to work with. This is nice. You're gonna see me definitely wearing this and the color works perfectly for me, which I'm so thrilled about. I, like I said, I recommend this for anyone. I think this is a great one for anyone who's looking for a long wear foundation for a nice smooth, you know, oil-free, like shine control type formula. So if you have mature oily skin, which, you know, we don't talk about that a lot. Like it's mo the most common thing we talk about is having mature dry skin, but there are a hundred percent tons of you out there who talk to me on a regular basis that say you have mature oily skin. So, and if you want that full coverage and that mattifying look without feeling like you have a mask of makeup on, you should definitely, definitely check this one out. This is a great one. Highly recommend this. It's beautiful. Look at that. I can't wait to wear it more often and to give you more thoughts on it as I continue to wear it out and test it out. But would I repurchase this? Yes, I would. I think this is a really great formula from Bobbi Brown. So once again, it's the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation. Beautiful. For $54, you can get the Rose Ink Soft Light Skin Smoothing Liquid Foundation. I have the shade 15N. It's a medium neutral shade. I've never tried it. I've, I don't even think I've heard anything about it to be quite honest. I, so I don't really have any kind of like reference of like if it's a popular foundation if people like it. I know nothing about it. So we're gonna try this for the first time completely <laughs> together. The back of it says it's a clean, non comedogenic foundation that delivers medium buildable coverage with a smooth, soft matte finish. Oh, interesting. I, I, for some reason, I wouldn't expect a matte finish from the brand Rose Ink. They seem very much to me they come across like more of a, like a merit or like um, just one of those more natural, minimalist, glowy brands, you know? Let me know if you, if, if you have the same thought as I do. So I'm surprised to see it's matte. It's a weightless fluid powered by bioengineered complexes, visibly improves brightness and reduces the appearance of redness and pores while minimizing excess oil to keep skin in a balanced state. Cool. All right, let's try it. Let's try this out. Beautiful packaging. I think Rose Ink has some really cool, like very modern packaging, very unique to the shape of this nice glass bottle. It's pretty pricey to be quite honest for a brand that's very new. Like they're giving like very high end, like like Givenchy prices with $54 in my opinion. And to be out the gate, I don't know. I just my thoughts. The price alone is a little off-putting to me as like a, from a consumer standpoint but let's see how the foundation is on. It could be like, it could knock my socks off and it could be worth every penny. So you never know. I'm gonna shake it really well and let's pump it out. Beautiful bottle. Let's try it about that much. Okay, so it's got like a medium thickness, like a level of thickness to it. So I'm gonna just apply this with my N17. Doesn't have any fragrance. And what kind of coverage was this again? Medium coverage. All right. So the shade is not bad. It's not bad. Was this supposed to be a neutral? Yeah, this is supposed to be a neutral. I don't know if it's giving... Oh, I guess it's pretty neutral. Yeah, it's pretty neutral. All right. I mean, I feel like I want more coverage. I'm going to pump one more pump on my hand. Let's just do a little bit of layering. Let's see if we can build up this coverage because I feel like it's a little patchy and inconsistent with that one coat. So let's apply a little bit more and see what we get. All right. It's looking better now. All right. Okay. All right. It's like I almost needed to give it a, a minute to just kind of soak into my skin. And once it did, 
It's actually looking really smooth around my, especially like around my inner cheek where I do have larger pores. It seems very smooth, uh, very, yeah. I mean, it's actually looking really, really beautiful. Coverage is nice. It is buildable like you saw me do. I feel like it's better suited if you build up the coverage because it looked a little patchy with that initial one coat. But now that it's on and it's kind of settled onto my skin, it looks really nice. Like that looks beautiful. Feels lightweight. The blendability wasn't like the easiest. It, it didn't like, it didn't blend itself onto my skin by any means. It definitely took some more finessing and some more work to make it look as smooth and flawless as it does right now. But once you've done that, the overall appearance of it and the finish of it is really quite beautiful. Like it looks really nice, feels really lightweight, feels very comfortable. I can't imagine this being, even though it's supposed to have like more of a matte finish, I don't feel like this would be bad for like more dry skin because it feels really lightweight. It actually feels very, has more of like a hydrating feel to it, which is really nice. So I think this would actually work for any skin type, any skin age, uh, mature, young. I think anybody could wear this foundation. I like it a lot. The only thing I'm gonna really pick on it for, honestly, is just the price tag. The price tag just seems a little unnecessary, like unnecessarily high for you know a newer foundation. It's really pretty though. It really is beautiful. I think I need more time to like fall more in love with it. But my first impression is this is a really nice foundation. And I think it would be a good universally flattering foundation for anyone. So with that said, I do recommend it. I don't love the price tag. That's just my thought and my opinion. Would I go back out and repurchase it? I don't see why I wouldn't, but it's not like wowing me. It's not like I'm not floored by it, you know? I, so maybe if I had to, I, it wouldn't be like a bad option. It's definitely a really nice option. But would I actually go back out and repurchase it? I don't think I would. Because I would, there's so many others that I love more, like my NARS formulas that I would reach for and opt for, and they're actually less expensive. For those reasons specifically, I wouldn't go back out and repurchase it. Is it beautiful? Yes, absolutely. So once again, that is the Rose Ink Soft Light Skin Smoothing Liquid Foundation. Next up for $55, I have an old favorite of mine. I haven't used this foundation in quite some time and I don't know why. I love this foundation. So full disclosure, I love this foundation. It is the Dior Forever Transfer Proof 24 Hour Foundation High Perfection Concentrated Floral Skincare with Sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 15. We don't need the SPF 15. That's just like an afterthought, but it's in there just to mention. I picked up the shade 2.5 neutral and I'm usually a W in Dior. However, I know I can make a neutral work for me in Dior. So let me show you what this looks like on packaging, very luxe, glass bottle, neat matte cap. I know it's not about that, but I love good packaging. So let's move on. Let's try it on. This is a very long wear formula. And I used to use this in my pro kit. And again, I don't know why I took it out. I think I just got so reliant on my Dior Backstage Face and Body and my Armani Luminous Silk that I just, once I ran out of these, I never replenished it because I was just so used to using my Dior and my Armani. So anyway, little side story. I do miss it and I do want it back in my kit. So maybe 2024 will be the year of putting this back in my pro kit. I'm gonna apply it with my N17. Now this does have a slight, somewhat like fruity, but maybe like hints of floral fragrance to it. It's not overpowering, it's not overwhelming. So but just something to point out because I know a lot of you don't like fragrance. I don't mind it personally, as long as it smells good. I love good smelling stuff, I, I'm a sucker for it. So I think it smells really nice and really, um, really fresh in a way. So it doesn't bother me. Now let's talk about how unbelievably gorgeous this foundation is. I mean, first of all, blends in like a dream. It is so easy. It's so user-friendly. You don't have to be great at blending to get this to look beautiful and flawless. The blendability is just perfection. It's so easy. Like I said, so easy to work with, so easy to blend on my skin. The finish is absolutely gorgeous. It's like a flawless satin, slightly leaning matte once it dries down finish, which is beautiful and very, very long wearing. I think this is a fantastic formula. If you are a bridal makeup artist or if you are a future bride and you want a good foundation that's gonna last you your entire day and look beautiful in your photos, you should definitely check out this formula. Um, worth every penny, in my opinion. It is just a fantastic, just flawless full coverage foundation. And it's incredibly long wearing, like I mentioned previously. It will stay on your skin through so much. So even without primer, even without a ton of setting powder, it's still gonna last on your skin and have that longevity, which I think is something to talk about, something really to talk about. I love this foundation so much. I really could go on about it forever. It is just such a gorgeous, full coverage, long wearing foundation. So I recommend this for anyone looking for a full coverage. 
that is also bonus long wearing. I think no matter what your skin type is, no matter what your skin ages, anybody can wear this foundation. It's gonna be good for anyone looking for, like I said, a full coverage long wear foundation or just a full coverage. Even if you don't care if it lasts all day, it's gonna last all day no matter what, which is a fantastic bonus, I think. So would I recommend this foundation? Yes, and to anyone. Will I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, always, because look at that. That is just literally perfection in a bottle. So Dior Forever Foundation, it is just gorgeous. Also for $55 and also from Dior, it's another showstopper. I'm sorry, you're gonna hear me rave about this one as well. It's equally as good, but in a completely different way. This is the Dior Forever Skin Glow. So it's a 24 hour wear radiant foundation, perfection and hydration, concentrated floral skincare with sunscreen. It's all the same claims, except this is a long wear with a glow. So both are extremely long wearing. They're both gonna stay put all day, but one's gonna give you that matte finish. This one is gonna give you the most gorgeous glow. I used to save this foundation for like a special event because I it was pricey and I didn't wanna keep like, I didn't wanna waste it. So I was always saving it for like a special occasion, a date night, an event, a party, a wedding. I, I mean, it's it's kind of ridiculous when I look back, but I sa literally saved this for like, special events only. That's how much I love this foundation. The shade that I picked up in this one is 2.5 W. So they had a warm tone in stock when I picked it up at Sephora. Very similar packaging, except it is all shiny glass bottle. It's a pump. It's magical. It's just magical. Let me show you what this looks like on. I'm gonna shake it a little bit and let's start with two pumps. So more of a runny texture because it is a glowy foundation. I'm going to apply this with a 106 from BK Beauty. Oh, I remember this feeling. I haven't worn this in like probably a year. It's probably been a good year since I've had this foundation in my collection. The one I had previously, it actually expired before I could use the entire bottle. Like I knew it was old and I just had to get, I had a part, I had to get rid of it, but it hurt me to do it. But I knew I was doing the right thing because it was definitely like I had it for years, way too long. Look how easy this blends on. It's so quick. It's so easy to blend on. It's so easy to work with and melts into your skin in, in seconds. Honestly, it's so user-friendly, it's ridiculous. So if you want more of a medium to full coverage with a glow foundation, which I think is a really hard combination to achieve for a lot of these foundations and like makeup brands, it's hard to achieve a good full coverage foundation that gives you glow. But Dior has done it and they've done it perfectly well. I literally recommend this foundation for anyone. Anybody can wear this. It doesn't matter if you have really oily skin, the fact that it's long wearing, it's gonna stay put on your oily skin. So it's, it, don't be afraid of it. It's gonna give you that beautiful glow, but not in an overly glowy way. If you have dry skin, mature skin, young skin, I don't care what kind of skin you have or what age your skin is, you can wear this foundation and you will more than likely, I guarantee you, you will love this foundation. I really do. I'd be shocked if you didn't like it. It is just stunning. Look at that. Finish is gorgeous. It gives that subtle glow. It's not an overwhelming amount of glow. You could probably even enhance this glow even more if you put like a liquid illuminator underneath just as an option to throw out there. But I think this is an amazing full coverage, long wear, glowy foundation for everybody. Anybody and everybody. The price, yeah, it's $55, but honestly, it's worth every penny in my opinion. It really is a fantastic formula all around. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, because I have many times. So, and I now have a new one in my possession. I'm so happy. So once again, that is the gorgeous, must have Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. You just can't beat it. Next up for $55, we have one from Givenchy. This is the Prism Lieb Skin Caring Glow Foundation. I've used this in the past. I didn't ever have the perfect shade for myself. So I stopped using it. I actually gave it away to my sister who's a little bit lighter than me and has a slightly different skin undertone. So I don't have it. I haven't had it for a while, but I remember loving it and being disappointed that I didn't have the right shade. And I don't know why I never went out and got another one. Long story short, we're here now. Hopefully I picked out a shade that is mo more appropriate for my complexion. We shall see. I have the shade in my hand, W245. We're gonna find out if this is a good match. It's a warm undertone, so hopefully that's gonna be more close to my complexion, even though I'm like more of a warm olive. Beautiful packaging. I mean, what would you expect from Givenchy? They have incredible packaging, super luxe. I mean, this just screams luxury. It's gorgeous. I love the black, I mean, God, come on. This is like, it's beautiful. It's $55, it's beautiful. Let's try it out again together. Has a pump, which is always great. I'm gonna shake it really quick. All right, let's do, let's start with two pumps, just like that. Ooh, 
Okay, definitely has more of like a thin formula. It's definitely more, a little bit more runny. I'm gonna apply this with my 106 because that is my clean brush at hand. And I, I love this brush for foundation. It's like, it'll always be one of my BFFs for foundation. So let's apply it. This does have fragrance. Most of Givenchy's products have some extent of fragrance to it. If you don't mind things that smell really beautiful, then you won't mind this. But if you're someone who's like prone to like headaches, for example, with fragrance, just something to point out. You might not like this formula for that reason. So this is a very lightweight, glowy formula. It's more of a, a light coverage in my opinion too, but you could definitely build this up. To me, this is a really great high-end glowy foundation for a more of a natural look. So if you're, for example, I'm actually gonna take one more pump. So if you're looking for more of a lightweight, glowy foundation, this is a really great option. So let me apply a little bit more because I just feel like I want a little bit more coverage. You could definitely build this one up and it layers really nice. It's easy to blend out on the skin. The texture of it is just, it's like lovely. It just feels wonderful on your skin. It feels very like skincare forward. You know, like it feels like a serum basically on your skin. Now the wear time, I don't quite remember how well this wears throughout the day because it's been a minute since I've worn it or even tried it. If you're looking for like an all day type wear, you're gonna wanna avoid this kind of foundation and just more like sheer glowy foundations in general because they don't have the longevity that like that Bobbi Brown one, for example, has or like some other ones that are more full coverage and matte finish have. This is gonna be more of a glowy, sheer, you know, skin-like type foundation, more of a natural foundation. So. Even if you have oily skin, I think this is still like a really good option if you want that kind of finish to your foundation. I mean, I think this is good for anyone, to be honest. I think this is good for all skin types, any skin ages, anything. anyone could wear this foundation. It just depends if you're looking for that more natural, healthy, luminous glow to your skin without it feeling like it's it's being weighed down with too much coverage because the coverage is, is pretty light to buildable medium if you want it that way. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, I would. Cause it's like, it's just, it's healthy, glowy, natural, luminous. It's like all those beautiful things on my skin and it feels really, really nice and it's easy to work with. It is a little bit more pricey, but with that you get a really beautiful, very nice feeling foundation on your skin. I definitely recommend this one if you want a good glow. And it's again, the Givenchy Prism Lieb Skin Caring Glow Foundation. Beautiful. Okay, next up is one for $56. And don't laugh at the size of the bottle that I'm about to show you because it's not the full size bottle. I was, uh, I'm grateful that I received uh, the entire collection of this foundation, like the entire shade range from this collection. It's a new one from Shiseido, I should say. It's the Revital Essence Skin Glow Foundation. You know, from my understanding, it's very similar to the other one that I showed you just previously, but it's more glowy. Again, I don't know a whole lot about this foundation, this new formula from them, but I do know that Shiseido always knocks out really beautiful foundation formulas. So I'm excited to try this one. I've saved it for this video. I've been sitting on these samples for this video so I can have like a nice true first impression. The shade that I'm gonna put on right now is 360 Citrine and let's try it out. I'm excited, very excited. So let's try out this cute little, very travel friendly bottle. And of course, like the actual foundation does come with a pump, but this has like a nice little spatula applicator, which is kind of cool. So I'm just gonna take some and like pop it on the top of my hand. This does not have any kind of fragrance to it, which is again, nice. I'm gonna apply it with my N17 and let's go for it. Hmm. Very lightweight. Wow, very thin, very, very thin and lightweight. The shade's a little off for me, but other than that, hmm. I don't know if I love this um, coverage I'm getting. I'm gonna apply a little bit more because I just feel like I'm not getting enough coverage. And my skin's starting to look a little red after all that, all the taking off and reapplying and doing all those things. It's starting to get a little irritated as we kind of near the end of this huge haul. <laughs> okay, so the only thing about this is, first of all, it's giving a really beautiful glow. It's giving kind of a, I mean, I know there's no metallic there's nothing metallic in this formula, but it's giving more of a metallic shine, to be honest. It's like very, very like glossy, high, high shine. The only thing is it's a little patchy. It's a little bit on the patchy side. And I hate to say that because I, I love the, I typically love the Shiseido formulas and their foundation, but this one's a little patchy. Yeah, it's, a, it's just giving a little patchiness to me, like right here. That's a bummer. The other thing is I do feel like it's not a very smoothy formula. I do look a little more textury in the inner part of my cheek, which is a bummer. I really wanted to love this. I'm sh I'm shocked to say that I'm not loving, like first impressions, I'm not loving the way this is looking on my skin. It feels really nice. It feels like I have like a nice skincare ingredient, like a serum on my skin. I can't imagine this has a very longevity when you're wearing it throughout the day. For that reason, I would not recommend this for like more of an oily skin person or someone who needs their makeup to stay put all day long. Obviously this is not gonna be your best option. If you have more dry skin, 
dry mature skin this is going to be a nice lightweight formula but even if i don't love that there's some patchiness in the the actual coverage that's bothering me the most it is easy to blend on it, however it is still kind of patchy so that's 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 not fun that's that's definitely an issue ah <sighs> Price point, it's definitely, you know, it's higher up there in price. So that's something to consider. I'm not loving this. I hate to say it. I'm not loving this new one from Shiseido and I'm really sad. Would I repurchase it? Granted, I did not, full disclosure, I did not purchase this, like I said, but would I actually go out and purchase it? I don't think I would. And I'm so sad, I'm sorry. But there's just so many other good ones out there on the market that are like a glowy, easy to blend on, super like smooth and like the texture and like the consistency that leaves your skin looking smooth on top of it. And this is not hitting those points for me. So for that reason, don't necessarily recommend it. And for that reason also, I wouldn't go back out and repurchase it. I'm sorry to say it, Shiseido. You just didn't quite, I don't feel like you nailed it with this one. Once again, that is the Shiseido Revitalescence Skin Glow Foundation. Now for $57, you can get the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow. All right, broad spectrum, SPF 27. We won't go on about that. It is a medium coverage, medium to full coverage, up to 24 hour healthy glow skincare foundation. I picked up the shade 335W. So it's gonna have a warm undertone. Care and Glow is like the main thing that you're seeing on this. So it's like Care and Glow, Healthy Glow Skincare Foundation. All right, I think I get the gist of this. It's going to be a decent amount of coverage, clearly. Skin caring ingredients, I should say. And it's gonna have a glow. So beautiful packaging, by the way. Lancome has beautiful, classic, very classic packaging. The formula separate a little bit right here, That's, but we just need to shake it up. So let's shake it up. And again, this is $57. It's not cheap, but most of Lancome products are typically not they're not the most affordable. So let's try this out. It has a pump to it, which is great. Any other talking points? No. All right, so let's try it out. I'm gonna pump. Ooh, oh, that's, f whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, don't leave me, don't move. I'm gonna pump two very liquidy pumps on the top of my hand. Wow, this is very watery. Oh, mm. this is heavily fra fragranced. Heavily, heavily fragranced. That smells really good. It smells like a really, really nice expensive candle. Wow, okay. I mean, this feels really nice, I'm not gonna lie. This feels really, really nice. It is very, I doubt that it's the kind of coverage that it's saying. This is where it indicates how much coverage you're gonna get. There's like a four dot marker. It has three dots filled. So it's claiming to be a pretty full coverage in that regard in their like their in their system they're using to tell you what kind of coverage you're gonna get. Here's the thing, that melts into my skin with very minimal effort. I mean, I barely had to like blend back and forth. I really just did a couple of big strokes and I got a pretty nice coverage. There are certain areas that looked a little streaky for a minute and I just use a tapping motion to kind of push that product onto my skin. It feels like nothing. It feels actually like I put like a very juicy serum on my skin. The coverage is actually pretty nice, but it's definitely less coverage than it's saying it's gonna give you. So just kind of keep that in mind. Let's build it a little bit and see what we can do. I'm gonna put one more very watery pump on my hand Ooh. By the way, the, the shade that I picked out is pretty good too, so I'm happy about that. Now let's apply a little bit more. And this definitely feels like very, really nice. It feels really, really nice. I would say if you are a dry skin girly or boy out there and you want some like really healthy, like juicy, hydrating glow to your skin with coverage, like some coverage, then you should definitely check this one out. This feels amazing. I would say I don't think this is going to be a great one for oily skin types. It feels almost too hydrating and too glowy for that type of skin. I think it's it's not gonna be your best suited uh, formula for your skin types, just a forewarning. But anyone else, like normal combination, mature, young and dry skin, any, any kind of dry skin people out there are gonna appreciate this formula because it feels really incredible on my skin and it looks beautiful. There was a little bit of patchiness initially, but it wasn't horrible. It definitely takes a little bit more finessing to get this foundation to look streak-free. It's so thin, it just doesn't really like grip onto my skin very well, but I have more of like a combination oily skin, so that could be a factor too. I would love to see what this looks like on dry skin. If you're someone who has dry skin and you've tried this foundation, please leave your, your comments and your thoughts below. I'd love to hear like what your thoughts are as someone who has true dry skin, because I don't, but those are just my thoughts. Um, I think this is beautiful. All that to say, I think it's beautiful. I, even though this is probably not the best suited for my skin type, I'm still going to continue to wear this because I really like the way it feels and I like the way it looks on my skin. It's not emphasizing any texture or, you know, larger pores in this area, even though it has that high shine. It still looks overall very smooth and very flawless. I think this is a really nice formula. I really like this. This kind of reminds me a little bit of like my NARS Light Reflecting, 
but with a little teeny, teeny bit less uh, coverage. It's a very thin formula. Just keep that in mind. It almost feels like watery on your skin, like a watery, almost feels like a watery essence on your skin, to be totally honest. So do I recommend this one? Yes, but not for oily skin types. Like I mentioned, would I go back out and repurchase it? I would. That is beautiful. That's totally beautiful. That's once again, the Lancome Tint a Doll Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. Okay, let's keep the theme going with another Lancome foundation. This one's a lot more popular in my opinion. It's been around longer than the other one I just tried out. It's also $57. It's the Lancome Tinted Doll Ultra Wear. This does contain sunscreen. It has broad spectrum SPF 25. It's an up to 24 hour wear foundation with breathable coverage. It does indicate on the bottom how much coverage you get. I picked up a different shade in this because I felt like the shades, even though they are the same brand, I felt like there was a big jump in this shade, for example, in this formula versus this shade the same shade in this formula, partly because it's a full coverage and naturally it's gonna look slightly different because there's so much more pigment in it, like color payoff and pigment in it. So anyway, I picked up a different shade. I picked up 330 neutral. So it's transfer resistant, love that. Let's try it out. I have not ever worn this foundation, but I've heard really great things about this foundation. So my hopes are very high. Same bottle, but in a frosted uh, cap and frosted glass bottle. Very nice. Let's shake it up and let's pump out two pumps. I feel like this is gonna be a little bit more my my type, like my kind of like preferred feeling and look to a foundation. I'm gonna apply it with my N17. Let's swipe it on. Hmm, I can't tell if it has fragrance. I feel like I need to smell coffee beans at this point because I've smelled so many foundations. I don't think it has fragrance, to be honest. What the box say? I'll look later. I don't think it has fragrance. Okay, so far, this is stunning. <laughs> the shade is perfect. I'm so happy about that because I really wanted to, I was really stressing about this shade, I have to tell you. I spent, a l I bought this one in person at Sephora and I must have spent, I spent quite a while crouched down on the ground, looking, comparing, holding my hand up, trying to get better light and um, I picked out a winner. So I'm so happy, I'm so relieved. This looks beautiful. This is, I can already tell you, this is like a, uh, an amazing foundation. I can already tell right away, like first impression, this is a fantastic formula. This melted into my skin. I mean, you saw that I just did minimal, minimal effort in, in terms of like blending this onto my skin and it just melted into my skin. The coverage is super flawless, but in a really lightweight, almost natural, uh, way. It has more of like a, a satin to matte finish. Like it's looking more satin right now because it hasn't had a chance to dry down fully, obviously. Texture of it is fantastic. The way it looks on my skin is so flawless, but it doesn't feel heavy, which is a really important thing. With a full coverage foundation, they tend to feel just naturally, they tend to feel a little bit more heavy and they tend to feel like you're, you're, they're wearing you versus you're wearing it. This is not how that feeling. I feel like I just have beautiful, flawless, skin. I mean, it's gorgeous. Like the, everything about this has just won me over. Like the way it blends, the finish, the texture, it's just a great foundation. I, what more can I say? And the fact that it's also a long wearing foundation that looks this good and it feels this good. Just, I mean, I'm sold. Like I am sold. You're definitely going to see me wearing this foundation probably all the time, to be honest. I feel like this might be a new one when I have like special occasions or special events where I need my makeup, when I'm going to put on super early and I need to look good all day long. That's beautiful. Now I recommend this for anyone. I don't think there's one person that I could think of that won't benefit from wearing this foundation if you are looking for those things. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for more of a full coverage, flawless all day wear, smoothing effect to your foundation, check this out. Whether you're mature, young, oily, combo, dry, I don't care. This is a great foundation that feels and looks beautiful on your skin. Amazing formula, like 10 out of 10, love this one for sure. This is a gorgeous formula. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, and I highly recommend it. So check this one out. It's the Lancome Tint Doll Ultra Wear Foundation. That is just, oh, look at the skin. It's just, it's flawless. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Next up, we have one for $58. It's from Hourglass. I've had this one for a minute, like at least probably two years at this point. So yeah, it's probably borderline expired. It, it, technically it's expired. Let's not get into it. I've saved it for good reason and now I don't have to buy a new one for this video. So all that to say, this is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. Now, I love this foundation. I love the formula. I think it's a really great formula. However, the shade range is not good. The shade range was difficult. And to, to be honest, I had a really hard time back when I first purchased this getting the right shade for my skin tone. I ended up going for the shade six. It seemed 
like out of the ones I swatched and the ones that were available in that process of elimination, this seemed to be the best option. Now, forewarning, this is still not the best shade match for me. So you're gonna see it go on. It's not gonna be the most ideal match. I've been called out for wearing it before for it being too yellow, and it is, it's too yellow. It's definitely too warm for my complexion. But all I have to say, at the time, this was the best shade available. So I wish they would just throw some extra shades in their hourglass if you watch this. I love your brand and I love this formula. Please just add some more shades because you're missing, you're missing quite a few. I'm gonna shake it up. Let's pump out, let's do about two pumps. Texture a bit, really nice, very easy to work with. It's been a minute, I've missed you. <laughs> Let me show you what this looks like on. It does not have fragrance, I couldn't remember if it did or not. So you'll see right away, this is just, it's too, it's a little too yellow for my complexion. It's not horrible, but you know, being online, if it's not a perfect match, people are going to call you out for it. So I've been called out for it and it's, you know, you gotta get a good laugh, right? It's like, I wanna wear the foundation because it's such a beautiful foundation. It's a really great formula, but the shade is not ideal. So it is what it is. Now let's talk about the texture of this. It looks so smooth and flawless and it looks like a filter on my skin. It feels amazing on my skin. It's really easy to work with, like very easy to blend out. I truly think this is one of the best foundation formulas that I've ever tried. I know that's saying a lot because I've tried a lot of foundation formulas and I still I still truly believe that. Like it's a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. The wear time is great. I've worn it for an extended period of time when I was wearing it back when I first got it. The coverage is beautiful. It gives you quite a good amount of coverage without being heavy or looking heavy on your skin. It still feels extremely lightweight and breathable. Like it looks like your skin, but better. And it definitely has a very smoothing airbrush quality to it, which I really appreciate. And it's kind of something you come to expect with Hourglass. They have a lot of products that overall give you a very airbrushed look to your skin, which I love, especially as a makeup artist. I want be, I want my clients to look like they have incredible skin. This will give you the most flawless airbrush and smooth look to your skin. So if you have any texture, larger pores, it's a really good one to check out because it will give you that beautiful amount of coverage while still looking like your skin and while smoothing your skin as it's doing it. I mean, my skin looks, I mean, it looks so satiny and so smooth. It's just a great, it's an amazing formula. I highly recommend this one. There's not one person or skin type or skin age that I wouldn't recommend this for. I think this would honestly work for anybody, anybody. As long as you're not looking for a really lightweight coverage or if you're not looking for like, you know, some crazy all day wear, waterproof you, that you could wear through a hurricane, then this is a really great one worth checking out. It's a beautiful formula. The biggest complaint that I have is the shade range that they have available. It's just not ideal. It's not, there's some major gaps that they need to fill, but I still recommend it. I still think it's an incredible formula. Would I go back out and repurchase this? Yes, I would. I just wish they had more shades. So once again, that is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. It is just, I mean, it's beautiful. It's flawless in a bottle. All right, next up for $60, you can get the YSL All Hours Foundation. This has a broad spectrum SPF 30. It's a luminous matte coverage foundation. Up to 24 hour full coverage, weightless feel. I picked up the shade MN7 Medium Neutral. Here's the thing, okay, you can't, what? You can't be like luminous and matte. They don't, that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like you're either, you're one or the other. You know, matte doesn't, matte is matte, luminous is luminous. We're gonna not go into detail about that. I'm not gonna try to like, I'm gonna let it go. Cause I'm really excited to try this formula. I've, okay, I've tried, I've heard really great things about this formula. People rave about it. I've been wanting to try it since it came out. So I am so happy to have this in my hands right now. So let's try it out, but really quick, I wanna just read some of the claims on the back of the box. It's a day to night foundation with a flawless long wear luminous matte couture finish. All day long wear, up to 24 hour staying power as if freshly applied, cool. Resistant to temperature change, love it. No touch-ups required, transfer resistant, color stays true for continuous sunscreen protection to reapply every two hours. Not good that they said that, that's, that's good. Breathable full coverage or breathable texture provides full coverage and natural finish. It gives you a weightless feel, flawless wear and it feels comfortable all day long. The other thing I wanna just to mention too is it says skin feels hydrated and shine free all day long. Skin enriched formula provides all day hydration. The Neo Skin Powder keeps the complexion shine free. Cool. What else? Jasmine petals from the YSL Community Gardens helps to combat dull skin. All right, so that's where they're getting this like luminous matte claim. At least they put that there because it actually does help to kind of, it helps put you in the mindset of where what they were thinking by putting luminous matte. So I, I that's better, it's better. Let's try it out. I, I've talked way too much, you know, I'm so sorry. I've talked way too much. Let's try it out. Beautiful packaging, absolutely luxe and gorgeous. I, you, I wouldn't expect anything else from YSL. They have fantastic, ah, oh, beautiful packaging. So very luxe bottle, 
Love the logo on the top. Let's shake it and let's try it out. Again, I've been wanting to try this for quite some time, so I'm really, really excited right now. I hope it doesn't disappoint. I just pumped two pumps. I'm gonna take my brush and let's... It's definitely fragranced, as most YSL products are, just a forewarning. So if you're not, uh, if that's a a hard stop for you, then you're not gonna want this foundation. Just a disclaimer. All right, this is already blending into my skin like a dream. The foundation shade that I picked out is close to perfect, which is amazing. I mean, this is blending out so easy, so effortlessly. It's looking so smooth and so flawless on my skin. The coverage is really nice. It's a, it's a medium to full coverage without looking heavy and certainly does not feel heavy, that's for sure. It feels really lightweight on my skin. I don't mind the fragrance. I think, honestly, it smells beautiful, but I know a lot of you don't like fragrance and it's a, a deal breaker for you. So just, again, something to really point out. But the way this looks on my skin is like absolute. I mean, it's absolutely flawless, okay? Blends out super easy. The texture is really nice. It's easy to work with. It has a really beautiful smoothing quality to it. I mean, the formulation I think is is pretty perfect. I would love to see, and I will see how this wears throughout the day. Obviously this is a first impression. I'm only wearing this for a very short period of time, but sometimes it's all about that first impression, right? It could be good, it could be bad, and it sets the tone for the rest of the your time with that foundation. My first impression is this is absolutely worth the hype and worth the like accolades that it's getting because it is stunning on and it feels amazing. Blendability, superb. I think this is good for anyone. Mature, young, dry, oily, combo. I think this is good for anyone. I really do. I think this is a really beautiful foundation. I can't think of any person that won't enjoy this. The only thing that you might not find enjoyable is the fragrance. So if a fragrance is a, a hard no for you, then you want to skip this foundation. If you don't mind, then you should definitely, definitely check out this YSL All Hours Foundation because it is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I feel like I could apply a lot less to get more of a natural look to my skin right now and like really customize it, which I think is really great too. So it tells me like there's really good range with this foundation. So it does seem like it's gonna be good for anyone. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Absolutely, this is worth the price tag for sure. So once again, YSL All Hours Foundation. It's beautiful. Okay, this next one is also very high end, very luxurious. That's also $60. It's from Valentino. And if you're not new to my channel, you'll already know my thoughts on this. I love this foundation. It is a beautiful, beautiful, and I, in my opinion, slightly underrated foundation. I don't feel like enough people talk about what a great formula this is. This is the Very Valentino Light Lasting Perfecting Foundation. This has a broad spectrum of, it got rubbed off, 15, 15. Broad spectrum, 15. Don't leave home without sunscreen underneath is all I'm gonna say. Now, this is a really gorgeous medium to buildable coverage that gives you the most flawless, luminous look to your skin, but it's very, very long wearing. I've taken this on like travel jobs with me and I've worn it all day. Like when it first came out, I actually took this to London with me and I got compliments on my skin. It looked beautiful all day. It looked really fresh all day. So I have tried this foundation out. I have put this to the test. Let me show you, if you're new here, what this looks like on. Now I have the shade MN3 and I'm gonna shake it. Beautiful packaging, just by the way, I forgot to mention that. Beautiful glass bottle, luxe cap. I mean, it's just, come on. Like it, I mean, it's just like the YSL. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, very luxe packaging. I'm gonna pump two pumps on my hand and let me show you how stunning this foundation is on. I'm gonna swipe out of my brush and let's go for it. This does have fragrance. It's not like the most strong, it's not as strong as like the Givenchy just for like reference, but it is fragrance. So just something to point out again, this might be a no for a lot of you because of the fragrance aspect. Hopefully it's not, it's not overwhelming. You definitely get used to it. You could kind of smell it initially when you put it on and throughout the day, it just dissipates. I don't smell this on my skin throughout the day by any means. The way this blends onto your skin is so easy. It is so flawless. It's so easy to work with. I mean, that took about, what, a couple swipes and then it's on. It's blended, it's smooth, it's extremely flawless. It does leave you with this beautiful satin glow. It's not super glowy, it's not like over the top. So if you have oily skin, I think this is a really great formula to still like, stay put all day to still be long wearing, but to still also give you like an enhanced glow to your skin. It definitely has like a, a light reflecting quality to it. It's gorgeous in photos. I could tell you that firsthand I've used this and I've, you know, I've taken like 
hard flash photos with this foundation on. It's just a showstopper. It's worth every penny. It's definitely one worth checking out. And again, I feel like not enough people talk about what an incredible formula this is. I mean, Valentino really nailed it with this formula. Look how smooth that is. No texture. There's no increase on like my skin texture or like any fine lines or pores. Nothing's being brought out. It's being smoothed over and just looks really flawless. Easy to work with. I think this is good for any and all skin types and skin ages. The only thing that you have to be hesitant about is the fact that there's fragrance and it is obviously a pricey foundation. It's not the most affordable in this group by any means, but if you're willing to spend a little extra money on your foundation, this is a really worthwhile one to check out. I think it's, like I said, extremely underrated. It looks absolutely gorgeous on. It's long wearing and it keeps your skin looking fresh and like this pretty much all day long. I recommend this for anyone, like I mentioned, as long as you're okay with some fragrance to your foundation. Would I go back out and repurchase it? A hundred percent. I love, love this foundation from Valentino. So once again, it's the Very Valentino Light Lasting Perfecting Foundation. It is just beautiful. For $62, you can get a equally luxurious experience. It's the Girl on Paris Terracotta Healthy Glow Natural Perfection Foundation, 24 hour wear, no transfer has 95% naturally derived ingredients. That's really cool. I love all these talking points. I mean, natural perfection foundation, 24 hour wear, no transfer, healthy glow. Sign me up. I've been wanting to try this foundation since it came out. It's a fairly new foundation. So let's try it out together. I picked up the shade 2.5N. All right, let's talk about this beautiful packaging. This is a just a gorgeous brand overall. Like Girl On, if you see their overall, their cosmetics, they're beautifully packaged. I mean, their lipsticks, unbelievable. They're bronze, everything. They're just, they have beautiful packaging, that is for sure. This is really nice. It's very simple, very, but still says like very luxe. I'm going to shake this up. I've never tried this foundation. I've always been curious about this brand in general, and I'm starting to slowly like buy more products from this brand, and I'm just really excited to try this. I really hope I picked out a good shade. Let's find out together, and yeah, I mean, I'm very excited. Okay, I'll, I'm going to try to contain my excitement. I'm very, very excited for this foundation right now. Let's do two pumps. All right, so it's not like this super, it's not like a super runny foundation. It's like in between. I am gonna apply it with my N17. And first things first, it doesn't have fragrance. All right, that's good. That is good. And it's $62, 62 bucks. Okay, all right. Shade is good. Thankfully, I am so happy. Now I can actually wear this foundation. All right, so it definitely looks beautiful. It definitely has a, a nice glowy finish to it. Very skin-like, very healthy. It's... I was gonna say it's not the easiest to blend in my skin, but actually I take that back. It's not, it's it's easy. It's definitely easy. I take that back. That was like my initial thought, but okay. I mean, that's really nice. That's a really nice foundation. Feels really nice. It feels very lightweight. The glow it's giving is really nice and fresh. It's not like over the top glowy. The color is good. Thank, thankfully I can actually wear this. Like I said, I don't think it's emphasizing my texture. I don't think it's emphasizing like the inner part of my cheek where I have larger pores. I don't think it's the most smoothing foundation though. With that said, I don't think it's like giving like an airbrush quality, but it's given a really overall healthy, like I just have naturally good skin kind of finish, if that makes sense. It's not over the top blurring. It's not like a filter on my skin, but it's not not, you know, it, does that make sense? It's like, it's giving me a beautiful finish and beautiful coverage in a really natural skin-like way. That's the best way to describe it. I'm gonna layer a little bit more. My main point that I was trying to make is it's not, you know, it's not giving me like the most smooth complexion, but it's also not making my skin look smooth. It's just not giving me that fake filtered look that I'm, I've am i been kind of used to with some of these other formulas that I've tried out. So just very honest, real thoughts on this foundation. As it's settling onto my skin, however, I do think it's, I'm actually liking it even more. Like now that it's actually like settled onto my skin, I've layered a little bit more coverage, which is also a good note. You could definitely build up the coverage. That's something to, to note if you want more of a full coverage. You can customize this foundation to your needs. I like that a lot. I mean, it looks beautiful. It feels really nice. It feels really, really lightweight. It has a very like, it has a hydrating feel to it, which I also really like. Um, this, is a, this is a great foundation. It's $62. It's not the world's most expensive, but it's not the, it's not the least expensive and most affordable. So just that to keep in mind. There is no fragrance. So if you're someone who's looking for like a high-end foundation and you were interested in these and the fact that these have fragrance has maybe like check them off your list in terms of like if you're going to buy them or not, then you should definitely spend an extra two bucks and try the girl on because it looks, to me, it looks equally as beautiful as, as those other ones but in a different way. I mean, it looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. 
I'm curious to see what the wear time is going to be since I've never actually worn this all day. But, you know, again, I have just touched on this one more time. As it settles onto my skin, it really is looking very smooth and very beautiful. The fact that it does not contain any fragrance is probably a really big selling point, in my opinion, if you're looking for a luxury brand foundation. I think this would be good for all skin types, mature, young, oily, combo, dry. It doesn't matter. This is going to be a universally uh, well-received formula that most people most anyone could use on their skin. Ooh, just notice that. That's beautiful. That's just like the bronzer. That's gorgeous. Would I purchase this again? A hundred percent. Am I gonna, are you gonna see me wearing this on my channel and on my Instagram, my social media? Definitely. So be prepared. I'm curious to see if my thoughts are gonna change in any way as I continue to wear it and test it out. But my initial thoughts, it's a really, really beautiful foundation and I'm really excited to try it out more. So, I mean, look at that. It's absolutely beautiful on. Jumping up to the $68 price range, we are slowly climbing our way to the most expensive foundation that you could buy in Sephora. And I, I actually can't wait to get there. I can't wait to get there. Okay, so <laughs> very excited. We're making our way there. This one's from Westman Atelier. It's the Vital Skin Foundation Stick. It's a stick foundation. It's a cream form, basically. I picked up the shade Atelier 5 and there's not many options to choose from. So just something to note, unfortunately. Uh, Westwood Atelier definitely needs to be a lot more inclusive to say the least. Their shade range is not the most ideal. It just is not. So I even had a hard time figuring out which shade to choose from. So let's hope that I chose wisely. Let's talk about the packaging first things first. The packaging, just like all Westman Atelier products, is super luxe, super high-end. You could feel the expensive vibes on this product. Like I could feel the money that is put into this packaging. That price tag that you're paying for Westman Atelier products is more than likely due to the incredible packaging, just my opinion and what I've learned from trying to make products on my own in the industry is packaging costs a ton of money, a ton of money. So formula wise, I know their formulas are still like really incredible and they have, they have amazing products, okay? But their prices are pretty outrageous. Like let's be real. They have very expensive products. My point in saying all this is really just you, you get what you pay for, but you also are paying a lot of extra for this very luxe packaging. Okay, we're gonna move on. We talked about packaging enough. Now I'm gonna blend this out with my N15 brush with BK Beauty. This is a cream formula. I like to really buff creams into my skin. And you know, if I used a flat brush, you could absolutely use my N17 as well, but this is gonna kind of pack on product as well. Whereas this one's gonna kind of shear it out a little bit more. And with this formula, since it is more of a thick foundation, I wanna just get in there and really work it into my skin and see how it performs. Okay, blends in easy. Kind of feel like the coverage is not very, hmm, it's kind of misleading. It goes on super thick, but then it blends out to be very natural. I'm starting to understand what the hype is about this foundation. A lot of people that I know love this foundation. Now the shade's a little off. It's a little too warm. It's a little too running yellow on my complexion. I wish there had, I wish they had more like olive undertones or like neutral olive undertones to choose from. They don't, I feel like I did the best I could as far as choosing a shade for myself. But let's talk about how that blended out. It took two seconds. Like I went boom, 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 and it was done. Blended out. It did blend out to be, you know, a little more sheer to be quite honest. It could be the brush shearing it out because I said I wanted more of a natural finish to like this cream product. So let's do a little test, okay? I'm gonna do another swipe and then we're gonna blend it out with my more flat N17 brush. All right, so that definitely gave a more of a natural finish, which fluffier brushes do give a natural finish. That's like the beauty of them. So if you wanna shear out a more full, full coverage product, use a fluffy brush. It will diffuse it. It will give it more of a natural skin-like appearance. If you wanna maintain coverage and pack on coverage, you would use a stiply motion like this right now with more of a flat brush and that's gonna to help to maintain that coverage. Okay, so that tells me that the product is obviously very versatile. You can get two different finishes with the same product just by using different tools to apply it and blend it out. Either way, it blends out really easy, really quick. It doesn't feel heavy, even for being a stick cream foundation. Those tend to be, just by nature, heavier and they tend to look heavier on your skin because they just tend to like, they, they're thick. They're, that's just the reality of them. They're thick. They could tend to look a little more heavy, a little more cakey if you don't prep your skin properly. This does not have that. This gives a really smooth effect. Like all around here, I feel like my skin looks really smooth and really flawless. Very easy to work with, very easy to blend on. I am going to be using this quite a bit. I'm, I'm excited to say that. I feel like anyone could use this and wear this and appreciate it even if you have mature skin, and it doesn't matter what your skin type is, I think this is gonna be a really nice cream formula 
for anyone that is looking for a cream formula. So dry, mature, oily, combo, you name it, young. Like I said, anybody can wear this foundation and probably make it work for them. It is a little pricey, something to take into consideration. I think this is a really nice travel friendly foundation because it isn't a stick, it's on a liquid so you could throw it in your bag. You don't have to worry about it leaking or being messy. You could just kind of swipe it on on the go. So if you're someone who's on the go or just has limited time for your makeup application and your complexion products, check this out. Does that make sense? Like if you have just, if you want to be quick and easy and effective and gives you this beautiful finish, then this is definitely, definitely worth checking out. With that said, I highly recommend this one from Westman Atelier. I wish the price point wasn't so high, if I'm being really honest, but would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, I would. I'm a big fan of their products. They have really great stuff. So, so once again, that is the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation Stick. It's beautiful. We have jumped up to the $69 price range now, but I have to say, this is the mini size I'm about to show you. This is $48, I believe, for the mini size. The full size of the Armani Luminous Silk is $69. So just putting that out there. I love my minis. It My mini lasts me for so, so long. Now, if you're not new to my channel, you're gonna already know why I love this foundation and you're not gonna be surprised to hear the reasons why I'm about to tell you. This is one of the best foundations on the market period. Like just, it is one of the top five foundations in general. This is my opinion, but I really strongly, wholeheartedly believe in it. This is the one foundation that is always in my pro kit. I've used this for so many years now. I came and tell you, and it's the one foundation that I will always have in my pro kit to use on all my clients. So it doesn't matter who is sitting in my chair. They could be people that I've never met before, never seen before in my entire life, mature, young, acne prone, texture, any kind of skin issues, I will put this foundation on everyone, everyone. Now my skin prep and the way I set it looks different for depending on who I'm working with and who I'm applying this on. But overall, there's really not one person I've met that does not like this foundation or does not look beautiful in this foundation. So with that said, let's apply the Armani Luminous Silk. I wear the shade personally 5.75. This is a really good almost exact match for my skin tone. This foundation, I'm gonna shake it. You should always shake it. There's a reason why this foundation is so universally loved, not just by makeup artists. Like this is a staple for most makeup artists in their professional kit. You'd be hard pressed not to find a working makeup artist that hasn't used this and more than likely loves this foundation for the reasons that I listed. It just works good on everybody. Everybody, it looks good on anyone. I, I just, I love this foundation so much. I'm gonna try to move on from fangirling this foundation and actually apply it to my skin so you can see what it looks like on my skin and why I love it. I'm gonna apply two pumps and definitely gonna apply this with my N17. This is a dream combo. So let's apply my 5.75 in the Armani Luminous Silk. So here's the thing about this foundation, okay? First of all, it blends itself. It melts into your skin like butter like butter. It has such an adjustable coverage to it, which is, again, one of the reasons why I love it so much in my pro kit is I could get such a variety of looks out of this foundation. I could sheer it out to be a super lightweight, almost like a tinted moisturizer type look to the finish. I could build it up so easily. This foundation layers so well and it looks, here. I, I, actually, this is the biggest reason why I love this foundation, okay? I have seen this foundation and what it looks like from uh, like seven in the morning on a shoot till like 7 p.m. at night at the end of a shoot or even later. I've, I've worn this foundation. I've applied this foundation on so many of my clients, whether they're models, their talent, their actresses. I put this on everybody. I have to stress this, okay? I put this on everybody and the way this looks after like a 10 plus hour day, it looks unreal good on your skin. It just looks amazing. So I think that's actually when I really truly think about why I love this foundation so much and why I'm such a huge, huge fan of it is not for me personally, but really like all the reasons why I love it the most are based on how it looks on my clients and how I've seen it perform on set, how it photographs, how it looks on video, how it looks in day-to-day -day life in person for like events for my clients. But more importantly, the biggest thing is how it wears. This foundation wears as if it's a longer foundation with like a 24 hour claim. It wears just like that without all those claims and without feeling like a 24 hour mattifying long wear foundation. It really does give you the most healthy, luminous glow to your skin, but it's not over the top glowy. So this allows me, or this has allowed me to always use this on like even my oiliest skin clients. Cause if anything, it's a really nice combination to apply this more 
hydrating formula on top of oily skin because it almost balances out that oil production on a lot of my clients that have more oily skin. I, I lose my breath because I could talk about this foundation so much. I really do. I got to stop. Now, if it's not enough that I could tell you firsthand in real life, this foundation wears magically and it looks just as good after a 10, 12 hour day, then I don't know what else to tell you to get you to try this foundation. It really is a show-stopping second skin like finish. It is so versatile. It looks good on everyone and it works for everyone. And I can tell you that wholeheartedly because I've experienced it and I've used it in my kit for years and years and years. So, so there's just not one complaint I have about this foundation. If I had to complain about anything, it's the fact that I run out of it so often because I use it so much in my kit and it is very, very pricey. Let's be real. It is quite pricey. I only carry the minis in my kit now for many reasons. It's just more convenient. It takes up a lot less weight and a lot less space in my pro kit. And for me personally, there's nothing easier than like throwing this in my makeup bag when I'm doing my makeup on the go or if I'm doing my makeup in general. It doesn't take up a bunch of uh, real estate, right? And it's just more affordable. So there's that too. But full size is $69. The mini size right here is 48. This is in my top five of my all-time favorite, what I think are the best foundations that money can buy you, literally. So would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes. I think I have bought like close to a hundred bottles at this point in my the span of my career. So yes, I will definitely repurchase it as I have been for a long time now. Okay, so to wrap this up, I highly recommend the Armani Luminous Soak. That is an understatement, clearly, but this is a gorgeous, show-stopping foundation. Look at that, it's just stunning. Also for $69, it is one that I've surprisingly never tried. Never tried it, always wanted to. There was a first time for everything. Today is that day, I'm gonna try the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I am so excited to try this foundation. I can't even tell you, it's it's long, long overdue. The shade that I picked out is light medium 14. Now I did choose this shade on the website, so wish me luck. You know, it's always a gamble choosing online. Little note that it says on the side, it's a buildable perfecting coverage, weightless texture, sublime satin finish, love that. Runway tested, love that. Mother approved, love, I mean, you had me at hello. <laughs> you basically had me at hello. Um, I am so excited to try this. Let's get this out of this. I mean, does this not scream Lux? This screams I'm a $69 bottle of foundation. This is like so high end, so Lux. Love the label, glass bottle, the cap. Come on, I'm a sucker for packaging. If you have good, beautiful packaging that looks like somewhat vintage, just take all my money just to here, take it all. All right, it has a pump. Let's pump it out and let's try this out. Definitely a more runny texture. I don't think it's fragrance. I'm not smelling anything. I could be losing my sense of smell after all this foundation, but no, I'd say this is unscented. Ooh, all right. Shade's a little teeny bit, teeny bit too dark, but I can make it work. Blending out really nice. Feels like second skin. Feels very, very lightweight. I mean, it really doesn't feel like anything at all, to be honest. It feels like I'm putting, a, again, a serum on my skin. It doesn't have that heavy foundation feeling at all. It's actually surprisingly very, I mean, it's not sheer because it's giving me coverage. So it's not actually sheer, but it feels like, it just feels like I'm not wearing anything. Honestly, it feels like I don't have anything on my skin right now. It's definitely melted into my skin. I'm going to layer it a little bit more because I want to see if I can get a touch more coverage. All right, this is nice, okay. All right, now I'm understanding the hype around Pat McGrath's foundations. I've been told for so many years. Let's let's actually talk about what this looks like on my skin because it looks like juicy, flawless perfection. It's definitely smoothing. My overall, my skin definitely feels overall, I'm sorry, it looks overall more smooth in this area. It has melted into my skin. To be honest, it feels and looks very similar to my Armani Luminous Silk. I think this is like a really good, comparison as to what it looks like and feels like overall like the, the foundation just feels very much like my Armani so I definitely love it it's not quite the same as my Armani to be honest I can't pinpoint what it is I mean I don't know it looks just like it to be honest I take that back it looks just like it it's gorgeous it blends in fairly easy it's not the quickest blend into your skin but it's also not difficult by any stretch of the imagination it's feeling really nice really lightweight it's got that buildable coverage this is a nice high-end foundation. This is a really good formula. I, I can't think of one thing I don't like about this foundation, to be quite honest. And I mean, it looks beautiful. Like, look at that. It looks absolutely perfect on my skin. The shade's a little too dark and it's throwing me off a teeny bit, but that's my fault. But all in all, I'd say this is a really great formula for anyone. I can't think of anyone this won't work well for. Even if you have mature skin, mature oily skin, mature dry skin, I think that anybody could wear this formula. Obviously, young complexion could wear this easily. Yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts. This is a beautiful foundation. I'm disappointed in myself that I've never tried it until today. So 
at least that day has finally come. Would I recommend this? 100%. I definitely recommend this for anyone looking for a beautiful, more buildable, luxurious foundation. And it's unscented, so that also helps too for anyone out there who is sensitive to fragrance. This is a beautiful, beautiful foundation. Would I go back out and repurchase it? Yes, I wish I had purchased it sooner. I feel like I've been missing out for many years now. So that is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. It is the Armani Power Fabric Foundation. Now, I've actually never tried this one on my face. I've only ever swatched it inside of a Sephora and I've never, uh, I don't know, I've just ever committed to buying it for some reason, just because I'm always so thrilled with my Luminous Silk. I'm like, why am I gonna buy another Armani formula? I don't know what the mindset is to that because you would think that I was to just go for anything Armani complexion wise, but here we are. It's the first time I'm trying it. It's the Power Fabric Weightless Matte Foundation. It's an up to 24 hour wear. It has SPF 25. Now, I couldn't find the shade 5.75 in the Power Fabric and I did not see it online unless I really just missed it. So I ended up getting the shade six. We're gonna see what this looks like on. I know that six in the Armani Luminous Silk is a very, very olive undertone. So olive that it's actually too olive for my complexion. So let's test this out. Let's see what this looks like on. Beautiful packaging. This is actually what the full size bottle of the Luminous Silk looks like as well. So just for reference, uh, glass bottle, nice cap. It's Armani, it's luxurious. Let's try it on. Weightless matte foundation for up to 24 hour wear. How have I not tried this? What is my problem? Why have I not tried this? Let's get into this, okay? Let's shake it up. Let's try it out for the first time together. Let's enjoy this third to last foundation that is sold at Sephora. I'm gonna do two pumps really like one and a half, to be honest. I'm gonna dip into it. This is not, mm, this has a very, 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 very faint fragrance, like almost undetectable. All right, so again, this is the shade six and this does look just like the six that I have in the Luminous Silk. It's not a bad match for me. It's just ever so slightly too olive for my complexion. Complexion matching is difficult. There's so many nuances to it, so. This is one of those situations where in theory it should match me perfect, but just slightly, a little too slightly olive for me. Wow, okay. Let's talk about how this just melts into my skin with minimal effort. I just kind of went back and forth, swoop, swooped, and we're done. Okay, texture is amazing. I mean, like just so smooth, so perfecting. Wow, this is a very, very perfecting foundation. Let me look it up close. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very smoothing. And again, this is like my problem area of my cheek where I do have like, you know, you can just see my pores, they're more noticeable. The coverage is beautiful. I, it's very, very lightweight, very, like feels very lightweight on my skin. Really, really easy to blend on. Like, wow, you could just be a, a total, even for someone who like struggles to blend their foundation on, like let's say you have a difficult time. I feel like this is just a really easy foundation to blend into your skin. It really like melts into my skin, honestly, like butter. I know I use that reference a lot. I love that reference for makeup, but it's true. It just melted in like butter. Quick, easy. It definitely has, yeah, it definitely has a self-setting aspect to it. So this would be good if you, you know, like to minimally powder your complexion products to in order to set them. This has like a nice uh, self-setting aspect to it, which is always great. That's what you'll find a lot with like more longer, like 24 hour claim foundations is they do have a self-setting aspect to them, which are really nice because it just, they kind of grip to your skin. They lock in there, they self-set, and then you're allowed to just kind of set it with minimal powder to really keep it in place. So it's a really good thing to point out, I think. If you're looking for a good medium to full coverage, wow, that just looks like airbrushed perfection. The more I look at this foundation as it's drying down fully on my skin, it's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. I don't know why. Why have I not tried this until now? Why? That's stunning. Okay, let's talk about who this is for. I think this is for anyone. I don't think there's one person that cannot benefit from wearing this foundation. If you are someone who is looking for an all day, more satin to matte finish with your foundation and you want that longevity specifically, then you have to check this formula out. I don't care if you have dry skin, I don't care if you have mature skin, oily skin, oily skin even better because it has that more matte finish to it. This is definitely one to check out and I'm so disappointed in myself for not trying it until today, but here we are. We made it, it's okay. Gorgeous foundation. I highly recommend this one from Armani. Yes, it's pricey, but this formula is, I mean, just like the Luminous Soak, they're both so, so worth the money, I promise you. I'd be shocked if you if you got that product and you didn't like it. Leave me your comments either way. 
but this is beautiful. Highly recommend this one. Would I go back out and repurchase this one? Yes. And I should probably, I wish they made this one the mini, but they don't make this formula in the mini. Otherwise I would say I'd stock this up in my pro kit, but I don't know, maybe I'll still get some shades and just kind of mix them in my kit. That's gorgeous. All right, we're gonna move on. I love Armani, it's no surprise. Once again, that is the Armani Power Fabric Weightless Matte Foundation. That is just flawless in a bottle and so beautiful. As I mentioned, this second to last one, can you believe it? If you have been with me since the beginning of this video, I wish I could give you a big hug. Thank you for hanging on. I know it's a long one, but hopefully it's like very valuable information that you're getting. If you're choosing a foundation, this video is definitely for you. The second to last expensive foundation that I'm going to test out that is sold at Sephora is from Gucci. And oddly enough, you would expect Gucci to be even more money in my, I don't know why, I, I just would assume it'd be like a higher price tag, but for $69, you can get the Gucci 24 hour breathable foundation, luminous matte finish. We're not gonna get into that. I've heard actually this is a beautiful foundation. I'm really excited and anxious to try it for myself. In the back, does it have any other claims? Not really, okay. Oh, actually it does. 24 hour wear, no transfer, full coverage, weightless, breathable texture, comfort and hydration, luminous matte finish. Shine control, and that's it. Okay, not 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 tons of claims. I picked up the shade 260W. It's a medium fair shade. Let's try out this Gucci foundation. All right, let's look at this packaging. Oof, beautiful packaging. Very on brand with Gucci. Frosted bottle, feels luxe. Very heavy. Let's shake this up. And let's just take in the fact that we only have this foundation and one more to go. I feel like I've been here for a really long, I have been here a really long time. Days have gone by, to be fully honest with you. It's a new day. I think I filmed this video over like the course of three days, my third day, two days, my second full day, all day. We've been here all day. I'm gonna pump this out on the top of my hand. Let's do two pumps. Ooh, a little more runny. It's fragranced, okay? It smells like a, like a fresh light perfume. It's fragranced though, just so you know. Let's apply the second to last foundation. Oh, the shade's not ideal, but let's blend it in to my skin and see where we're at. Yeah, the shade's a little bit too warm on me. I do think I can make it work. And to be honest, after $69, like spending $69 on this and buying a Gucci foundation, I will make it work. <laughs> so if you see me using it, even though I just said that it's not the most ideal match, don't be surprised. You'll know why. Okay, but also in reality, this is a beautiful foundation. That melt into my skin very well. Very minimal effort involved as in terms of like blending it into my skin. The texture is really stunning. The texture of this foundation is really, really quite stunning. This definitely has a smoothing quality to it that is like instantly visible. I instantly saw a smoothing effect happening right here. Great coverage. I don't feel like I need to even dip into more, but I'm just gonna dip into more just cause let's see how it layers. You know, it's always good to see how this builds up and layers onto your skin. So I'm gonna tap into some more coverage and just kind of layer it on top of the areas that I would want more coverage, which is always like right here on my cheek. And wow, I mean, what pores? I feel like my pores are completely gone with this foundation. It is extremely, extremely smoothing on my skin. That is to say the least. I mean, it looks beautiful. You know, the color is not the greatest, but it's actually not that bad. I think I was being a little too hard on it. I can make it work. The feeling of it is really nice. It's very, very lightweight. It's 100% breathable, like it says it is. I'm anxious to see how, the, how long this would wear for an entire day. So I will have to circle back with my, my thoughts on that as I wear it. You know, as I continue to try this formula out and to wear it all day, I'll definitely keep you posted if my thoughts change. But my first reaction, my first initial thoughts are, this is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, way to go, Gucci. You definitely did not disappoint with this formula. It is just beautiful. And to be honest, it feels very similar to these two foundations in terms of like how long wearing it is, the amount of coverage. It also, it feels very similar to this Hourglass one as well. So just for like some reference for you. Yeah, it's beautiful. But to wrap this up, I think this is a really easy formula to work with. It blended on super well. The finish is just stunning. If you're someone who wants more of a smoothing effect to your foundation, let's say you have more large pores, some skin texture or issues like that, definitely check out this formula because it does give you that instant blurring and smoothing effect right here. With that said, I think it'd be an amazing formula for mature skin. If you want like a really smooth, flawless look to your skin, definitely check this one out. In fact, I don't think there's, there's really not one skin type or skin age that I think this foundation would not work for. So with that said, I think it's really nice and universally flattering and uh, workable for so many different people. 
Would I go back out and repurchase this one? I would, I definitely would. I still think I picked out the best shade that was available for myself to be quite honest. And once again, I recommend this for anyone. I think that anyone could wear this and would probably absolutely love it. Cause how can you not love how smooth and flawless that is? It's gorgeous. It's definitely one to check out for sure. So once again, that is the Gucci 24 hour breathable foundation luminous matte finish. I mean, this says it all right here. Are you ready for this last foundation? Are you ready for the final foundation in this huge haul of foundations. I literally bought every single foundation that I could find at Sephora online and in store. So I think I covered, I'm I'm hoping I covered every single one. You know, let me know if there's one I forgot or that I missed. I don't know how I would because I went to so many different Sephora stores in store and I shopped online multiple times. So with that said, this is the final foundation. It is the most expensive foundation that you could purchase at a Sephora. This is from La Mer. Are we surprised? I'm not, I knew it. I knew when I was shopping this video, when I was looking for the foundations, when I was buying all of them and adding to my cart, I knew the most expensive one was gonna be. I was not surprised. So when this Lemire popped up, I was like $149 gets worse. It's $149 and somewhere in like my mind of like, I kind of just lost my mind after buying so many foundations and like I literally just like scrolled for hours and in store swatching. This was a journey. Let me tell you, this was like probably the most, it was the most challenging to film out of all these series, out of the blush one, the bronzer, the highlighter, out of the drugstore ones that I've done. This was the most intense to film. This was definitely the most intense to get done. With that said, I got excited and I think I just got like delirious and I thought, you know what? I've always wanted to put Le Mer in my kit. So I, I bought three of these. <laughs> I bought, full disclosure, this is gonna go in my kit. My, this is definitely going in my pro kit right after this video. It's gonna go bloop. I'm gonna pop it in my pro kit. I already have two in there right now. I used it. I have to be honest with you. I already used the foundation. I've already tested it out. I just gotta be really honest with you because I can't lie. I already tested it out. I used it on a client and she loved it. I loved it. I'm a huge fan now. Let me show you why this is beautiful. Listen, is it worth $149 beautiful? That's gonna be a matter of opinion. And I love it. I'm really appreciative that I have it in my kit. I am pretty much obsessed with it. The only thing I don't like about it is how unbelievably expensive it is. So without further ado, the last foundation in this huge haul is the Le Mirror Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. This has an SPF 20 in it. The shade that I'm gonna be applying is 310 Beige. It's beautiful. Let me shake it up and let me show you how gorgeous this foundation is on. I'm gonna pump two pumps, two small pumps, not like, not like two complete pumps, but two small pumps on the top of my hand. I am going to take a now clean N17. This definitely has fragrance to it, just a forewarning. But the fragrance is like, it almost smells like a vanilla fruit, like a fruity vanilla clean, fruity, with a little hint of like, a little hint of vanilla, like vanilla bean almost. It's nice, I like it. I love the way it smells. If this was a perfume, I would definitely wear it. So this foundation, when I tell you this looks like your skin, but immaculate and like undetectable, it's unbelievable, okay? And since this is the last foundation, I'm gonna be covering my red nose and I'm gonna show you what this looks like pretty much all over. But you're gonna see firsthand how easy it is to blend on your skin. Minimal, minimal effort. This really truly does melt into your skin. Again, I know I love this reference, but it melts into your skin like butter. I'm gonna apply it over here. Oh, it feels so good to have foundation on this side of my face. So let's talk about the finish, okay? The finish, like I said, it's like, imagine your skin, but just way better. It gives you this gorgeous coverage without looking like you have coverage on. So it's very like, it's magical. It's basically magical is what I'm trying to say. It blends with ease. The way it looks in person, forget about it, gorgeous. It looks like you just have flawless, smooth skin without feeling like you have a heavy foundation on your skin that's weighing you down. It's extremely buildable. And again, I could tell you this firsthand because I built this up on my client in certain areas that we needed a little bit more coverage where I didn't necessarily want to go and apply an actual concealer. It is very long wearing. Just like it says, it says it's a long wearing foundation and it really is. It stays put on your skin extremely well. I put this on my client. We had very, very long days. We were running around, taking Ubers to different locations, taking photos, running around basically. And it stayed put and looked so gorgeous from morning, beginning of application to nighttime after dinner and drinks and all all the things. It stayed put and looked so, so gorgeous. So I could tell you firsthand, I've tried it, I've tested it. 
I've seen what it looks like. I've played with it in every single which way. It looks gorgeous on the skin all throughout the day. So that alone to me is worth is somewhat worth the price tag and somewhat justifies the price tag. It's definitely scented like I mentioned. So if that's a, a deal breaker for you, then you're gonna wanna skip this one. And good for you, you'll be able to save some money. If you don't mind some nice light and just like fresh smelling foundation on your skin that does dissipate throughout the day. It's not like it's a perfume where you smell it all throughout the day. It definitely dies down. It's like an instant, hmm, that smells lovely. And then before you know it, it's gone. But look how beautiful my skin looks. It doesn't, it's like feather lightweight, like literally doesn't feel heavy at all. It melts into your skin. It doesn't oxidize. It wears all day. It doesn't crease. It doesn't emphasize texture. It's like a glass skin and smooth skin in a bottle. It's like, it's just, oh, what else can I say about it? I mean, I didn't really wanna love this foundation because I was so bitter about the price tag, just to be really honest with you, but I can't help but love it. I can't help it, I love it. It's definitely one that I'm gonna keep in my pro kit and it's definitely one that I'm gonna keep uh, continuing to use for sure. And honestly, maybe I'll just keep this one for myself. No, I need this in my kit. I need that in my kit. The shade is like perfect. So with that all said, is it the most affordable foundation at Sephora? Absolutely not. Is it ridiculously overpriced? Absolutely. But is it gorgeous on and easy to work with and long wearing and looks just as flawless as it did in the beginning as it does at the end of the day? Yes. So if you're looking for those type of things and you wanna treat yourself to a really high end, extremely beautiful, extremely luxurious experience to your foundation, then I honestly highly recommend you check out the La Mer Foundation. There's not one skin type that I don't think this would work well with. Oily, dry, combo, mature, young, universally gorgeous. There's a reason why I bought two more and put them in my kit. I'm so happy to have them in my kit. I'm gonna be definitely buying some more. This is the most expensive foundation that you could buy at Sephora, but in my opinion, dare I say, it's completely worth it. It is completely, completely worth it. Cause look at that. Look at that healthy, glowy, skin-like natural finish foundation. And the best part, it's long wearing and it's gonna stay put. Highly recommend this one. Once again, it's just gorgeous. It's just absolutely perfection. Okay, that wraps up this very long haul, trying every single foundation that is sold at Sephora, again, both in-store and online. Comment below, I would love to hear what foundation interested you the most? And if you can, leave me a top three. I'm so curious to see what your top three would be that you saw me test out in this video. Comment below, and if you like videos like this, I have plenty more where this came from. You can check out my other hauls right here. Subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for sticking with me for such a long one. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon. Bye.